my attention. So um, good evening, everyone. We are um, coming back together for our evening meeting. Uh, so I'll call this meeting back to order. Um, as we start, uh, we, often, we always start with a moment of silence before Pledge of Allegiance and then roll call. So I'm going to ask you to join me for a silence as we begin our evening. Thank you. Next, we'll have Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Your next will take for the roll call. Good evening, Treasurer and Mayor. First of all, Mayor Bliss. We're here. Here. <laughs> uh, Commissioner Jones. Here. Commissioner O'Connor. Present. Commissioner Ruppart. Here. Commissioner Sasti. Present. Commissioner Lanier. Uh, Commissioner Lanier. Present. And Commissioner Moody. Present. Thank you. All right. Um, so next will be. Oh. I'm sorry, uh, I want to introduce our translator tonight that is Miss Lily Beth Perez. Uh, so I'll give her a moment to um, introduce herself and then also wanted to let folks know that if you're calling in tonight to share your public comments, uh, you can call 456-3000 or 311. Uh, you'll hear, you'll hit number one and for the first opportunity for public comment, you hit number one, that's for items that we're actually voting on tonight and then if there's other items that you want to speak to, you can hit number four and you'll be on later on in our agenda. So Lily Beth, you want to introduce yourself for anyone who may need translation services? Yes. Hi, thank you, Mayor Bliss. If you need interpretation services in order to address the city commission, I will be able to assist. Please dial 456-3000 and select the option that you'd like to speak on. 
Buenas noches. Si necesitan servicios de interpretación para dirigirse a la Comisión de la Ciudad, estaré disponible para ayudarle. Marque el 4563000 y seleccione la opción en la cual desee hablar. Thank you, Thank you Little Bass. So that will take us to our first opportunity for public comment. And so we'll see uh, who is in the queue, who would like to speak. The number is 563,000 or 311. And hit number one and then hit number one after that. Okay. Good. There are 22 callers currently in the queue. Okay. Great. Caller, you're on with the city commission. Can you please lower the volume on your computer? Yes. All right. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Thank you. It's, it's Arthur Campbell calling. I live in the city of Grand Rapids. And I wanted to leave a quick message asking the commission to please continue to fund the police um, in the maximum way possible. We're very aware that our Our society is, is injured now and struggling, um, but we think that cutting police funding is a terrible, terrible idea. Um, we need to support our, our police and give them the training that they need to be able to respond to difficult situations in appropriate and respectful and kind and gentle ways. <laughs> um, so please continue to support the police with all funding possible and all training possible so that we can avoid the kinds of tragedies that we are hearing about in the news on a daily basis. Please support the, the police and all first responders. Thank you for listening and thank you for the opportunity for the comment. Thank you, Colin. Thank you. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Thank you. Uh, my name is Maureen McDonald, and I'm a resident of Comstock Park. I'd like to request the commission to vote no on the budget amendment to reduce the police force. The GRPD does an excellent job in serving this community and protecting our neighborhoods. And keeping residents safe should be the highest priority of government. Thank you. Thank you. Caller, you're on with the commission. Can you please lower the volume on your computer? Hello, can you lower the volume on your device, please? Yes. Thank you. You have three minutes with the city commission. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. My name is Robert Rossi. I live in Grand Rapids. Thank you for your service to our community. During these unprecedented times, your ability to steer us is highly challenged. It will be those of us who are calm, reasonable, and represent true love that will emerge from the other side of this a better community. I want to speak today about the Grand Rapids Police Department. I was, of course, horrified and revolted at seeing the events related to Mr. George Floyd. The question is, how do we handle that anger and emotion? My Christian faith teaches me that emotion is part of who we are. However, all emotion must be informed by intellect and virtue. We are sons and daughters of God, and we have a higher calling, a higher responsibility to each other. The danger in anger is that it can become blind rage and wrath. And this is what we saw in our town on Saturday, May 30th. The building where I live was severely damaged inside and out and looted. For the first time since I've lived here, I no longer feel safe. It's come to my attention that there may be voices on the commission that desire to defund the police. I want to clearly state so that there's no mistake. I support the mission of the police department in our city and anyone connected who supports the rule of law. Police play a crucial role to maintain a flourishing, healthy community. One might ask, but what happened without the police? We can look no farther and very easily to other countries like Venezuela, for example, or even closer, if you'd like, the violent crime that occurs in Chicago. I fear damage has already been done to the safety and security of our community, which rests on a very thin precipice right now. Pandemic, economic suffering, the longest isolation in our lifetime, 
anxiety that comes from that. This is time for careful diagnosis, understanding, and discernment, not basic revolution for the foundation of our lives. This is a country, by the way, that people are risking their lives to get into. I agree with Dr. Alveda King, the niece of Dr. Martin Luther King, who said, we are all one race, the human race. What we see on the outside is our ethnic background. This is something to honor and not a source of division. How can we build legitimate bridges for those stuck in a cycle of despair? Instead of increasing hatred and fear, let's all be honest that we all have darkness in our lives and that we need help and understanding, not condemnation. And that is including the police. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Caller, you're on with the city commission. Can you please lower the volume? Can you lower the volume on your device? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, you have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. My name is Nick Steenweich. I live in Middleville, Michigan, and I am just calling to say my two cents and how I do not want the police to fund to happen. I truly believe that the police that we have is a good thing, and it's a good thing what they do. And if anything, I think their funding should go up so we could get more towards them so that they could keep doing what they're doing. Is that all, caller? Yep. All right. Thank you for your uh, time. Caller? Yes. Yes. You have three minutes with the city commission. You uh, please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Thank you. Uh, my name is David Darrell, and I'm from Grand Rapids. Uh, I think our police are absolutely indispensable. The instances of police misconduct pale in comparison to the good that they do in our community. Most importantly, without them, our personal weakest citizens will be left vulnerable. Uh, Joe Jones, you should be ashamed of yourself. Your, your proposal will only serve to endanger the people who entrusted you with your office. Instances of violent crime are escalating throughout our country. You're proposing to hamstring the men and women whose sworn duty is to protect all our citizens? This is the opposite of sound social judgment. We need more protection for our most vulnerable citizens, not less. If the police are flawed, increase their funding to provide them with the training and resources they need to do their jobs effectively. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Hello, caller. You're on with the city commission. Please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hello, caller. Hello. Okay, hopefully they call back. Hello, caller. You're on with the city commission. Please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. My name is Dawn Walker, and I live in the city of Grand Rapids. Go ahead with your comment, caller. Thank you. I wish to comment on the um, agenda item of um, cutting funding to the police department and would like to express that I um, am completely against um, cutting any funding to the police department. Um, I would like to propose more funding to the police department in um, light of the increased violence and the increased um, deaths and murders that we've had in the city. Um, I feel the funding is not even appropriate at this point and that we can't afford to decrease the funding in, in any way for the Grand Rapids City Police Department. And that is the end of my comment. Thank you, caller. Hello, caller. You're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is John. I've been in Grand Rapids for about 22 years. Um, defunding the police department makes absolutely zero sense. Um, I have known some of the finest people, men, women, black, white, Asian, who have, who, who have been part of the Grand Rapids Police Department. 
Oh, thank you. Hello, caller. Can yes. you lower the volume on your device, please? Yes. Thank you. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. I'm Olga Zabriski, and I live in Grand Rapids. I'm calling to express my support for Grand Rapids Police Department. I feel like the idea of defunding um, GRPD is very unreasonable and a big mistake because our community so heavily relies on the service of the police. Our safety in our neighborhood, and especially in minority neighborhoods. I'm full-time employee, I'm mother, I'm raising two kids in Green Rapids, and we need safety in our city, on our streets. It's government responsibility to protect our streets. And with crime 63% up this year already, we do not feel safe. You're failing us. This is your responsibility. And what you're proposing is defund GRPD. If anything, we need more funds to get them better training, to get to... I feel like GRPD does an excellent job. They are working with public. They already have a great training, which needs to continue. Continue dialogue with community, continue training. And I just want to clearly state that I'm against up the funding or taking any funds away from the Rapids Police Department. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. Please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Uh, my name is Mike. I live in Sand Lake, Michigan. I recently moved out of the city. Um, I lived in the city the past uh, 11 years now uh, in different apartments. Uh, sometimes not in the best area of the town. Um, and I can tell you anecdotally uh, from when I moved into the city when I was 17, the city is scarier now than when I moved in. Um, but uh, more so, uh, statistically, obviously the homicides have increased um, already this year in the city. So my question um, for the you know for the people making these decisions uh, is, first of all, if the number of homicides increases, um, who's going to be held responsible for that increase um, when it, it could have potentially been prevented by a police officer whom you got rid of? Um, so that is, you know, how, how are you going to be able to sleep at night knowing that you've increased that number? The second question, the second part of that is, how many innocent people have Grand Rapids police officers uh, killed within the past, well, they give a give, name any year? Uh, it, it's not happened. So the, the issue here, um, obviously, being the, the George Floyd shooting, which brought up all of this, was at, which was absolutely abhorrent, um, has absolutely nothing to do with Grand Rapids police officers. Um, and this has absolutely nothing to do with what the majority of people are thinking. A lot of these, um, you know, people who support the idea uh, of, you know, reform do not support defunding the police. It is a completely radical idea. Uh, lastly, um, all of the arguing about the, the pensions is completely ridiculous. Um, and I don't know if, I, obviously, I don't know if this is part of this decision, um, but uh, a lot of people are bringing up the pensions, but most people don't realize that police officers have an average life expectancy of around 57 years old, and most of them, uh, due to the stress of the job and the lifestyle, aren't going to live long enough to enjoy their pension. Um, so that that isn't necessarily a sunk cost. Um, so the, there, there's multiple different things here, uh, and there's multiple reasons why this is a horrible idea. Um, but, but what's the idea behind removing the police officers? Is the idea that less police officers is going to make the existing ones better? Yeah, that's, that's a question, I guess, uh, that, you know, I, I don't know. I guess there's nobody on the other line. But um, anyway... Um, I think it's idiotic. I think uh, you have to be a complete buffoon um, to support such an idea. Um, and that's all. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Mayor, point of order. In the spirit of um, equity, I don't believe we have an agenda item on our current agenda that speaks to defunding the police. And we have persons speaking on an item that is not a current agenda item. So I'm wondering if we need to do for these calls what we would do for someone else who may be trying to speak at, at a time that actually they should be speaking at a different time. 
Yeah, Commissioner, in fact, we need to hear back from our city attorney because it is a little confusing. I think I think because of our discussion this morning and that people are expecting um, an item to come before us for a vote, uh, that people are weighing in because of that. Um, but just like all of you, uh, I, I just recently, we just recently, all of us just recently received a memo from our city attorney about process and about budget amendments and the, the legal process. Uh, and so what I'd like to do is have the city attorney explain that uh, so that we can be clear about the parameters. Uh, and, and then I agree with you, maybe ask callers that are calling specifically about funding for the police department to hold their comments until uh, the end of the evening. Uh, city attorney is, I, I'm sorry, is this legal opinion confidential? Yeah. I, I apologize I'm putting you on the spot, but I do think it's important for all of us to be clear what we can and cannot do related to uh, a budget recommendation such as that. Mayor, I, I just want to also add some clarification. There is an item that has been approved from the fiscal committee this morning that does recommend reappropriating funding from the police department to our oversight office, and that is a reduction of their budget. Now, it's not for the $9 million that was discussed this morning, but it is for an amount of $400,000. That is what is on the city's commission agenda today at this time from staff. So you're right. So that, you that, 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 that reduces the budget by $400,000 to fund three positions as part of the reform efforts. That, that's, that is the item that's on the agenda. There was discussions this morning for amending that to an amount greater than $400,000 to $9 million. Thank you, City Manager. Uh, uh, so, City Attorney, can you weigh in whether this is the appropriate time for folks to weigh in on this item, or should we ask them to wait till our uh, public comment period towards the end? So, I agree with the City Manager. So, I think there needs to be clarity on um, what people are, um, if they're talking about the 32%, that should be a conversation at the end when we have um, public, open public comment because that is not an agenda item like Commissioner Lanier stated. But if they're talking, want to talk about the budget um, amendment or yeah, budget amendment or reductions related to what is on the agenda that the city uh, manager is recommending, then certainly they should be able to talk about that at this point. Okay, thank you. So for those of you watching, um, we do have a budget ordinance amendment that is recommending uh, shifting for reallocating $400,000 from the police department to support uh, three civilian positions, one of them being within the Office of uh, Public Accountability and Oversight. So that's our first ordinance under ordinances to be adopted. So if you wanna speak specifically to that item, you're welcome to do so. Uh, if you wanna speak in general about uh, defunding or making significant changes to the police department, we'll ask you to hold those comments until the end. All right, Daniel, do you want to see who else is on the line to be heard? Okay. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes to discuss an item that we're being voted on this evening. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is Alexa Andy Weird. I'm from Grand Rapids, Michigan, and I'm 37 and have lived here um, almost my whole life. I moved here when I was two. Um, I'm just calling to say that I strongly oppose defunding the GRPD in any way, shape, or form. And, and that's about it. I feel that our safety would be greatly compromised if we were to lose um, police officers from GRPD um, or any of the interns that work there. And so that's pretty much all I have to say is that I'm not in favor of it. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, caller. You're on with the City Commission. Are you speaking on an item that is being voted on tonight? I'm calling to express uh, my opposition to defunding the police, and I believe it was being voted on. Okay, go ahead. Your time starts now. Okay, my name's Kim O'Connor. I live in the city of Grand Rapids. 
I'm calling to express my opposition to defunding the police. Um, one of the major reasons is there's been a, 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 a huge increase in violent crime in our, the city of Grand Rapids for 2020. I think we've already reached our maximum or we've already um, matched the number of homicides in 2019 already this far this year into the year and also the increase in violent gun use and crime and defunding the police cannot happen because that will just continue to increase. Um, I know that a lot of people want to defund the police um, due to the police brutality um, information and, and stuff that's happening. There are other ways to deal with that. And our city has done a pretty good job of community involvement, trying to engage with the community, training and more positive things to make the, um, the relationship with the police a more positive experience. So I think defunding the police at this point would be wrong. Thank you. Thank you. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Hi, this is Michaela and I live in Grand Rapids. Okay, and you're speaking on an item we're voting on tonight? Uh, I'm calling to speak on the um, reduction of the police department budget. Go ahead. Right, thank you. Um, I'm just, I'll make this quick. I appreciate you listening to me. Um, I'm just concerned about um, the increase of the police department budget when other departments have been reduced or frozen. Um, I really think that the police department budget could be reduced and we could put that money into um, other community services such as getting quality jobs, education, and housing. And I think that this will lead to the outcome of public safety as evidence has proven that increasing access to quality jobs, education, and housing reduces crime, not increased police presence. Um, so yeah, so that's all I wanted to say is that I think the police department budget should be reduced and it should go into um, community services. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. Can you please lower your volume? Are you speaking? Hello? Are you speaking about an item that's being voted on tonight? Yes. Okay. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hi. Uh, my name is Nick Dukowski. Uh, I live in the city of Grand Rapids. Um, thanks for taking the time to listen to me. Um, I'm, yes, definitely for allocating $400,000 to uh, the Office of Accountability, that's great. Um, we also, I'm not sure what happened to Commissioner Yasasi's amendment to uh, reduce the police budget from 38% to 32%. Um, I spent about two hours this morning on the committee at a whole meeting and another hour preparing what I was going to say. Um, so I do just want to say, we've been hearing about how we can't change, reduce the budget without a plan, uh, which would make sense, but we've had plans. Um, and I think what we're looking for is an equitable, accountable police force, and that has not quite happened yet. Um, supporting the budget doesn't mean, supporting decreasing the budget doesn't mean that there can't be a plan, uh, but decreasing the budget uh, ensures that our money goes to plans that don't, won't go to plans that don't produce results. Um, what's the difference between $55 million of a plan we don't implement and $46 million of a plan we don't implement? $9 million that goes to the community programming. Um, Commissioner Lanier mentioned earlier several requests to get a fuller picture of the police budget and the necessity of it. So we're talking about $400,000 that's going to go from the police to the uh, OTA. And it's like, where, what is, what does the rest of the money go to? We don't have a line out of budget for that. Um, and this is the way it goes. We plan, we attempt, we try to get to meaningful progress, but it gets further and further away from us. So why are we doing the same thing, expecting different things? Um, some of you have stated you're for long-term reform, which is good, uh, but where, where, is, where is that long-term reform? When's the moment that that'll come into focus? Uh, will the police become more forthcoming with how they spend the money? 
with innovative ways to make more reductions than 400,000 in improved services? Uh, are they receptive to substantive reimagining of what public, public safety is? Why will that change if we do not make it happen? Uh, there won't be some magical time in the future when the stars align and the commission is ready to reform the police and the police are ready to be reformed when all the studies are done and everyone agrees. Uh, the time is now. Thank you for your time. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Are you speaking on an item that's being voted on tonight? I am. Okay, go ahead. Your time starts now. Hello, uh, my name is Zoe Tardy. I'm a resident of Hudsonville, and I'm asking city leaders to make a motion to reduce the Grand Rapids Police Department budget to the city charter's mandated 32% of the operating budget. We need the courageous leadership today, not in the future. Our community has waited long enough for the city of Grand Rapids to move towards its collective vision. If the city of Grand Rapids is to be nationally recognized as an equitable, welcoming, innovative, and collaborative city with a robust economy, safe, and healthy community, and the opportunity for a high quality life for all, then city leaders must act to ensure the, the opportunities it seeks to provide are funded and accessible to all residents. Currently, city funding is diverted away from community services that ensure access to quality jobs, education, and housing, which lead to the desired outcomes of the city while reducing crime and increasing safety. Eliminating funding for community services has been a counterproductive strategy for the city's desire to be safer because the evidence proves that increasing access to quality jobs, education, and housing reduces crime, not increases safety. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The police. Okay. City Clerk's Office, oh. City Commission, you're on with the commissioners. Please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is Nicole Grassmeyer, mm -hmm. and I live in Grand Rapids. And I was just calling about the move to defund the police. And I'm 100% um, against that. Just wanted to call in and voice my opinion. We love our police. I'm a mom of three children. and the the idea of even, I can't even fathom who's thinking up these ideas, I'll just be honest with you. Um, San Francisco tried it, they've got 98, more, 98% more dangerous than any other city. The homelessness, lawlessness, illegal drug use, property crimes, crime, uh, crime scene response scene uh, down, like we need our men in blue. And so I really know that this is a, a political scheme. Whoever is voting for this, follow the money trail, follow what's going on. And please, like, listen to your heart. Um, God is over all of this. And the police are used and they are good for our safety. Masks don't keep us safe. Our men in blue keep us safe. And having a couple here or there who maybe, I, I don't even understand. Um, what is in the minds of people, like I said, who are thinking to do this, but all I can say is it's got to be um, some evil minds, corrupt politicians that want to do this. So common sense, critical thinking would say we need our police officers. Um, we love our police officers. And are there reforms that need to be made? Sure. Yes, definitely. And you know what? We all have to look in the mirror and like reform ourselves. So um, in the end, I'm just going to say we love our police. We love our police. We love our police. And thank you for your time. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. Please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Juliana Caterberg, Granville. I am asking city leaders to make a motion to reduce the Grand Rapids Police Department budget to the city charter's mandated 32% of the operating budget. We need courageous leadership today, not in the future. Our community has waited long enough for the city of Grand Rapids to move towards its collective vision. If the city of Grand Rapids is to be nationally recognized as an equitable, welcoming, innovative, and collaborative city with a robust economy, safe and health community, and the opportunity for a high quality of life for all, 
then city leaders must act to ensure that the opportunities it seeks to provide are funded and accessible to all residents. Currently, city funding is diverted away from community services that ensure access to quality jobs, education, and housing, which lead to the desired outcomes of the city while reducing crime and increasing safety. Eliminating funding for community services has been a counterproductive strategy for the city's desire to be safer because the evidence proves that increasing access to quality jobs, education, and housing reduces crime rather than an increased police presence. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. Please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hey, uh, this is Ben Kramer. Uh, I live in Grand Rapids. And um, I just wanted to talk about the uh, proposal for the defunding of police. And I know everybody else has wanted to talk about that as well. But I mainly wanted to just say that... Um, lived in a lot of different communities in Grand Rapids and, you know, um, wherever you are, there's obviously crime and things like that. And every community I've been in, whether it's predominantly white, predominantly black, people who are good citizens and who want to, uh, you know, make their neighborhoods better and all these things, you know, they understand the need for police. And I understand the desire for, um, you know, to heal racial wounds and all that. And I think that's all positive. Um, I think as we do that, though, we can't put at risk the same, um, you know, community that we are saying that we want to uh, bring reconciliation to. I mean, these communities, uh, whether they're white, black, Latino, whatever, these poor communities are the ones that are suffering when we don't have the police that we need to, you know, police these neighborhoods. And so... That's my main concern, and I I moved to Grand Rapids, bought a house in Grand Rapids proper with my family because I love Grand Rapids and I love the community in general, you know. And uh, I mean, if, if this trend continues, I wouldn't stay. Uh, there's no way I'm going to live here with my family. And you know, I had to talk to a buddy of mine who just bought a house in Grand Rapids as well, and you know, he was near where the rioting was happening, and. You know, he had, he had asked me, like, oh, well, what do I do? How do I protect my family? And if the answer is, well, you're on your own, so buy a gun or whatever, like, that doesn't seem good enough. You know, I, I think we can do better than that. And so that's my main um, point at this point. So that's all I have. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. Please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is Tom Doyle, and I live in the city of Grand Rapids. And I was a Grand Rapids police officer for just shy of 29 years. Um, I'm calling to voice my opinion to not fund the Grand Rapids Police Department. We have one of the best police departments in the country one of the best trained police departments in the country. Um, when people come to the city of Grand Rapids, um, they're, the, the police department is a, a, a big, I, guess, I don't know, a big thing that, that people see and feel safe about. Um, and first of all, why are we even considering defunding the police department? Being a, a small minority for a terrible incident that happened in Minnesota. It's going to dictate how we operate in the city of Grand Rapids. When um, people call the police, there's nobody to come. The, the, disorderly, the disorderly calls that are a, a common problem, there's going to be no police officers to, to respond to that. And that's just that leads to more neighborhood problems. I just think that uh, this has to be really thought through before. Um, before you vote on something like this. Right now, 297 police officers in the city of Grand Rapids is barely, barely doing it. So just, uh, I'd just like to tell the city commission that uh, this should really be thought through and maybe tabled for a while too. This is not something you vote on uh, because some emotions have been running high for a few weeks. So um, 
you've been elected to make decisions for the city, and so hopefully you'll make the right decisions based on fact instead of emotion. So uh, I'd just like to say again, the police department should not be defunded. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Good evening. My name is Colleen DeRuce, and I live in Wyoming. I'd like to express my concern over the possible defunding of the GRPD. I believe that this would be extremely premature without having any kind of a plan in place. I would actually like to see more funding go to educating and possibly some workshops where officers, citizens, and everyday people get together and work on solutions. I think that this would help relations all the way around. I do believe that if we could do these things, we could come up with an actual plan and maybe publish that plan and put it on a vote for the people to decide. This is our community and everyone should have a voice. And just in closing, I'd just like to say, please don't jump on the bandwagon without knowing where it's going or who's driving. Thank you. Thank you. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is Russell Olmstead, Westside Grand Rapids. Uh, I'm just calling to speak in support of the increase in funding to the OPA. Um, but that that percentage of the proposed increase, I believe, is is short of where it should be. Uh, I think we should be looking at a three percent rather than the just over one percent of what we're doing. And it brings about the point of overall funding of the GRPD um, and getting to a point where we're reallocating funds to where they can be more useful to um, everything that's uh, that's needed in our in our community. We constantly talk about budgets being our our stated values, and we constantly state those values as being equity and being about um, transparency and being about accountability. Yet we never actually fund those values. We never actually make the bold decisions to move forward and fund them and make them a reality. And this is an opportunity to do so. This is finally an opportunity for us to put our values, our money, where our stated values are. Um, and I know there's been a lot of talk and a lot of fear mongering and a lot of scare tactics out there about defunding to 32%, how it's going to cut a third of the police force. That is absolutely factually untrue. All you have to do is look at the 2015, five years ago, police budget. We had 292 sworn officers, 422 total full and part-time positions, and it was $9 million cheaper. So we needed to figure out the answer to these hard questions. The money is there. The possibility is there. You can do it. You just need to vote to do it. We need progressive leadership. We need real leadership, visionary leadership, like what Commissioner Yasasi and Commissioner Jones and Commissioner Rephart have committed to. And we need one more of you to please step forward. Give us the commitment that we need and that we're demanding as a community to move forward and finally fund our values. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, caller. You're on with the City Commission. Please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hello. My name is uh, Christopher Oliphant, and I live in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, the $400,000 budget cut is not enough. I'm calling on the City Council on behalf of our city and the community you serve to reallocate the Grand Rapids City budget by defunding the Grand Rapids Police Department to the charter mandated 32% of the city's budget, freeing up about $9 million to be used for community-focused and community-led programming, including the Office of Oversight and Public Accountability. 
It is crucial that this new office has the funding that it needs to do the work it was created for. Because Grand Rapids is a growing city, it is imperative that new approaches to advancing the interests and well-being of its working class people are worked out immediately. Any time wasted will amount to lives lost, therefore community-centered programs need funding now. The Grand Rapids Police Department needs to be defunded now. The Grand Rapids Police Department is under investigation by the Michigan State Police for their abusive misconduct over the last 10 years. The residents of Grand Rapids must be the priority of city, of city leaders. The city manager report contends that crime in Grand Rapids has been decreasing significantly since 2006. Part one crimes, murder and non-negligent hom homicide, rape, robbery, aggravated assault, burglary, motor vehicle theft, larceny theft, and arson are down 45%. Part two crimes, essentially everything else, are down 23% since 2006. It is time to figure out how we can save lives and improve the community. Reallocate the $9 million to the Office of Oversight and Public Accountability. Again, Grand Rapids is ever expanding and the community needs protection from the Grand Rapids Police Department. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. Can you please lower the volume on your device? Hi, thank you for taking my call. Uh, firstly, I know of a lot of folks that are unable to access public comment right now and thought you should know. Um, previous callers likely purse clutching and fearful of folks outside of their suburbs or gated communities to have no concept caller, of the violence. I'll, I'll reset your time. Communities of color. I'll reset your time. Can you state your name and the city in which you live? Yes. My name is Rick. Uh, I live in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Go Sorry ahead. about that. That's okay. Am I good to go? You're all set. All right. Thank you. Um, yeah. So firstly, I know of a lot of folks that are unable to access the public comment. Just wanted you to know of that. Um, regarding previous callers, um, they seemingly have no concept of the violence that police bring to communities of color um, by stating that more police means an increase in public safety. That is factually incorrect. Uh, they've also been using racist dog whistles as well as showing a clear abhorrence for the poor and homeless, which I think your commission should know. Study after study shows that reducing police presence and investing in public services such as housing, health care, and mental health services are what actually reduces crime, not more punitive policing. Additionally, no, the GRPD is not doing an incredible job and is not the best trained. In fact, they are currently under active investigation by the Michigan Civil Rights Commission for over 24 counts of discrimination. Defunding is not a radical idea. Cities around the United States are doing this because it's the right thing and it works. I'm calling to ask the support Commissioner Yusasi's motion, which she presented during the Committee of the Whole meeting this morning, to reduce the GRPD budget from 39% to 32% within fiscal year 2021. Um, they've operated at the, that level before, they can do it again. Funding should be redistributed to public services for communities of color at the guidance of black community members and groups. Please follow in Yasasi and Jones' bold leadership and commit to investing in our community, not police. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Mayor and commissioners, the call waiting system is being worked on. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hello, my name my name is Hannah, and I live in the city of Grand Rapids, and I serve on the board of the Garfield Park Neighborhood Association. I'm calling because I would like to um, comment on the reallocation of uh, the $400,000 to create civil, uh, civilian positions for the GRPD. Uh, in my neighborhood, it, it, the, the comments that came before me, it's clear that many folks uh, have the privilege of, of believing that the GRPD serves them and keeps them safe. And that's a wonderful feeling. And I wish that uh, more folks in my neighborhood would fe could feel that way. But unfortunately, um, my within my neighborhood association with, and the 5,000 households that we represent, uh, it is very clear that particularly within communities of color, the black and Latinx communities that 
we serve as a board, uh, these individuals do not feel safe with GRPD at the helm. And uh, even a, a reallocation of a minimal amount of $400,000 would not do enough to address the ills and the, and the, the harm that GRPD has, has done and continue to do to our communities, particularly communities of color, though my, I myself am white and have like have uh, seen uh, instances where bias in policing has been evident, racial bias, um, gender bias, et cetera, have been uh, present in policing and in the way that GRPD addresses uh, the neighbors in my area. Um, so not only would I like to express um, concern around this, I would call it a Band-Aid um, uh, for, for what is a larger problem of a white supremacist system that uh, continues to perpetuate systemic racism, but I would also like to provide support both to Commissioners Isasi and Jones for um, considering larger solutions and agree with a few of the callers before me that this notion is not radical. In fact, it is something that uh, it's time for our city to, to consider because we have a, a history of um, excessive use of force within GRPD against communities of color, and this is well documented. And if, if my neighborhood association is continuing to get phone calls directly to our director and our staff to their cell phones from neighbors who don't feel safe calling the, the police department. In fact, they, they choose to call uh, you know, an untrained individual who's getting paid <laughs> woefully less than they should be to be handling these, these instances because they feel the bias that is applied to them when the police department shows up. Um, this needs to be a larger issue. And so I would uh, voice caution to, to the commission and the, the broader group to, uh, when looking at some of these smaller um, smaller issues or smaller Thank solutions, you. I, Caller, I would that's say. three minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You please state your name and the t a city in which you live. Your time starts uh, now. Now. Go ahead. Uh, my name is Jeff. I live in Allendale, but I've worked in the city for the last 24 years. Um, I do not in any way support the reallocation of any funds from the Greenwich Police Department's budget to uh, further fund the oversight office. Uh, the Grand Police Department already 100% funds that office, which I think is a huge mistake, and that money should come directly out of the city's general fund. Um, additionally, uh, as far as knocking the police department's budget down $9 million, uh, I think that's a huge mistake. Um, and if that was to happen, you're going to see Grand Rapids fall right off all these mm -hmm. magazine covers as a great place to live, and we're going to fall right in line with Detroit and Grand Rapids. Um, if that money was to come out of the Grand Rapids Police Department budget, I can tell you, even though I've worked in the city for 24 years, that I'm going to spend a dime on my money in a city that doesn't support its police department. Um, and then the last thing I had to say was I thought it was interesting as the meeting started and all the calls, probably the first 10 or 15 were in support of the police department, that the mayor decided to shut that down until the negative calls started coming in, and then he let it, he allowed, started to allow them to continue. So I'm pretty disappointed in uh, our commissioner and our mayor, and if this goes through, I will find another city to spend my money in that supports their police. Is it? Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hi, I'm, my name is Curtis West. I'm from the city of Grand Rapids. Um, I am speaking on the subject of more of reforming the police department than defunding them. I, it'd be a lot more better if the Grand Police Department would be more actively be involved in communities, more, not just blacks, like all communities, from all races and stuff like that. I think that we have now sit down and have a weekly. Um, we can be meeting with all the neighborhood watch associations and maybe some of the neighborhood watch associations we can get more involved with the people in the community and we come to a better a resolution than gun violence on both ends. 
Yeah, and that's all I have to say. But I think it's be better off is just that we have more re reforming than defunding. Thank you. Thank you, caller. All right, I am going to pause the calling. Uh, the city clerk would like to say something. Yes. Yeah, so, um, so we have at the moment um, 40 lines dedicated. We're, we're hitting that limit. We need to move it up to 70. So we did a, our IT did a test to, to be able to go to the line without losing anybody in the queue. Um, so we, we need to do that a minute to add more lines um, for call ins. And then um, if for some reason it does happen, then, you, then please call back in. But the test showed that it shouldn't drop any calls. So we're going to do that in a moment. So Daniel, just let us know when we're with the IT team when we're ready to go again. I've just been informed that we are all set, so I'll start taking calls. All right, thank you, everybody. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. Please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hello, my name is Stephanie Kelsey, and I am a homeowner in the second ward of Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I am reaching out to you to say I support the $400,000 reduction to the GRPD's budget and further defunding to the 32% charter minimum. I've been attending the virtual meetings. Our city has been holding online since the beginning of June and reading our strategic plan as well as our preliminary fiscal budget to better understand where, how, why money is being spent in our city and what our city officials are focused on accomplishing. After reading these documents, it is clear that people of our black, indigenous, and people of color communities are being treated inequitably. After reading our city's fiscal plan for 2020, it was awful to learn people of color in our city made up 70% of all felony and misdemeanor charges, Caucasians making up 30%, when people of color are only 40% of our city's population, Caucasians making up 60%. Our police force justice system is failing our community. Why do we spend so much of our city's funding on departments that disproportionately and negatively affects our black, indigenous people of, of color communities? Why not instead invest more in their futures and neighborhoods? Our city's strategic plan lists equity as one of its six values. The plan also states racial equity is achieved when one's race or ethnicity does not determine, in a statistical sense, how one experiences opportunities, power, and life outcomes. Investing in our police force does not achieve racial equity as defined by our city's strategic plan. Our city's vision to be nationally recognized as an equitable city with the opportunity for a high quality of life for all is also far from our reach by directing so much of our funding to our police department over other community-based programs. It is in our city's best interest to deny the city commission's proposed GRPD budget and reduce it to the charter minimum of 32%. We need to direct more of our funding to creating affordable housing, a basic human right, investing in education, public transportation, and job opportunities for our black, indigenous, people of color communities, not continue to giving ever-increasing sums to our city's police budget. Thank you, City Commissioner Yusafi, for motioning for a decrease to the GRPD budget. Thank you all for your time. I forfeit the rest of my time. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. Please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hey, my name is Cody. I live in Rockford, Michigan. I work in Grand Rapids. Um, frequent Grand Rapids with family and friends all the time. Um, the reason I'm calling today is about this proposal to reduce the police budget by 32%. Um, I do not understand why this is even being considered. I think it's I think it's a knee-jerk reaction to um, something that was sparked in a city um, over in Minnesota. I don't think it's relevant to make decisions in our city based on um, shortcomings in other cities per se. Um, Looking at some statistics I received today in the city of Grand Rapids, it shows uh, gun crime is up 63% from a year ago today. Homicides are up 86%. Arson up 52%. Vehicle theft 35%. Robberies up 14%. Sex offenses up 18%. And I just don't, I mean, I have no idea why we would consider slashing the, the police budget by a third when we're seeing an uptick in crime. I mean, I work in the environmental industry, and so I like to compare to that quite a bit with similarities. And that would be similar to if we saw a, a significant increase in industrial and commercial sites being contaminated, 
with businesses not doing their due diligence and just contaminating properties um, and such. And that would be like slashing our brownfield redevelopment, environmental funding to enforce cleanups and regulations for those sites. It makes no sense. There'd be there's no other industry where you would see a third of a budget decrease when you see such a stark increase in the problem that they are working to resolve. And I I just worry that what we're going to create is by doing that we will create a system where our police officers are vastly understaffed, um, putting our citizens at significantly more danger of crime. We'll see longer response times to calls. We'll see more police officers arriving to crimes after they've already committed. Um, and to me, it's just a, it's a significant safety issue. I think, honestly, if you, if you cut the budget, I mean, they're saying 75 to 80 officers that cut the budget by that much. I think you're going to see a significant increase in crime, furthermore than what we see now. And I think it's going to cause a culture where um, people just move out of Grand Rapids, businesses move out of Grand Rapids. You see less people going downtown, spending nights and evenings with their family, enjoying the, the festivities that Grand Rapids has, the heritage. And I just think we're going to see that go away if we do this. And um, In conclusion, I guess... I'll go back to what I started with. I think I think this proposal is a knee-jerk reaction to something that happened in another state, and I don't think you, know, you guys are supposed to be looking out for the interest of Grand Rapids. You're not supposed to be making decisions that are oh, that's cost three minutes. Thank that, you. That happened elsewhere. That's three Bye -bye. minutes. Thank you. Caller, you're on the line with the City Commission. Please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is uh, Caleb. I am currently living in the city of uh, Warren, and I am originally from Grand Rapids. Um, I grew up there, hometown. And um, I'd like to talk about and discuss the defunding of the police um, that's on the table today. Um, me and my wife currently travel from Warren to Grand Rapids often, almost every week, to see friends and family in the GR area. Um, when we heard that this initiative of defund the police was on the table, it um, it brought fear to our lives. It definitely made us think twice every time we got the chance to go to Grand Rapids and um, spend time with friends and family. And I know talking to other people, it also brought fear to their lives um, when talking about that idea with them, too. Um, some statistics that I found out about the thief on the police that compounded my fear was that the proposed budget would go ahead and cut $9.3 million out of the police department's budget. What does that mean in terms of personnel? Um, some more research and statistics I found was that that's 75 to 80 officers that would be going to go ahead and cut from the police department, um, 21 interns. I also just discovered that um, the night shift is made up of 66 people that had almost get rid of an entire shift of police officers. Um, but I know that talking about police officers is, is definitely, and the police is definitely divisive these days. And so talking to the council, I'd definitely like to maybe view it uh, a different way. Um, and thinking of other key parts of modern day society for infrastructure, right? Things like firefighters, EMS, roads. Um, water, electric. Um, a statistic that was brought up from the criminal statistics of Grand Rapids is that crime today in Grand Rapids is up 63%. Now, when talking about those other infrastructure elements, just to get rid of the divisiveness of the police, if we were to say talk about firefighters or EMS and say that, for example, firefighters um, had 63% more um, burns that they couldn't get to, houses, violence, or, you know, deaths caused by burning. Um, the, um, uh, a response, a responsible response to that from the city definitely would not be to cut the budget to keep parts of infrastructure like that. Well, guys, sorry, the fire department, we're going to cut you down uh, just because you can't make 63% of it. Or EMS, right? If wait times on EMS were up 63%, you definitely want to cut the budgets there. It definitely seems more help less. Um, those are just a few of the thoughts I have concerning this issue. I know that being the responsible um, elected commission members of Grand Rapids that you guys will go ahead and do the moral and responsible thing that you have been elected to. 
So um, those are a few of my thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Being the responsible. Caller, you're on with the city commission. Can you please lower the volume on your device? Yeah, thank you. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is Cristina. I live in Grand Rapids. Commissioners, thank you so much for taking our calls. We know that as city leaders, you guys are doing the best you can to protect our city and do the best for, for our city. Um, I urge you to please do not defund the Grand Rapids Police Department. I urge you to not cut the budget of the department. My family and I have lived here for decades. We're so proud to call Grand Rapids our home. Um, it's amazing to see it continuously grow and make lists of top places to live and top places to work, grow your families. Um, and the Grand Rapids Police Department is a major key. We know how important their influence and their protection um, is to the department. And I know some horrifying things have been happening around the country and the world, but this is not the way. Seeing those police officers in the community, whether it's gas stations out in the streets, protecting us, we're so grateful as a Hispanic woman, I know I'm speaking for a lot of brown and minority people who know how important these officers are. They are just as upset and sad and terrified for some of these things, but they are not the other officers who didn't even belong in the union, in the force. We have some, we should be proud of these police officers that are representing Grand Rapids. And we're afraid people who have families and businesses, if there are less police officers to protect us, we don't want to have our businesses here. We don't want to raise our families. We have to think about those people um, who are going to be in risk. And people who do live in those communities are also concerned. So please, city leaders, I urge you to not defund the police department. Do not cut the budget. Grand Rapids Police Department, thank you so much for all that you do for us. Thank you so much. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name in which the city you live. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is Julie. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Go ahead, caller. Your time starts now. Um, I don't hear myself. Well, oh, okay. Anyways, I'm, I've am i worked downtown uh, for 30 years on and off, and our family and extended family frequent downtown often. We have many businesses that we are... Uh, friends with down there, and my concern is this um, this sudden defunding of the police. That um, just the timing seems interesting to me. Um, I just uh, it seems to be based on emotion in light of recent events. So I'm very concerned regarding that. And I I just really respected meeting with Mayor Bliss yesterday, and how she just told my children and I that she. Um, she personally just said that she doesn't make any decisions in haste. So I really respected that and um, just am glad that, that these decisions are not being made in haste and that this will continue to be talked about. And my family and I were downtown yesterday and it was just a completely different feel. So I'm very concerned as a citizen. We were the only family walking around downtown for three hours. And that is not like what I remembered it to be a few months ago. And I don't think it's related to COVID. Um, there is something else going on there. The Monroe Center is blocked now with signs and protesters. And just we were concerned for our safety. And I just can't imagine not having police officers down there and protecting us. And um, it was it was highly concerning. And it was just a complete um different feel. There's, uh, I just, I'm hoping that that's going to change all this graffiti that has been placed down there, um, especially in, in, in this time. Um, and I, I understand that there's already been a 1.3 million budget cut. So I'm questioning why there needs to be more. Um, I, I don't know if I, I don't think crime is going down from what I'm learning. Crime is going up according to stats. We're above the national average in certain areas. And now we've got rioting. So this is um, very alarming, um, very concerning, and we need more protection, more funding. And we love our men in blue. They they serve us. They protect us. And yes, not that there's, um, you know, one that's uh, bad out there or two. Just like in any profession, you know, with if you can't generalize and include the whole police department. So we love these guys. We hung out with them yesterday. They we laughed with them. We got a tour of the. Uh, the department, and we were so honored. And so please 
do not defund our police department. And I would like to suggest we get to continue talking through this and not um, make a decision today. Um, we were told yesterday that this, it would not be a quick decision. So I'm really expecting that we get to keep revisiting this um, before anything is decided on tonight. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Hello, you're on with the City Commission. Uh, please state oh, hello. your... This is... Go ahead, your time starts now. To start speaking. Um, my name is Martha Cooper. I live in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I'm not sure if you can hear me. I'm going to go in the other way room, step away from my computer. I'm going to just go ahead and speak. I've been um, concerned about many of the people are from not from Grand Rapids, and they express a lot of fear. Um, and the woman who was just recently speaking is also expressing a lot of fear and was very happy she got a tour. However, I can kind of tell there's a lot of white fear. And if you watched the coverage of News 8, it wouldn't surprise me. Um, it was pretty biased. Also, I just wanted to say that many of the folks spoke and said that back in the day, we had more police officers. We were spending less on other things in the police department. They are over-policing certain areas, and those areas have been the place where the police have had black children at gunpoint. I think those kinds of things are too far. Um, I don't think that, that our community, certain areas of our community do not feel safe. And I've been talking about housing, and you've been talking about equity, and this is the time to start putting some of that money into other community services that you have neglected for so long. We are in a pandemic. Nothing was done for the homeless to keep them safe or to keep us safe. This is true. There's, I'm talking about the truth. If we don't take care of the people, then we are going to have crime. We are funding this backwards. Please come after the crime. And if they come before, there I've had situations where I have stepped in to help friends that were having a hard time before calling the police. Because I have seen a ridiculous amount of police at the uh, friendly, family-friendly um, Kosecha March. And I thought to myself, this is purely meant to intimidate a group of people. We right now are in the middle of what I'm basically calling a culture war. I saw that when you call this a riot, it was like they were expecting a riot. They had the National Guard in town. And when they didn't get it, they created it. They lobbed tear gas and they did this to a crowd. Who is angry? Angry at what's going on here, not what's going on in Minneapolis. That's what people don't understand. We do have a Civil Rights Commission investigation going on, so they are not unbiased. This is not about equity. We need addiction treatment if you want to have less robberies. We need housing if you want to have communities. And when you have communities, Cooper, you don't have as minutes. much crime. That's three minutes. Thank you, Ms. Cooper. Uh, Hello, caller. You're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Okay. Uh, I'm from Grand Rapids, and my name is Ishmael Hodge. Um, I would like to either start a motion or follow the motion of defunding our police department to the city charter mandated 30%. And um, that is about the all of my statement, so I don't really need three minutes, unfortunately. Okay, thank you, caller. Yeah, thank you. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and in the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hi, I'm Dylan. I'm from Grand Rapids City proper. Um, yes, I'm actually from Grand Rapids, unlike a shocking number of you all calling it today. I support the reallocation of 400000 as a start for the appropriate use of city funds. 
I'm horrified by how much of my city tax dollars goes to a system designed to police and oppress minority communities in a city that's consistently recognized as being disproportionately hostile to black citizens. If the city was genuinely committed to equity and opportunity for all citizens, we would consider a greater reduction. I want to see our communities and neighborhoods be safe and strong. I want our communities to have adequate funding for social programs and initiatives that will enable them to grow. I want to see my hard-earned tax dollars go to improving lives rather than a heavily armed band of folks who are here to break up families and create instability. Reallocating the small proposal that you seem to want to talk about tonight is a fine first step, but we need more. We've done fine with less funding in the past, and we can do it again. It's time for the police to face the same kind of choices that every other public service in Grand Rapids has had to face at the cost of police funding. Our school system has had to choose between closing schools and laying off dozens of staff this year. I also want to point out as someone who works with a lot of old dudes, the trading in workshops, they don't change behavior. I bet a lot of you know that, but don't want to acknowledge it. Continuing to fund a broken system is not going to help our lovely city. And funding more trainings and uh, this kind of workshop thing is, you might as well just fund a, a bonfire of cash in Rosa Parks that'll be just as effective. I also, real quick, want to uh, express how proud I am of you, Commissioner Yasasi. I've never been so proud of a government representative before. Also, shout out to you, Commissioner Jones. Both are wonderful. Thank you. Good night. And I yield my time. Thank you, caller. Hello, caller. You're on with the City Commission. Please lower the volume on your device. Please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. My name is Zaina Woodson. I live in the city of Grand Rapids. Um, I have a few notes from some of the callers um, earlier today that I wanted to go through. So first of all, um, I would like to say that I am um, in support of divesting funds from the GRPD and investing them into community services. Um, police do not prevent crime, as has been stated, and robust budgets as has been stated, does not um, stop crime from happening. And the statistics, the fear-mongering that people have talked about, up 63%. Um, to me, seems like a sign that it's not working. They have been over their 32% uh, for the last few years, yet crime is up. So don't we think that maybe we should be doing something different? Also, the people who thought about this, the people who are pushing this, are the folks who are being disproportionately patrolled, harmed, and harassed. So you guys thinking it's a knee-jerk reaction or it's been a few weeks or that it's sudden is woefully ignorant. You just started paying attention at this time. They also talked about Grand Rapids being on all these magazines, the best place to live. The last article I saw for Black Americans in Grand Rapids, it was the number five worst place to live. I would like to say we have a plan of where to cut funding, but like the lack of transparency in every part of the police department, I didn't see a line item anywhere about the budget. So can't really go there. But one thing I can say, the unnecessarily the unnecessary surveillance of black and brown organizers in the city is not needed. We don't need to pay people to look at our community organizers. So if this is the best trained, if this is the benchmark, then we are doomed. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Paula. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hello, my name is Rosemary Brown. And first of all, I would like to say that I am for the $400,000 going to the oversight committee. And also, talk is done. There's no more talk. They've talked and talked and talked for years. So it's time to do something. You talk about criminals. You don't give the criminals guns and let them run the city. And I'm talking about the people in blue. And just so you know, there's only three officers that I know of that I kind of like. The rest, no. We have an officer for our building that doesn't even show up who's in blue because we are the poor African Moorish descendant people that live in this building in Grand Rapids, Michigan. 
Police are not psychologists and psychiatrists. You need people that are trained to be out there to handle and talk to these people that have mental problems. What happened to George Floyd in Minnesota does affect Grand Rapids and every other city and state because that same thing happens to African Moorish people every day, especially in Grand Rapids. And if, you know what? That's why we're in the situation. I heard the mayor say, please reserve your comments about this until the end. So what happens? Everybody that didn't listen came on and started talking about the same thing she said to wait until the end. So that's why we're in this situation, because everybody wants to do what they want to do. They don't listen. And uh, hold on, let's see. Uh, clean up. Uh, clean up means they're going to uh, put all the African Moors people into involuntary slave labor. That's where we're going with this. They always leave out the African Moors descendant people that also live in Grand Rapids when they're talking about, oh, we the Grand Rapids people in public. Well, we live here too. We have jobs too. We pay taxes too. You always seem to forget that. You always seem to forget that. You want to put money everywhere else except for where it's needed in this area. Like the one lady said, you put the money ahead of the police. If you put the money where it belongs, then you would not have to have as many police. So uh, the time for talk is done. The time for action is now. And I'm done. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. Can you please lower the volume on your device? Caller? Hi, sorry about that. That's okay. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. My name is Karen Myers, and I live in Palmstock Park. I urge the City Commissioners to vote to defund the GRPD to the charter mandated 32% immediately. Grand Rapids needs brave leadership now, not incrementalism. The facts show that the GRPD doesn't keep us safe. Crime has been on a steep decline for years. Under 6% of the crimes the GRPD responds to are violent. The vast majority of GRPD work is administrative follow-up, and they have a solve rate of under 28%. Instead, police have actively harmed our communities with racial profiling and violence in such a regular and alarming pattern that the Michigan Department of Civil Rights currently have the GRPD under review. Please just consider this for a moment. You are spending over one third of your budget on a police force that claims to keep people safe, but actively does the opposite of that. Massive amounts of money are spent on unnecessary patrolling and on police overtime. You could free up millions of dollars just by cutting overtime pay. That money could go to black communities most affected by the violence of police to spend on programs and projects that actually keep communities safe and thriving. We need action on this right now. The idea that the GRPD needs time to slowly reform and adjust to changes is absurd and dangerous. We don't have time to wait. Community members in this city have been demanding changes for years, and there has been no shift in the behavior of the police. Police in the city have continued to racially profile, harass, and violently abuse black and brown people. Worst of all, they exist in a culture of complicity with the city and the Grand Rapids Police Officers Association, in which officers who are caught doing violence to people never come to justice. I urge you to show break leadership and vote to defund now. Thanks. I leave the rest of my time. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hello, my name is Heather and I live in Grand Rapids. First, I want to thank the City Manager and Chief Kane for their hard work and dedication. Also, I would like to extend my gratitude to those officers who suit up every day despite world events today and facing the loss of their jobs. I'm a bit alarmed by one commissioner's comments from this morning's meeting. He said, and I quote, I want change. I want to have it one day very soon where we don't need. He hesitates here and he says, where there's limited need for law enforcement. To me, that sounds like wanting to dismantle our fleet. Where's our safety net? Who will I call if someone breaks into my home? Will someone respond hours after I'm killed? I also heard a lot of what ifs today.
yesterday from another commissioner. I love that she questions everything and has voice of reason. Now, what if it's like Atlanta? Over the 4th of July, they had 11 shootings, 31 shot, and five dead. They have now declared a state of emergency. People are dying. They're being murdered. You have really good people with targets on their backs. Every single day they suit up, even with budget cuts thrown in their faces, to be walking targets. Do you know how many police officers have been killed since the protests and riots? We have one in Michigan alone, which is still too many. Are you going to protect women who are getting abused? Let us not forget about the officer that was killed in Grand Rapids responding to a domestic. There is improvement. They need more funding. They need more funding for adequate training. We need our community to back these men and women. I'm calling because I do not support pushing funds away from our police department. And that's all I have. Thank, Thank you. you. Caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Uh, hello, I'm John from Northwest Grand Rapids. Uh, thank you for the, your service and for taking my call. Uh, I am a Grand Rapids resident who's lived here for 25 years. I've worked downtown for almost that whole time. I'm uh, calling to say that the idea of defunding or reallocating um, the budget for our police is both reckless and dangerous. The Grand Rapids Police Department already has fewer officers than needed. Any defunding will probably be accomplished by laying off more police officers. Not enough officers will put more strain on the department. When policing levels decrease, crime always goes up. It's been proven over and over in the past. Enough strain may be the tipping point where remaining police begin resigning, like we're seeing in other parts of the country. This point may not be able to be turned back. Grand Rapids has had amazing growth over the past years, being recognized as a safe, safest place to raise a family. Um, it's been a great city as watching it uh, grow. Um, as our city commissioners and mayor, please uh, make sure you protect our city and realize the inevitable increase in crime hurts everybody. The killing of um, George Floyd was a horrible thing, and the police who were involved should and will be punished. But our police did not do this or anything similar. Um, last year at the 4th of July fireworks downtown, I attended with my family as we were leaving. A shootout occurred right by us, and a man died from gunshot wounds right in front of my family. Um, that's one of two that occurred that night. Um, police were there and quick to respond and keep people safe during the accident, during a car accident that also happened there. Um, but there was a murder, and nobody, for a bit there, nobody knew where the gun was or who was shooting, and we were basically stuck in the middle of a crime scene. Uh, after that summer, um, People are already getting nervous about going downtown. Um, to those who wish to cut the budget of our police or to fund the police, um, you know, how will our city remain safe and continue its growth? People are breaking the laws openly and blatantly last summer during that celebration. Um, when there are police patrolling the area, how uh, will that problem go away when there are fewer police? <clears throat> Crime will increase and people will stop going downtown start moving away. I feel it's irresponsible and naive to defund and reallocate this money as an experiment that we're trying for the first time. This is not a decision that you can really undo. Um, those wanting to commit a crime will quickly know that they can get away with more. Crime will increase, straining our police department. Um, police could start quitting. The rest of it is uh, inevitable. When this experiment fails, the price would be our city. I believe, if anything, we should increase funding for GRPD for our staff and training. That's three minutes, there. caller. Thank you. Caller, you're on with the city commission. Please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hi, my name's Alyssa. I live in Grand Rapids, the Heritage Hill area. Um, firstly, I would like to address the majority of callers that are opposing any defundment of the police are not from Grand Rapids. They live uh, in the suburbs. I think that this is a very egregious waste of our city commission's time and resources, and I think that you should listen to the people who live in this city. I also think that this is because I know for a fact that 17% of our GRPD officers live outside of the city. 
17% live within the city and the rest live outside the city. So it's very obvious that the people that support the majority of people who support the police live outside of the city as well. I don't think that these people should dictate what goes on for people who actually live here, like I do. I think um, we need to lower the budget to the 32%. I am calling that you support Kazi's uh, motion to defund and reduce the GRPD's budget from 39 to 32%. Funding should be redistributed to public services for communities of color at the guidance of black community members and groups because increasing public services such as housing access, healthcare, and mental health services are what actually improves public safety. Please follow Yasasi's and Jones's bold leadership and commit to investing in other communities. I also want to mention that I know for a fact that other parts of our city's budget are being defunded and budgets are being cut left and right because of COVID. So I do not think that the GRPD should be exempt from this. The GRPD gets the majority of our budget, almost a half of our city's budget, and there's no reason for that. People in the city do not want this, and I no longer want to hear from people in the suburbs' opinions of what's going on in our city. I don't care if you've lived here previously or if you work here or you come here to go to Van Andel. Your opinion doesn't matter. We want uh, the budget to be lowered. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. Please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. My name is Anita, and I live in Grand Rapids, and I work in Grand Rapids. I live in the second ward. Um, let me start by saying that I have worked in social services for a number of years. I've worked with the homeless. I've worked with subsidized housing, and I've volunteered with religious organizations, providing people with low-cost or free housing with no utility costs and they get free food, still saw substance abuse, resulting death. I encountered more police officers working in free and low cost housing than I have in my entire life. And I have known some officers and their families for decades. So housing is not the answer. It's a nice thing. It's a good idea, but it's not a fix all. You can take someone to water. You cannot make them consume it regardless of your great intentions. I also, um, in case you can't tell, I do not support diverting any money from the GRPD budget to anything. The three positions that the $400,000 is um, intended to fund, one of them maybe. The other one, I just question completely, and the other one, I really question the unbiasedness of that position. Um, I don't think it's fair or correct to blame Grand Rapids Police Department for the wrong, and I do say wrong actions of some officers in Minneapolis. Um, don't hold GRPD accountable for someone else's errors because you don't wanna be held accountable for someone else's errors. Um, I think that there's a lack of respect for the police department. And as the saying goes, if you want respect, then you need to show it. Um, the police officers are human. Um, there's only been one perfect human to walk the planet and they are not walking the planet now. So they are human. They have bad days, but show respect because you don't call them on your best day when everything is going great. You call them when you're having a crappy day and you are not nice to be around and don't really um, play well with others. Um, someone mentioned weekly meetings with the neighborhood associations, reform versus defunding. I appreciate that mentality. There are community policing officers that do work with the neighborhood associations. Um, and they try and show up to the meetings to talk with the residents. Um, but sometimes crime trumps that. I have worked with some amazing social workers who know how to de-escalate and relate with people. And yet one of those amazing social workers still did call GRPD to do a pickup to have someone's mental health evaluated. Why? Because a social Thank worker you, is caller, not that's equipped. Three, that's three minutes. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. 
My name is Robert. I live in Ada. And I wanted to call to specifically say I think we should not be even considering defunding the police. The police are a necessary entity of the city, and the staffing levels are already too low. I bring my city, my family down into the city often. Uh, we, we attend the arena, we attend the Civic Theater, we go down to things at uh, DeVos, and I can tell you that I would not be doing that with my family. I would not be choosing to spend my money that I earn as an employee or a person who works in the city downtown as I would not feel safe. And that is a, not just me, but my friends feel the same way. The tax base would not, would hurt because of the defunding. It would not help any persons in a lower socioeconomic area, whether it's persons of color or otherwise. The staffing levels would be reduced to a position in which it would make it unsafe for the police to do their jobs, and it would be unsafe for the citizens that actually need the police. It's a terrible idea. The fact that some of these people are calling and meeting in with prepared speeches that are ridiculous and have skewed numbers, it's just, it's, it's ridiculous. The idea that we're even voting on this or at this point is scary. Um, the police are a necessary need of the city, and the fact that we're considering even lowering them one officer, one dollar is ridiculous. The vote should probably be to increase their funding and increase their staffing. Um, the, the police department is a necessary thing. The staffing levels need to be maintained or increased, or I can speak from my family's perspective. I work in the city, and I would not want to bring my family down to the city if the staffing levels are reduced. And I know that several of my neighbors have expressed the same thing to me. Uh, I believe that you, as a city commission, will do the right thing, support the police officers who are working their best right now through a very difficult time. Thank you for your time. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Thank you very much. My name is Moana Gucci, and I live in Grand Rapids. I hear a lot of people saying that they're very afraid of crime, and the statistics show that uh, more police do not really prevent crime. What prevents crime is preventing what has led people to commit crimes to begin with, um, and that is a lack of options, a lack of alternatives, uh, substance abuse, and mental health issues. And so I fully support um, Commissioner Sassi's suggestion or motion that we allocate more funds away from enforcing, away from law enforcement and towards social services that will help prevent people from getting into criminal situations to begin with. Um, it's not a zero sum game. It's not a pie. Just because somebody gets more help on social services doesn't mean that you're less safe. It means you're more safe. And that's not police, that's, that's social services. Um, I would like to also point out that to people who say um, that they feel safe and the police are doing a great job are in a particular socioeconomic and racial position, and the people of color would probably not all say the same thing. I wonder if comments from people of color have been solicited for this particular motion, because I'm hearing a lot of people who are either not from Grand Rapids or um, perhaps are not people of color, and wonder how um, how much effort was made to make commenting on this issue available in communities of color. I would suggest that that's a good idea. Um, police are asked to do all sorts of things in addition to law enforcement. They're asked to be social workers, mental health workers, conflict resolution counselors. Um, some of those services can be had by directing funds towards social services rather than towards police. It's not about being less safe. It's about everybody being more safe and everybody being more equal. Thank you very much. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. Please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Thank you. My name is Amber and I live in the city of Grand Rapids. I'm calling in regards to an item on the agenda to reallocate 40, I'm sorry, $400,000 of the budget for three civilian positions. While in general, I support more civilian positions, I don't believe this goes, goes far enough. 
I encourage you to support Commissioner Yasasi's motion to reduce the GRPD budget to 32% of the city's overall budget and use these extra funds for more civilian programs and, sorry, civilian positions and prevention programs like cure violence, affordable housing, education, after school programs, workforce development, and mental health supports and services. We know from the research that these prevention efforts will actually reduce the high crime rates that many of the callers have previously mentioned. I'm also wondering why, if the GRPD is doing such a good job, then why do less than 17% of their officers actually live within the city of Grand Rapids? It's very concerning to me. Lastly, I'm concerned about the lack of transparency with um, the GRPD in general, but especially with the budget. And I'm wondering if a line item budget can be released. And that's a rhetorical question. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Have a good night. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is Maggie Smith and I live within the city of Grand Rapids in the third ward. I'm calling specifically to ask my commissioners, Commissioner Lanier, Commissioner Moody, and my mayor, Mayor Bliss, that you support Commissioner Asazi's motion to reduce the GRPD's budget from 39% to 32% since fiscal year 2021, should that motion come about tonight. Funding should be redistributed from the GRPD to public services for black communities. Having gone to a fair amount of GRPD events in the past few years, the messages from the police themselves stand alone as convincing myself and my husband as to why funding should be taken from the GRPD and reinvested into black communities in Grand Rapids. As a group, the GRPD are committed to interrupting true democracy, where we, the citizens, get a say in how we are governed and they interrupt this with accusatory propaganda. The message from the GRPD has been and continues to be, if you dare question how police perform their work, you are disrespecting killed police officers and putting community members at risk. These are the messages of a broken institution. They are such a broken institution that you will not find one member of the GRPD on record to speak out against what other members of the profession did to Breonna Taylor as an example let alone the upwards of 5,000 people who were killed by police in the U.S. since 2015. If you go on the pages of the GRPD Friend of Police, or excuse me, the Fraternal Order of Police Union page, and I say this as a member of the union myself, you will not find one message that encourages reform or changes to policing or regret about the violence that has occurred by police in other areas. What you will find is warnings, warnings of the terrible things that will happen if the police are not funded to whatever they deem as their appropriate funding level. There's also a post about a wolf that has convinced the sheep to get rid of the sheepdog and that the sheep are in trouble. There's also a racist meme and a lot of bravado. These are the threats of a broken institution. We are on the precipice of one of the largest mass eviction events in the history of the world. The GRPD has not shown that they are trustworthy as an institution to enact justice in our community. Funding and reallocating 7% is just the beginning, and the time is now for this beginning. To my commissioners, Commissioner Lanier and Commissioner Moody, and to my mayor, Mayor Bliss, please defund the GRPD now. I yield the rest of my time. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is Hillary. I actually live in Grand Rapids. Um, I want to know where this new legal advice is coming from about amending the budget. We've been talking about this for a month. This has never been discussed. I find it convenient that this has happened after uh, Commissioner Isasia Jones voted to or made a motion to vote on reducing to 32% this morning. And Mayor Bliss, you wanted to table this conversation. You didn't want us commenting on this. We don't care. This is the only conversation we should be having. You all have an itemized budget and you have not released it. It's been over a month and we are just getting weak responses <laughs> and weak promises of reform. Um, 20% of our total general operating fund 
is being spent on patrol units. That's what's projected for this year. Um, black and brown communities are disproportionately patrolled. And I think it speaks a lot to our city when we allocate $33 million to that. Um, and furthermore, over half of the GRPD budget is allocated for patrol services. I would also like to bring up a separate issue. I emailed this to you. I'm not expecting to get a response. Um, that black leaders and organizers in our community have been retaliated against for speaking out. They're being surveilled by police officers. They've been threatened uh, from the public and targets of heat speech. Sorry. Um, and you've been completely silent on that. It's time for you to acknowledge what they have said to condemn the officers and the public for those actions and make a commitment to real change that reflects the equity you run your platform, Ben. I yield my time. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. Please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Thank you. My name is Rebecca Whitman, and I live in the city of Wyoming, but I work in the city of Grand Rapids. Thank you, Mayor and City Commission. I spent 25 years helping to build a safe and vibrant city as a member of the Grand Rapids Police Department. I left as a command staff member. I've worked with many of you over the years. I need to remind you that reducing the funding, staffing, training, and resources to the police department will result in the loss of community relations, not an improvement. The proactive activities that they currently are involved in will go away entirely. If you as leaders of this city do not recognize the elite, professional, amazing, and dedicated police department that you are so blessed to have, you are not looking around. Look at other agencies across this country and look at what you have. The entire West Michigan community is so accustomed to professional, timely police response that you're blind to the good that your department provides. I know these men and women. The police get called when others cannot fix their problems, be it domestics, car crashes, mental health pickups, and many, many more dog barking complaints, loud parties next door. If they could solve these problems, they would. I urge you as city commissioners to educate yourselves about police decision-making, attend their trainings, do ride-alongs on, on crazy summer nights in the middle of the winter, learn what they do, learn what decisions they have to make in a matter of split seconds. And I will remind you, 13 years ago, after midnight tonight, Officer Robert Kosminski gave his life to protect a family that was in danger. Remember who you, each of you and each of these callers tonight that live in the city of Grand Rapids or the people that visit the city will call if they need help. The police will still respond no matter what you think of them. I urge you to fully fund the Grand Rapids Police Department. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. You're, please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Thank you. My name is Sue Claire, and I live in the city of Grand Rapids. I grew up here in the city of Grand Rapids, attended the Grand Rapids Public Schools, and then became employed for the last 26 years with the Grand Rapids Police Department. I'm a super proud member, and the last caller, Rebecca Whitman, was one of my command staff. She did an excellent job in pointing out uh, that we actually promote uh, a good deal of community policing, proactive policing, where we do try and get out into those communities through things like on-base, uh, community resource programming, uh, going in and out of the schools. Um, I myself worked as a community specialist for a number of years before going into domestic violence investigations. That having been said, there are a vast number of programs that will be severely limited if funding is cut. In addition to that, um, our department is based solely on improving technology to work with people to help solve some of these problems. You start cutting the budget, you start taking away some of those technological advancements. You will lose your body camera, your storage for your body cameras. Uh, cruiser implementations will go down service repairs will go down, things will become unsafe, not only for the community, but those trust relations that we've been working so hard to get to, and we know we still have improvements to make, and we will continue to try and become a better department overall. But defunding the police department 
is going to severely hurt not only the police itself, but the vast majority of uh, community relations that we have been establishing through the Boys and Girls Club, through the schools, and trying to reach out to some of the younger ones and try and change perceptions as things go through this. We need to not jump to conclusions. We need to start looking at the long-term effect and specifically without looking around the nation at our community as it goes. Defunding is going to be a serious handicap on both sides of the fence. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. Please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Thank you. Uh, my name is Cherie, and I live in Grand Rapids. I'm calling to express my concern over the relocation of funds to an oversight committee. Um, I would like to make two points in regard to this. First, um, creating an oversight committee is an admittance of an internal problem. Um, the police should already be held accountable, and because they have not been, we are now seeing an abuse of power. Um, because there's such a deep-rooted problem, an oversight committee is no longer enough. Um, second, I implore you to look into how cities reduce crime uh, with public funding, such as education. Uh, it makes more sense to me to take preventative measures rather than to prepare for a problem. Uh, if we put money into items such as uh, mental health and addiction services, we'll naturally start to see a reduction in homelessness and drug-related crime. Um, I do support uh, changing the budget for the GRPD to 32% and relocating the other funds to the community. Um, I do believe by doing so, the city of Grand Rapids will tell its citizens, and more specifically its children, that they see them as persons who are capable of success rather than seeing them as potential criminals. Uh, I appreciate your time, and I do appreciate the conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, before we uh, take the next caller, may I ask uh, of the city clerk to uh, notice us of uh, the number of callers in the queue? I've, I've been told there's a significant number of people waiting. And if um, if he could also give those who uh, do not wish to continue to wait alternative ways in which they can share their, their comments if they do not wish to continue to wait. Sure. Thank you, city manager. Um, at the current time, I think we have about 38 in the in the queue and um so if if people have want to email their comments and they'll, they'll go to the city commission they can email city clerk at grcity.us city clerk at grcity.us dot us one more time city clerk at grcity.us and we'll get those comments to the city commission thank you Go ahead, Daniel. Okay. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is Tanner. I live in Wyoming, Michigan and work in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, firstly, I'd like to thank commissioners Yasaki and Jones for their bold step this morning, uh, moving to uh, move to a vote on the defunding of the Grand Rapids Police Department to the charter mandated 32%. Uh, thank you for your work. We appreciate you. I wanted to address some of the statistics that Chief Payne presented in his presentation this morning regarding the police budget. Um, he showed a list of cities that were of similar size to Grand Rapids and the ratio of officers per 1,000 citizens that they had. And then he said that to meet the $9 million reduction, we would have to move down uh, to 217 officers from 297. That would put us at 1.08 officers per 1,000 citizens, which is only 0.7 lower, or point, I'm sorry, 0 0.07 lower than the low end of that list, which was Huntington Beach, California, at 1.15 officers per 1,000 citizens. So the idea that this is a radical reform or a far left reform or like an anarchist reform is just not based in fact. It would put us at the low end of cities of our size. To that effect, Commissioner Rephart said this morning that he was looking forward to 
innovating a way into the future of incorporating social workers into our police force and mental health experts into our police force, or not into rather, but as their own department, um, putting us on the low end of cities of our size of police to citizen ratio is a great way to do that because it makes us an example of what somebody our size or a city our size can make possible. Um, as one of my friends commented earlier, uh, police patrols are 57% of the Grand Rapids Police Department budget right now, and patrol officers are the ones most likely to abuse their power or murder a person. And to the point of some of the commenters before me, uh, yes, George Floyd was murdered in Minneapolis. Does someone have to be murdered here for us to take action? Are we only ever going to act in a reactionary way? Breonna Taylor was from Grand Rapids, and at the last city commission meeting, we heard from somebody whose mentally disabled son was pinned by a police officer on a wellness check, which is the exact type of call that a social worker should be doing in the first place. Uh, additionally, Chief Payne said that because the Grand Rapids Police Department didn't start hiring people of color at any kind of significant rate until recently, due to the police union's contract, they would have to be the ones fired first. When he used that as a logic not to defund the police department and saying we shouldn't defund the police department because they were explicitly white supremacist until recently is not good logic. That does not make sense. Um, the officers that should be, I understand that the police union contract will need to be renegotiated, but the officers caller, that need to be let go three, first. That's three minutes. Thank you, caller. Thank you. Caller, you're on with the city commission. Can you please lower the volume on your device? Caller? Hello. Hi, you please state your name and the city in which you live. Your three minutes starts now. Hi, my name is Sprout, and I live in the city of Grand Rapids. Um, I have a lot of things that I would like to say, but I'm going to start off saying that reform has been shown to not work if the police could hold themselves accountable, if there is any sort of internal form of accountability that was happening, if these, unquote, good cops all banded together to create a movement that was also against police brutality, then maybe we could talk about the form. But the thing is, that isn't what has been happening at all. We need money to go towards social services. People aren't just waiting around for police to disappear so that they can commit more crimes. People are committing crimes because they're desperate, because they don't have the money that they need. And there is a whole history of black and brown people in this country being disenfranchised. And that doesn't just disappear with time. It has to be healed. And the police aren't the people who are healing it. Um, I want to echo the sentiment of the last caller about the fact that these changes that we think are going to happen, they're not going to happen all of a sudden. I know there's a lot of white people who are afraid because they've been taught to be afraid. Um, but when you learn to not be so individualistic mindset and have a community, then uh, you know that your neighbors are people that can actually look out for you. There are other ways to be safe other than people with guns, with over-militarized weapons. They don't need that. Um, I'm going to forfeit the rest of my time. That's all I have to say for right now. Reduce the budget to... 32%. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hello, caller. Hello, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is Chelsea McCoy, and I am a homeowner in the third ward of Grand Rapids. And I first of all want to thank Commissioner Isasi for her leadership and for listening to the concerns of her constituents. I ask for everyone 
on city leadership to please listen to the people who live in the city and pay taxes because we would like the um, Grand Rapids Police Department's budget to be reduced to the city charter's mandated 32% of the general fund. There has been a steady increase in the GRPD's budget over the last 30 years, despite the fact that violent crime has gone down. We ask that police not be put in the position of being social workers or mental health advocates, they're not trained for that. That's not their job. Their job needs to be limited to investigating violent crime. Um, reform is not working. In 2017, an 11-year-old girl was handcuffed and put into the back of a police cruiser while she was crying. And later they enacted a new policy saying they weren't going to do stuff anymore. There was a new youth policy. And then just last month, a 12-year-old boy was arrested in the Baxter neighborhood for playing with his cousin. We need rapid change. This has to happen now. We cannot wait any longer. And Grand Rapids needs to be a national leader in this conversation and make the choice to defund the police. I yield my time. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. Please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is Nika Feld, and I currently live in Grand Rapids Township. I have been a resident of Grand Rapids for all of my 38 years. To begin, I want to address the increased crime that has been mentioned on previous calls. Uh, crime may be up this calendar year, but that is because of the safety measures of the COVID-19 pandemic and the GRPD having fewer detectives and preventative squads on beat in order to keep them safe. Meanwhile, we send, we send more medical staff to battle the unknown. In 2017, the Hillard Hines study found that the GRPD has had proper and adequate resources, but that they have been misallocated. So with this, I support the motion to reduce the funding to 32% and allocate funds towards the civilian officers' positions posed. We need courageous leadership today. Our community has waited long enough for the city of Grand Rapids to move toward its collective vision. Thank you to Commissioners Yasasi and Jones for bringing this to the table tonight. If the city of Grand Rapids is to be nationally recognized as equitable, welcoming, innovative, and a collaborative city with a robust economy, safe and health and healthy community, and the opportunity for a high quality of life for all, then city leaders must act to ensure that the opportunities it seeks to provide are funded and accessible to all residents. Currently, city funding is diverted away from the community services that ensures access to quality jobs, education, and housing, which lead to the desired outcome of the city while reducing crime and increasing safety. Eliminating funding for the community services has been a counterproductive strategy for the city's desire to be safer. Evidence proves that increasing access to quality jobs, education, and housing reduces crime, not increased police presence. Thank you all for letting me be a voice to those who might not be able to get through tonight. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. Can you please lower the volume on your device? Um, hello, my name is Frederick Doomer and I live in the Grand Rapids Third Ward. I support the defunding of the GRPD and further advocate for the total abolishment of the Grand Rapids Police Department. GRPD came to my house three times the first year I moved here looking for someone who never lived here. They did not have a warrant all three times. That was my introduction to their incompetence. Most recently, I watched GRPD make a man who was in a relaxed position and fire a canister from a launcher directly at his head. The police have a counterintuitive effect on crime. If they did not, America would have no crime whatsoever because we have the largest prison population in the world. Our whole economy is still based on 13th Amendment slavery, and nobody is talking about that. Police officers are a combination of slave catcher and tax collector. They collect funds from those privileged enough to avoid arrest, and the ones who can are forced onto plantations. I mean prisons. Crime happens because needs aren't being met. We need our, to meet education needs, health care needs, mental wellness needs, spiritual needs, and social needs. You'd see most crime disappear outright. 
the civilian review position sounds really nice until you realize that only carefully chosen puppets will make it there, and since it's a paid position, there's a vested interest. So it effectively does nothing. Honestly, if we're at the point that the police need babysitters, we really should consider abolishing instead. How can you ask a grown man or woman with their own job and responsibilities to review the actions of another adult because the local government hasn't been able to? Mayor Bliss, if you can't get them to behave, how can we? Listen, there's a reason it does not work. Police will keep their, they will not keep their civilian review board in the loop on everything. I have no confidence in that. They can't even handle the simple task of not covering up their badges or using the body cam appropriately. We have given police officers an impossible job. That's part of the reason they have been doing so terrible at it. The other part is racism and the refusal of high IQ candidates due to boredom. They get trained like soldiers that don't have to show restraint. Uh, you are not treated like a citizen by police. You are treated as a potential threat. That dynamic is not healthy for society, and it's time to get rid of it. The people are tired of paying taxes for our own oppression. Thank you. That's all. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is Kellen Martin. Um, I live in Grand Rapids, Michigan, the city. Um, I'm calling today in order to argue for a $400,000 reduction, or sorry, a uh, movement of money towards a um, uh, towards the board uh, oversight board for the police. Um, I'm also uh, calling to express my intent to argue uh, in reducing the police department's budget to 32% immediately, um, as is the 32% uh, is the lower limit set for funding the police in the Grand Rapids Charter, um, as I'm sure you guys know. Uh, every dollar spent towards the police is a dollar spent towards an unethical practice of persecution towards poor people and non-whites. People in Grand Rapids deserve to be helped, not harmed by public institutions. The police are a harmful institution that discriminately targets the people who need help the most. Training and reformation of the police does nothing to reduce the problems of over-policing. For example, police with body cameras have not been shown to change their violent behavior because they, uh, to change their violent behavior. This is precisely because they are backed by police, which offer them the ability um, to have no re repercussions for any of the overt force that is being taken against an individual. Uh, Grand Rapids itself has had a huge homelessness problem. Throwing police at homeless people does not solve the root cause of the issue. Um, which is having a home. It is completely unethical to spend money on new vehicles for police to ride around in while people are living and dying on the streets of this so-called beautiful town. Truthfully, it is psychopathic that we haven't done such a thing. Um, I will end. Uh, this argument by, um, again, pleading with uh, the commission to fund more acceptable ethical meshes, uh, methods of dealing with the existential pain that is being a minority in a white supremacist world and being poor in a capitalistic society. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on the line with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is Shannon, and I live in Grand Rapids. Um, and I would like to, first of all, thank um, Mr. Washington and um, Chief Kane for all of their hard work and dedication. It has not gone unnoticed. Um, I am asking that you do not defund the police. <laughs> Um, I personally rest easy at night knowing that officers are patrolling the streets and, you know, um, just, just having protections <laughs> and, you know, um, raising a family here in Grand Rapids, you know, 
there is high crime. There's crimes. There's criminals are just what they are, criminals. And they are not going to disappear if you get rid of the police. They're going to still be there, probably worse. And I just think that um, law enforcement is not... I stand by the rule. Getting rid of um, and defunding police officers is not the answer to um, the problems that are in the city right now. So I would just hope that there are other ways to fund things that need to change and taking um, money away from officers and and, uh, our protection as a community is just not the answer. So, uh, yeah, I'm I'm against it. I, I would hope that we don't have to take the funds from the police. So, um, with that being said, I hope that others follow suit. We need our officers. Our city is the way it is because of law and order. It's not. That way, just because we wake up and we're nice people every day, most of us are, but the, there's a majority that aren't. <laughs> and we need people to protect us from crime. So I would hope that um, the prayers are going to be answered that you do not be from the officers. With that being said, I guess that's all I have to, to say. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hello, caller. Caller. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. You uh, please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hello, caller. Hello, caller. Something's wrong. Caller, can you hear me? Please bear with us. We're having a little bit of technical difficulty. Can you uh, lower the volume on your device? Yes. Okay, you have uh, you have three minutes for your comment. Your time starts now. Um, yes, my name is Pamela. I live and work in the third ward of Grand Rapids. I 
um, am calling in support of defunding the police department down to um, 32%, at least for the time being. Um, I'd like to see it lower than that. I'd like to address the people talking about the fear that they feel when they think about a defunded police department. And I would like to address the privilege that comes with being a part of a community or demographic that feels protected by the police department. Well, that is not a universal experience. For many communities and demographics, the police are not our protectors or knights in shining armor. They are our bullies and abusers. What I am, however, afraid of is living in a community where people are not having their needs met, where um, children are not being educated, and their mental health care needs and housing needs are not being met. Um, there is no substantial evidence that higher policing reduces crime rates. However, the evidence does point to the fact that investing in education, mental health care, and other social services does, in fact, reduce crime. In terms of police reform, it has shown no success. Um, police departments have had many opportunities to show that their capability of reform with no accountability. And police reform does cost more money. One thing that we do know is that when people's needs are met, survival crime does go down. Um, the call to defund the police is not new. Um, the people thinking that this is a, an emotional reaction to what happened in Minneapolis it just shows that they are just now waking up and opening their eyes to the problem that many of us have seen for years or decades already. Um, also, our budget is not infinite, so saying that defunding the police would be catastrophic is very short-sighted when we have been defunding other social services for years. I'm sure that city commissioners and Ms. Bliss, you are all well aware that of the catastrophic budget cuts that GRPS is facing right now and the effects that that will have on our children of this next generation. I urge you to listen to the residents and constituents that are calling in and voicing their opinions tonight. Um, the people who are calling in from the suburbs and other cities that simply enjoy coming to Grand Rapids to, to come to concerts, to visit the museums, they are not the ones that you need to be listening to. We are the ones caller, who our three taxpayer minutes. money are going to. Caller, I'm sorry, that's three minutes. Thank you for your call. Thank you. Have a great evening. Hi, caller. You're on with the city commission. Can you please lower the volume on your device? You have... Okay, is that better? Yes, thank you. You have uh, three minutes. Your time starts now. My name is Jody Saladino, and I live in Grand Rapids. Defunding the police is the most asinine thing I've ever heard of. This will achieve nothing. You think the crime rate is horrific now? You just wait. It will be 100 times worse. This will cause more and more citizens to take the law into their own hands. I have always been against guns until now. I will defend myself, my family, and my home any way I see fit. Defunding the police is not the way to go. This is one thing that should be left up to the citizens, not elected officials. We need more police, not less. Thank you for your time. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes and your time starts now. Thank you for having me. My name is Sarah. I am a social worker and a proud resident of the second ward of Grand Rapids. And many callers have spoken tonight and said great, great pieces of wisdom about the situation with defunding the 
um, police department and reallocating funds. And what I would just like to say is in my over 10 years of living in the community, Grand Rapids Police Department has been proven by studies to have disproportionately policed communities of color. And yet we've seen as a community, no changes or improvements have been made um, in years of training and alleged reform. Um, the history of policing in the United States and the way it's deeply rooted in racism is way too much to go into on a public comment. But what I will say is that I know that our city is capable of making a change like other cities have started to by redirecting money away from their police departments and into public services for communities of color um, that have been proven to keep our community safe. And I know that we're capable of being a community like that. I would then urge you to please support the motion to reduce the budget and reallocate funds from that 39% to the 32% within this fiscal year and redistribute those funds to public services and let people of color and black community leaders lead the way in distributing those funds so that we know that those services that are so critical um, are being connected with the community members that are the most in need. I yield my time. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Uh, please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Thank you. My name is Jennifer. I live in Rockford. I visit Grand Rapids and I've lived here my whole life. I am calling to ask and urge you to vote no on defunding our police station. It is going to cause more problems than what you are trying to resolve. These issues are serious. We all understand that as citizens, we also need to support our police department. Um, of course, especially those that honor the shield correctly. If you guys could please think about how devastating this will be, not only to the city, but to the surrounding cities for uh, safety and welfare of the families who will be affected by the budget cut and the just safety. So again, thank you so much. Uh, please vote no. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hello, caller. Caller. Hi. Yes, you have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hi, I'm Phil Clifford. I'm a resident of Grand Rapids Third Ward. I'm asking the I'm asking to reduce the GRPD budget to 32 percent of the city's overall budget. This funding should be redistributed to community services and ensure access to quality jobs, education, and housing which will lead to the desired outcomes of the city of all reducing crime and increasing safety. Thank you. Thank you, Colin. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Thank you. My name is Anissa Eddy, and I live in the third ward of Grand Rapids. And I'm calling in support of decreasing funding for the police department budget from 38% to 32%. It's common knowledge that there's just some things that cannot be repaired or reformed. Um, there's times where it really just needs to be redesigned. And I do think that we're at a time like that for the police department. We need to extend beyond partial fixes or interventions and really get to a place where we can reform this system to the place where we need to dismantle some of the things. It's not that this system is producing outcomes because it's broken. It really is producing the outcomes that it was designed to produce when you look at the history of policing in our country. And if we really want different outcomes, then we need to be courageous right now and dismantle this system so that we can move forward and create an equitable path. I think that reducing the police budget and reallocating these funds 
would be a meaningful step in the right direction. We have so many incidents where police are asked to respond and it's misaligned with their training and their purpose. Increasing support and funding for proactive and preventative strategies in areas like physical, behavioral, and mental health, secure housing, food access, workforce development, environmental safety, education, early childhood, transportation, all of those kinds of areas. I mean, I could go on and on, but dedicating funding to these would dramatically increase the inappropriate burden that's placed on our law enforcement officers and be able to allow us to address the social needs that we have without using forceful military tactics and rigid protocols that are not culturally responsive or take into account context. I, I know as a result of COVID-19, families, businesses, organizations, we're all being forced to face deep financial challenges, and we need to have creative and innovative responses. Um, we're making that work in our households, in our businesses, in our nonprofits, and our city government needs to do the same. My hope would be that reallocating these funds away from the police department would spark more innovative collaborations with other city services and departments so that we can really have a way to holistically respond to our community's needs. Grand Rapids has really made some positive, bold strides, and I think we have an opportunity to be strategically inclusive and really operationalize equity. I don't want us to stop with the steps we've made, but to go further. And I'm specifically asking my commissioners that represent me in the third ward, Commissioner Lanier and Commissioner Moody, to take this bold step and, and vote for this funding um, reallocation so that we can move forward and, and really have our city have different outcomes that we're saying matter to us. This is the leadership that we need right now. And I think that we have a unique opportunity to um, really respond in a way that we're, we've been saying with words that this can be actionable and that there's a lot of support to do things differently and that we could even be a, a leading community that others can look to and learn from. Thank and you, Colin. Time. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Yes, my name is Marianne, and I am from Rockford. And I would like to express that I am totally against the defending of the uh, men and women of the police department. Um, I feel they, we really need them uh, for the protection of our, our lovely city of Grand Rapids and surrounding cities of Grand Rapids. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. If you could please lower the volume on your device for us. Thank you. If you could state your name and the city in which you live, your three minutes starts now. Hi. Hi, my name is Kristen Tuck, and I live and work in Grand Rapids, and I'm speaking on behalf of the 2020 Leadership Grand Rapids cohort. We are 41 leaders representing our community's business, nonprofit, philanthropic, and public service sectors. We represent the diversity of our community across race, ethnicity, political affiliation, faith, gender, LGBTQ plus status, orientation. I am calling with our recommendations for improving community and police relations, which are further detailed in our letter and the agenda. This past year, as we studied our city's history, its institutions, its systems, and its policies, one prevailing theme surfaced. People of color, and in particular our Black community, experience significantly disparate outcomes across every system, housing, food, healthcare, education, child welfare, and criminal justice. We found that the problem is systemic and that institutional racism is embedded in all aspects of our society. As a group of local leaders, we will not be complicit in the perpetuation of the system as is and we seek to advance justice through systems transformation. Mayor Bliss and city commissioners, we appreciate your commitment to advancing justice and the actions that have already been taken in recent months as our community has mourned the death of Richard Brooks, George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, and Breonna Taylor. Mayor Bliss, we appreciate your commitment on June 7th to eight can't wait policies which have led to reductions in police violence and jurisdictions which have adopted them. We still don't see public information on which of these policies Grand Rapids has enacted, and look forward to your public plan and time frame for implementation. We support the Office of Oversight and Public Accountability and their development of action steps to improve community and police relations. And the proposed reallocation of funds to resource this office is consistent with our recommendations. As you operationalize these steps, we recommend 
redesign of the police response for domestic complaints by hiring conflict mediators, mental health professionals, and social workers to be dispatched for nonviolent re remediation. Commitment to trauma-informed policing, ensuring clear progressive consequences and corrective actions up to and including termination and criminal charges for all city employees. Consultation with and consideration of the different situatedness of our diverse community members when making decisions. Ensuring eligibility criteria, recruitment and selection process, term limits, and members of the Community Police Advisory Council are publicly available. An annual report that includes outcomes disaggregated by race and ethnicity, as well as the disproportionality index applied to all outcomes. Annual training around implicit bias, cultural intelligence, and structural and institutional racism for all city staff, including every officer, prosecutor, and judge. Increased programming for incarcerated persons to prepare them for community reintegration. Increased financial resources and services for released individuals to include employment, housing, health care, substance abuse, mental health, and trauma services. Thank you, caller. That's three minutes. Thank, Thank you. you. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hello. Thank you for hearing me today. My name is Jessica Brenner, and I've lived in Grand Rapids my whole life. And I'm calling to say that I support bringing the budget, the budget of the police back to 32%, and I hope that we can place more funds towards education and community programs in our city. Um, Crime stems from needs, and so if we address the needs of the people, then we can reduce crime, and we can help police not be so necessary for things that they are not trained to do. So please consider uh, bringing the budget back to 32% and helping our community become more equal for everybody. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Thank you. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name in the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is Stephanie. I currently live in Plainfield Township, and I have lived in the greater Grand Rapids area almost my entire life. Um, I also currently work in downtown Grand Rapids. I do not support defunding or reallocation of funds of any kind. I've seen the city grow as a popular spot. Dinner, nightlife is up. Um, festivals and events are happening all the time. We have become a popular spot for vacations, and there's tons of business growth. This is a thriving city atmosphere, and it's only possible because of the great job that GRPD does. Down, there's decreased civilian traffic and decreased financial support coming into those areas of the city. If people do not feel safe, they will not support, and that is and all that Grand Rapids has gained in the past decade will be lost. Um, decrease in funding will result in less officers on the force, period. Chief Payne has said that himself. We will lose very important efforts that need more support. Um, GRPD is already involved in several community outreach organizations, such as Boys and Girls Club, prison re uh, decreasing prison reentry, um, and different home lead, homeless outreach programs. You need to allow uh, Grand Rapids Police Department to continue funding for these important efforts and our department as a whole needs to have continued funding so they can improve community relations between Grand Rapids and the citizens of Grand Rapids. If you look at cities across America um, with comparable populations to Grand Rapids, we are on the low end of funding and if funds are decreased by 9 million, we will fall well below what is shown to be a necessary minimum for functioning a budget. Um, men and women who serve Grand Rapids Police Department do so as, as, as do men and women um, who serve as police officers nationwide. They risk their lives daily to respond to you and your families in your most vulnerable time of need. They will literally give up their life for a stranger. When you are being attacked in your own home, when your wife is giving birth on the side of the road, when your child is choking, when you were hit by a drunk driver, Grand Rapids Police Department is there, no questions asked, no hesitation. They put their life on the line to protect you no matter your race, socioeconomic status, sexual orientation, or age. As a majority, our police officers are good people who are doing what they can to help their fellow human. They need our support now more than ever because keeping them safe keeps you and your loved ones safe. Please do not consider defunding. 
I support GRPD and I thank them for their service. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. My name is Tim Mullis. I live in Caledonia, Michigan, and I would like to voice my opinion that I strongly oppose defunding the Grand Rapids Police Department. Is that all, caller? That is all I have. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. You please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Matthew. I'm a Grand Rapids, Kent County resident. Um, I have been for about five years, and I just wanted to call in to um, first say thank you to Commissioner Sassi for her movement um, at this morning's meeting to vote to decrease um, the police budget to 32% of the overall city budget. Um, and I just want to urge the whole commission to uh, to vote in favor of that, especially Commissioner Rappard, Mayor Bliss, um, Commissioner Lanier. Um, it's something that uh, we urgently need. And um, yeah, and I also wanted to stress that that reduction be immediate and not an incremental reduction over time. And then um, I guess lastly, that, that the difference in that budget be reallocated um, to communities of color uh, and that that be um, in in the area and that that is uh, allocated as those um, communities um, the, the best way that they see fit. Um, and yeah, thank you so much, Commissioner Isasi. We, we feel heard by you um, and we really appreciate you. I uh, yield my time. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Hello, caller. You're on with the City Commission. Please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Yeah, my name is Mark Powers. I live in Cedar Springs, Michigan. I uh, just kind of voice my concerns on any kind of defunding of the police. I'm definitely against that. <laughs> I'm in sales. I go into the city quite often for work. And also, I also bring my family into the city, downtown areas. I definitely will not be doing so with the defunding of the police, and obviously crime rate will go up. Uh, that is definitely what I want to get out. I mean, I am absolutely against any kind of defunding of the police. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Thank you. My name is Nicholas Fletcher, resident of Grand Rapids, specifically Garfield Park. i first like to say plainly I'm in support of reallocation of funds for the oversight board and hiring of civilian positions. I've listened about two hours plus to individuals inside and outside the city of Grand Rapids speak about the call to defund the police as a knee-jerk response to what has come from the civil unrest across the country. This is simply not true. The 2017 study found that GRPD has the necessary resources but has repeatedly misallocated those funds. That same study highlighted GRPD's lack of oversight, including within the records unit and community policing unit. Officers are often left to their own determination of how to approach their role with minimal oversight. Nowhere is that more apparent than in their interaction with black and brown residents of the city. That same study was the result of GRPD making national news in 2017 because they were costing young black males at gunpoint. In one of those instances, pulling five young boys out of police cars and conducting a police lineup in the middle of the street. Nothing has changed. The recent civil unrest goes on across the country is not new or uncommon in Grand Rapids. The call to defund the police does not necessarily mean getting rid of the police altogether. Anyone who says otherwise is pandering and fear-mongering and dog whistles. Defunding the police means reducing the police budget and reallocating those funds to crucial and neglected areas of Grand Rapids, such as education, public health, housing, and youth services. Investing in black and brown communities would act as a deterrent to crime, 
by directly addressing societal problems like poverty, mental illness, and homelessness, issues that the police are poorly equipped to handle and yet are often tasked with. On average, police spend 21% of its time responding to and transporting people with mental illness and leading to disproportionate rates of incarceration. National publications have touted Grand Rapids as one of the best places to live and raise a family. What is not touted is the fact that Grand Rapids is the second worst place for black Americans economically. That is a systemic problem. Those who believe that policing in their neighborhoods is a blessing do not live in Grand do not live in the black and brown parts of the city where policing is a threat to their well being and way of life. A better solution would be to more effectively address underlying factors that contribute to crime like poverty, homelessness, and joblessness. This could be achieved by cutting police forces budget on the city level and reallocating those funds towards social services and youth services. The police budget has dwarfed the budgets for education, housing, and crucial services. I speak in favor of reducing the police department budget to the city charter 32%. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Clee Jackson, president of the Greater Grand Rapids NAACP Grand Rapids, Michigan. Go ahead with your time, caller. Clee? Yeah. Your time starts now. Go ahead. Okay, so this is Clee Jackson, president of the Greater Grand Rapids NAACP. And so um, I'll make my comments brief. GRPD has um, continued a 30 year trend of substantial budget increases. So, um, and when you look at that, despite of the financial challenges, so I'm asking all of the commissioners to stand up for righteousness tonight. We are tired of dealing with the bullshit. We are tired of being put off. We are tired of the same old, same old. So I'm asking the commissioners and the mayor to stand up for righteousness tonight. Here's the deal. This is not about destroying the Grand Rapids Police Department. It is about reallocating resources that support community programming, the community health of this city. And so it is time for the commission and the mayor, and the city manager to walk through the door of righteousness and, and do what is right. We are tired of having the same old conversation. And this is another thing. It's interesting to me Listen to listening to all of these white supremacists and racists on the call tonight talking about protecting lives and talking about protecting downtown. When were you where were you all when an eleven year old girl, Honesty Hodges, were held was held at gunpoint and mistaken for a forty year old white female? Where were you all when there were guns held on five Black, young, youth. Where were you all when there have been multiple and multiple occasions where youth have been stopped and accosted in this city by your beloved Grand Rapids Police Department? So the time is now, Commission, the time is now to stand up for righteousness. So on behalf of the Greater Grand Rapids NAACP, we fully support defunding and reallocating resources to programs that support the health and wellness of this community. And I want to personally thank Commissioner Yassi and Commissioner Jones for standing up for righteousness. And whatever the outcome is tonight, I'm going to let you know, I'm serving notice that this is not the end, that this is absolutely not the end. This is absolutely not the end. So stand up for righteousness and do the right thing. It is time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Right Jackson. Thing. That's three minutes. Caller, can you please lower the volume on your device? 
You're, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Great. Uh, I'm Amy Carpenter. I live in the third ward, uh, and I'm part of the groups that are part of the defund the GRPD coalition. The GRPD has a long history of intimidation, harassment, and violence against the black community in Grand Rapids. Those of us who are part of this coalition, um, some of them have experience with harm and have heard from countless others who have been victimized by the GRPD. There are numerous efforts to reform the GRPD, but we know it's now time to defund the GRPD. There have been so many comments on this portion of the agenda, and we've delayed the meeting by hours, and that's as it should be. It cannot be business as usual when armed police stop people of color at a higher rate and put them in danger. It cannot be business as usual when the only investment that black and brown communities receive is through over-policing and criminalization of their everyday lives and existence. It cannot be business as usual when the GRPD pulls guns on black and Latino children and beats black and Latino drivers. We are demanding that the city of Grand Rapids reduce the police portion of the city budget to the 32% city charter mandated level for this fiscal year right now. We are demanding that this budget cut some money should be refunded to the black community and the black community should have complete control over how this money will be used. Defunding the GRPD and refunding black communities has to happen if there's going to be any trust built within the black community. It's one of the few things that will work to actively promote equity in the black community, which is so desperately needed. Um, there are better ways to practice community safety and Grand Rapids needs to begin the process of having deep conversation about how to practice community safety that does not rely on policing. We need to see a plan to have open conversations with and among several sectors of the black community, including black women, black trans women, black queer and trans folks, disabled black folks with a disability justice framework, black folks who are currently or formerly incarcerated, and others that are the most affected by and vulnerable to the violence of policing. I am the co-founder of the Grand Rapids Area Mutual Aid Network, and we are showing how communities can use resources to support each other, not police each other, and not aim guns at each other. Defund the GRPD to 32% now. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller, can you lower the volume on your device, please? You're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is Kimmy Spring. I live in Grand Rapids in the city. And I have very mixed feelings about defunding the police because I have such a positive relationship with our community police specialists. Um, and I would hate to see any cuts made to that particular line item. However, we have not seen a line item budget of the police department. So I'm considering that it might be a scare tactic um, that that particular department will be cut. Um, but we just don't know because we're not being provided the information. I'm also very concerned about the restrictions being placed on how the police operate based on the police union and that contract. We want to know what action we can take as residents of the city of Grand Rapids to change the dynamic with the police union. I am pro-union in general. I have been a union delegate um, in a previous position, but with the, the police union, it's a whole different ball game. Perhaps reducing the police budget to 32% We'll send a message to the union officials that we aren't going to bend over and take it anymore. Maybe we will send a message to the union rank and file, our GRPD police officers, who vote for their union representatives, that we as Grand Rapids residents and taxpayers aren't going to take it anymore. In one way or another, the police will not have carte blanche to do whatever they want when it comes to how they spend our money and how they interact with our fellow residents of Grand Rapids. And to all those who don't live in Grand Rapids and have threatened not to come into town if the police budget is reduced, just stay home. We don't need your fear of people of color to dictate what we do with our taxpayer money. 
I yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller, can you lower the volume on your device, please? Yes, Lord. All right, you have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Good evening, Mayor and City Commissioners. My name is Al Mooney, and I've lived in Grand Rapids for 36 years. I'm speaking in support of the city manager's amendment on the agenda tonight to shift the funding to the Office of Oversight and Public Accountability. In regard to the broader topic, the level of funding provided to the police department, I wish to ask people to let cooler heads prevail in terms of allowing due process to take place. The city commission in Grand Rapids has a long history of allowing for due process, allowing for a broad sector of public input, and then thoughtfully considering what his positive direction takes. We have highly credentialed uh, police chief and highly credentialed city manager. And these two experienced local officials deserve the opportunity to, in an orderly fashion, evaluate the value of the police department and shape the level of services provided. I appreciate that President uh, Cleve Jackson certainly has a position in terms of what he said. It was a very powerful statement. And with all due respect to the thought of defunding the police department through a motion tonight, I believe, that is a rash knee-jerk decision. I think we let, need to let Brandon Davis come on board and allow due process to take hold. Thank you for your time and service. Have a good night. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hello, my name is Laney, and my husband and I have lived in the first ward in the city of Grand Rapids for several decades. I have also worked in the city of Grand Rapids for 20 years. As Grand Rapids residents, my husband and I do not support defunding the police department, nor do we support any funding cuts to the Grand Rapids Police Department. Thank you for listening, and thank you for your time. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. All right, thank you. My name is Allison Lutt and I live in the first ward of Grand Rapids. Um, I just wanted to come on and give some of my thoughts regarding um, defunding the GRPD. Um, as a resident and soon to be homeowner in the city, um, I'd like to add my voice to those strongly in favor of reducing that budget. Um, it's been clear that there's been a lot of issues in the city for a while now, especially regarding equity and um, the types of moves, uh, moves that have been made thus far haven't worked, and it looks like it's just more of the same, um, except for the ability that we have right now to decrease and put that money towards affordable housing and mental health care, um, as well as increasing equity and helping for uh, homeless folks that need assistance. Um, as someone who has been involved in politics a bit, um, uh, I'd like to address Mayor Bliss as, as another white woman um, that is involved in politics. It's your responsibility to take care of the people that can't take care of themselves. And um, if you don't do that, that's negligence, in my opinion. So um, I strongly encourage you to do what's right. Uh, as a very famous musical uh, states, uh, history has its eyes on you. And I'd like to make sure that you make the decision that will really impact the community in a positive way. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller, can you please lower the volume on your device? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Good evening. My name is Whitney, and I currently live in Byron Center. While I'm being told my opinion doesn't matter due to where I live, I'd like to argue that it does. My career path as a 911 professional has flooded more than a decade of my life with some of the most horrific things a human can hear. A spouse begging their loved one who is deceased next to them to take another breath. A grown man or woman screaming for help as they watch their home burn down. 
but most chilling is hearing the absolute terror in someone's voice when they are desperate for a police officer to show up. Tasking a social worker or an addiction specialist with defusing a domestic involving a gun is ludicrous. We need a properly trained, funded, and engaged police force to take care of our community. The crimes we see shown on the news by police officers should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law, whether they're committed by one of our own or from another department. I don't feel that cutting funding to the Grand Rapids Police Department will drive the overarching changes being demanded to keep our families safe that we're hoping to see. If anything, we need to be pumping more funding into our police department for staffing, training, and resources. These men and women suit up nights, weekends, and holidays to take care of our own. They miss first steps, vacations, and tucking their little ones in because it's their profound honor to serve our community. I oppose defunding the Grand Rapids Police Department. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hello, caller. Hello, caller. You're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Yes, my name is Greg Kelly. I live in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I would say absolutely do not defund the, the police department. I'm total support of our chief police, Eric Payne. I think he's doing a fabulous job. Um, if there was no crime in Grand Rapids, if there were no shootings, if there were no lawlessness, if there were no break-ins in the homes, if there were no stealing of cars, I'd say, let's defund it. But the truth is, we have a city that has a lot of crime. And when criminals know that the cops aren't going to show up, they're going to be more aggressive. Um, our police department does things, goes places, that the average person could not comprehend. They're full of courage. These are special men and women that go in the middle of the night into a strange house knowing that somebody's armed to protect us. Who is going to protect us when our homes are broke, when our cars are broken into, when we're being assaulted on the street, when our wives, our mothers, our children, who's going who's to come when our schools are being shot up? We gonna call a social worker? Heck no! We're gonna call the cops. They're trained. They stop bad people. And to think that somebody who's never been trained to stop a hardened criminal is ridiculous. It's disillusional. As a taxpayer, I want safety in this town. This town is great. We take away the funds from the city. We don't let our chief, chief of police. Eric Payne, do his God with his men. We're all in trouble. We're all less safe. Anybody thinks we could be more safe with less cops is disillusional. Thank you. Thank Bye. you, caller. City clerk's off. <laughs> Good evening, caller. You're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is Darius. I stay on the west side of Grand Rapids. And I am full support of, I am in, excuse me, full support of uh, the GRP budget reduction to 32% in 2021. I feel like I'm probably one of the best people to talk about being in support of it, as I am a resident of Grand Rapids, not someone who stands, who stays in the suburbs, and a black member of the community who's been here for over 10 years. Um, I'd even like to note that the year I moved here, there was a KKK march through downtown area. So um, if anyone feels 
the oppression that does exist in this town, it'd probably be me having seen it myself. And I'm originally from Chicago, the south side of Chicago, so I know what it means to see crooked police, uh, false reporting, and the lack of accountability that can lead to a lot of the things that we've experienced over time here in the city of Grand Rapids. Uh, a lot of the same issues that exist there exist here. People being, black people, excuse me, being afraid and living in fear. Um, you know, the whole driving while black thing through East GR. A lot of people know about that, <laughs> and people make jokes about it regularly. Uh, walking through stores, being followed, and, you know, being accused of something while someone else behind you is committing a crime. Um, being, uh, you know, uh, being in a city that, it, that considers itself the first in families, but is actually the lowest when it comes to conditions for people of color. There's nothing to celebrate right now um, when you think about the idea of how the police have been um, so active in a lot of the things that have happened within the black community, within the communities of people of color in general. Um, and if you do not believe me, um, I am also an artist here in town. And there's a production that exists that was called Mind, The Lived Experience of Race. It was produced in 2008, and it exists on Vimeo.com. It talks about all the issues that really that relate to race relations in the Grand Rapids area. Anybody can watch it for free. You can see all of the facts as they are stated right there online. So if there's anybody that I feel is well suited to talk about the uh deregulation of police and why it's necessary, I'm pretty sure I'm one of them. I yield my time. Thank you. Thank you, Caller. <laughs> Caller, can you please lower the volume on your device? Hi. Hi, yes, you have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is Amy. I am a resident of the city of Grand Rapids. I also work in downtown Grand Rapids. I am very opposed to defunding of any of our police budget. Um, my family and I moved here because of the safe environment that Grand Rapids is. Um, I'm feeling many of the callers calling in tonight to defund the police don't remember what an unpleasant city that Grand Rapids used to be up until the great philanthropic families of our community helped rebuild it along with our strong police force. Um, up until a few weeks ago when the riotings happened, I was the only time I did not feel safe in this community. I would not want to have any less police officers available to help protect um, my family, I or my friends that live in the city or friends that come to the city to enjoy our wonderful events. Um, I've interacted with our police officers on several occasions and they are nothing but courteous and kind and want nothing more to do than to serve and protect. They risk their lives every day to help us and support us and they shouldn't be forced to do that with less support or less funding or less equipment. Once again, I just state my strong opposition to any defunding. Thank you for your time. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. My name is Shauna and I live in Grand Rapids. And I think that defunding the Grand Rapids Police Department is an awful idea. animals would be at a deficit. I think we would have way more dogs in our dog and our dog shelters. I think that our violence rates would go up. I think that everybody is going to start buying more guns. I, I think everybody's going to just start doing whatever they want. And I think the city of Grand Rapids would no longer be a place that I would raise any of my five children. And it would no longer be a place that I would live. I think I would rather pack up and leave, and I think this is a horrible idea. And for a city that I have lived in, and I've paid taxes in, and I've done and done and done for, I would literally pack up and leave and walk away. I think it's a horrible idea. Thank you for your time. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is Olivia and I live in Grand Rapids. I'm calling on behalf of 
all the people who feel nauseated listening to the same lady caller reading her script over and over to decrease funds for the GRPD. I think for the last three hours. You enjoy sitting there being lectured? I think by now she read you the whole book. I am tired of the so-called intellectuals, pardon me, like five of them, calling over and over, with their vision for a progressive future for our city. They live in dreamland. Yeah, we just invest in education. We invest in community, and we will live happily ever after. With no crime. That sounds wonderful. But so is communism. It sounds wonderful on paper. But we all know that real life does not work like that. In real life, all these programs, wonderful programs, they will take time, they will take years to produce the results. In real life, you cannot send social workers to negotiate with armed, mentally ill people. They aren't. In real life, every one of you will be calling cops, trained, devoted to their job when you have a personal emergency in the middle of the night. You, every one of you, will be calling cops. Now, do you see pattern in who did not support the funding of the police? Hardworking people who can safety of their family. Mothers, grandmothers, and yes, I, who keep our city going, the hard work. Should they have than them? The majority of Grand Rapids, but we already heard white supremacist, supremacist term today several times. You cannot express your opinion unless it's in line with popular opinion. Stop being covered. Stop being politically correct. You know what the we need the police department. We need every single officer to do the right thing. I yield the rest of my time. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on the line with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hello, caller. Hi, yes, can you hear me? Yes, I'll restart your time. Yes, okay, my name is Tanya and I lived in Grand Rapids my entire life. I am 29 years old and I just wanna say that I am completely against reducing our police officer number. Um, my son is mixed, he is black and white. He is gonna be turning eight this summer. And we love our community. We love Grand Rapids. This is our home. We have always been accepted. We are very involved in the community. We have gone to many concerts, events downtown. We have been all around Grand Rapids. We've always been treated with respect. And reducing the police department or our police officers is not going to help our community. I do think there are issues that we need to address, but reducing our police officers is not going to help us. I think that's just a way to ease like a band-aid when really we need, as a community, we need to grow and create more awareness. I think that um, there will be increased crime if we reduce our police officers and then less aid and help for our communities. My son has chronic epilepsy. There has been several times since he's been born where I had to call 911 and the police officers are the first ones there. They have always treated us with respect. I've never treated my son any differently because he was mixed and they were there to help me. And it just gives me anxiety and I'm so upset over this. I really hope that the commissioners in our city allow people um, to be involved in this and agree to this. There, I will advocate for our community and I will continue to press this issue that we cannot reduce our police officers. I will continue with social media because this is an issue that should be addressed and we should not remove this is not a solution, removing our police officers. I really, really hope that we can make things better, a different light, and stop um, focusing on negative impacts that the police officers have and focus on a lot of good things that they they can do for, for our community, and we really do need them. So I really hope and plead that you please allow us to keep our police officers and at least give us a chance to uh, vote and agree on this because there are a lot of good reasons to keep the police officers. We really, really need them. Is that all, caller? 
Um, I just want to say thank you, and I really hope to continue to support Grand Rapids, and please give everyone a chance to vote on this and agree with this, because this is a really life-impacting change, and I think we all should be able to be involved in this, and that's all. Thank, thank you, Caller. Caller, you're on the line with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hello, my name is Tara Flickema. I'm a resident in the city of Grand Rapids. I'm calling tonight about the vote for defunding our police. I'm a mother of four young children and a former educator in our school system. And I'm asking for the sake of our beautiful city, its residents, and our precious children that you do not defund our police. I think actually we should be voting to increase funds for additional training and the hiring of more officers. And I would like to say I'm upset that we're even talking about defunding them. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, caller. You. Caller, you're on the line with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hello, thank you. Uh, this is Mike. I am a resident. Yes, I'm a resident of downtown Grand Rapids as well as a business owner here in downtown Grand Rapids. Uh, calling today to show my support for reducing the police budget uh, to the minimum. I had a unique viewpoint on May the 30th. Um, being down here for the alleged riots. Um, I was a part of the peaceful protest. Um, it was wonderful. I actually returned hours later, just rode my bike to see if it was still really good energy and if it was how things were going. I made my way to the police station uh, and clearly saw it was, it was close to dark. There was a new crowd and it was gonna turn bad. And I got out of there. Uh, then a few hours later from my sixth floor apartment, uh, that has a view of the courthouse, I watched a handful of kids come up, started smashing windows. And, uh, then of course the night progressed as we know. A lot of people, I think on these phone calls are speculating about what is going to happen if the police force has $9 million less to work with and how horrible in a lot of cases that's going to be. A fact to present to you guys, ladies and gentlemen, is a $55 million police budget could not stop a handful of kids from ravaging the downtown area. A handful of kids. So the police force was either unable or unwilling to protect our town, 55 million. Can you throw another 9 million at that? I don't think so. And, and I have a couple questions to, for you to please ask yourself. One is if you don't make this step, a politically difficult step, but actually a rather small step, what else can you do? There are powerful forces that don't want change, police union, so on and so forth. If you don't do this, what else you can do? And finally, in due respect to the fear mongers and gaslighters, I ask you to ask yourself this question. If you don't do this, if you don't reduce the police budget, what will become of this city? Thank you for your time. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. Please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is Ryan. I'm from Allendale. I own a business in which primarily works in the city of Grand Rapids. Um, I would like to refer to the many people saying that you shouldn't hear from people outside of Grand Rapids. Um, I'm telling you as an employer, I have over 30 employees with the majority of them being female. I think we have just as much right to have a little bit of say in this. 
I want to revert to some data since a lot of people were talking about data. The average crime index in 2005 for Grand Rapids was 508. The average right now for 2018 is 85. That is pretty much half the crime index and across the board in both violent and nonviolent crimes. In fact, in the last five years for the property crimes, we are actually below the average for the first time in that 15 year span. The only thing that actually went up is rates. And I don't know what programs are out there, which reforms, which would actually help prevent rapes from what I know in my experience, uh, being the employer and the issues that I've had, I feel like rapes could actually be only reduced by the increase of the police. So I am against the defunding. I'm against the lower and I commend the police chief for all of his hard work. And if anything, we should be increasing the budget. Thank you for your time. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. If you could please state your name in the city in which you live. Your three minutes, you have three minutes. Your time starts now. Thank you. City commission, my name is Holly and I live in the first ward on the west side. As I've been listening tonight, I'm hearing a lot of generalizations being made about racism and poor job performance. I'm not hearing specific examples of this poor performance and racism. So what I can contribute is I can share my story about having a black son with mental illness and needing to call the police regularly, um, at least 10 times in the past six months. Each time I requested a police trained in mental illness, each time police showed up to escalated and at times violent situations. My husband and I were grateful and amazed by their gentleness and care with our son each and every time. I do not support defunding the police. I have seen them in action in dangerous situations with people of color, and they've done their job well. Thank you for your service to our community. I'm done with my comments. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. If you could please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is Julian. I live in Grand Rapids. I'm calling in to voice my support for reducing the police funding to 32%. Seems like uh, everyone, uh, previous calls are making it seem like reducing it by to 32 is going to make everyone go crazy and riot, start everyone in crime to shoot up. This is just ridiculous. Their money can be used for so much more stuff. They're making budget cuts to the schools already, and we can definitely use that. They'll still have 32%, and that still seems a lot on my book, but uh, that's all I have to say. I use my time. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. If you could please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hello, my name is Michael and I live in Grand Rapids. And I want to state my opposition to defunding the police. If we defund the police, we will diminish the capacity and our presence of our law enforcement. The outlying result will be police responding to crime after it occurs rather than preventing it. A good example is what happened downtown with the rioting. When the police did not come, they did not protect the businesses, they were not present, and businesses were ransacked, they were looted and destroyed. Let's remind ourselves that the police are the first responders to a broad range of public safety issues and to serious crime. Crime will not end if we abolish or defund the police. If the police are defunded, there'll be a delayed response when people call and are in need of help and they call 911. There'll be fewer police on the street in neighborhoods and in communities. And the lack of police capacity to respond to serious crimes will present serious threats to public safety. If we defund the police, the most affected 
will be the poor and marginalized in our communities. The poor neighborhoods will have to fend for themselves even more than they already have to. Delays in police response and lack of police capacity will increase fear of crime, will render victims of crime helpless, and will wreak havoc on our communities, especially our communities of color, even more so than what is currently the case. We need to work with our police and we need to make changes because brutality has to end. But I want to say that I am against defunding because that is not the solution. I'll yield my time. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. My name is Robin Critzman, and I'm from Byron Center, and I work within the city of GR. I'd like to discourage all uh, the city commissioners to vote no to fund GRPD. Numbers are up in murders all over the country. I ask you to do the, your homework, look at all the other departments and the murder rates and what can happen to the city of GR. I take pride and we take pride in our city. It's clean, it's safe, and it's welcoming. That's because we are held accountable. I enjoy taking my family to downtown area or to the Grand Rapids area to um, the parks, to the arena, um, and different concerts, and I want to continue that and feel safe when I'm downtown. Don't let the actions of one or two officers out of 300 in Grand Rapids or out of the millions in the country affect your decision that may make a lifetime of negative impact. Please vote no for defunding GRPD. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Thank you. My name is Stephanie Seeger. I live in Byron Center, Michigan. I want to discourage all commissioners to vote. I want to um, no to defund the Grand Rapids Police. Um, at this time of our country, we need them more than ever. Um, court off or officers promote safety and um, stability and peace for our city, and we need them to, um, we need those efforts to continue. If anything, I would encourage to, to offer more funds to our police officers um, and the departments to, um, to promote safety, even more safety within Grand Rapids. Um, I don't, I don't want us to base our beliefs off of what has happened in other cities. Grand Rapids is a very reputable organization, police department, and we need to continue and support them. And, um, and then in the long run, that supports our, our city. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hello, my name is Kelly Bannister. I live in Grand Rapids. I'm calling on behalf of myself, my husband, and our four small children. Um, we do not agree with any defunding of our police department in Grand Rapids. After reading that gun crime is up by 63% from this time last year, the last thing that we need to do is limit the officers that are in place to protect all of the people of this great city. Chief Payne has taken wonderful steps to work with willing parties to keep the safety of our people and the police officers. Instead of taking their funds away and undoing the progress that they have made in this community, please consider working together to come up with compromise that will serve everyone. Defunding the police is not the best option. We are counting on you to do better than this. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Thank you. My name is David, last name Crump, C-R-U-M-P. I live in Comstock Park, Michigan. I do not believe you guys have enough information to defund the police as it stands right now. I'm thoroughly against it. And that's about all you got to say about it. I think you're making a huge mistake. From what I've seen, other towns 
or cities that have done that have now called for the federal government to step in because of uh, more rioting or looting. Um, and I don't think it's been figured out yet. And I don't think you have enough information to make a call on this. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name in the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hello, caller, can you hear me? Hello, caller. Hello, caller, you're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hello, my name is Ellie. I live in the city of Grand Rapids. I have lived in all areas. I've rented in Heritage Hill on the west side. Four years ago, I bought a house on the southeast side in Oakdale. And I definitely oppose defunding the GRPD. I rely on them heavily. There is a huge gang presence in Grand Rapids that most people in Grand Rapids are not aware of. But there have been two shootings this summer in front of my house when I've called 911 and I haven't received an officer because of the protests and because of the rioting. I've also had a gang shooting behind my house with two opposing gangs and AK-47. Along with that, there are stolen cars racing down my street on the sidewalk. I have surveillance of all of this. Hours of surveillance of crime. I rely on GRPD and I need them. Defunding the police is not the answer. Absolutely not. My neighbors and I are all afraid to go outside right now. And we want our police. We need the police. Thank you. Thank you, caller. And disarmed and told to comply. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city you live in. Your time starts now. My name is Alan. I'm calling from Rockford. I'd like to voice my support to not vote for defunding the police. I think we need to add more police. I've heard a lot of callers talk about social workers being able to do this job a little bit better. As it is right now, Police usually accompany CPS, APS, visiting nurses, groups like that in these high-risk homes. Now you're going to have more social workers going out on scene and requesting more police, or you're going to lose a few social workers. Right now, 40% of the officer deaths are caused from domestic-related calls. They're a very high-risk emotional call. Now you're going to send social workers to handle those. In reference to the homeless issue, I've heard about sending mental illness people on homeless type calls. 70% of those people carry some sort of an edged weapon. In fact, we had just had in Grand Rapids a recent case of torture by a homeless man where he extracted the teeth from his victims and they lived through this ordeal, thankfully. But what a terrible crime. I'm sure some of that wasn't reported because of the Duke violence of that violence of that crime. Police caused homicides are about 429 a year thousand, if you believe the Washington Post, they include deaths when maybe a police pursuit occurs and that person crashes a car. Well, they attribute that to the police call. The police face 14,000 deadly assaults with a weapon every year. That means whatever number you believe, 429 or 1,000, that means 13 out of 14 or 31 out of 32 times when faced with a deadly force or a deadly assault by a suspect, police do not cause a, a death, 31 out of 32 times. You have to ask yourself, if there was somebody coming after you, would you want the police officer to use deadly force to stop your attack? Most of you would say yes. But that's pretty selfish because when they're trying to attack the police, 31 out of 32 times, police put themselves at risk and do not use deadly force on their attack. In 1971, there were 1,562 NYPD shootings in that city alone. In 2017, there were 23. 23.0, not 1,562. And there's three quarters of a million more people and 35,000 cops in that town. Nationally, police use much less force than they did in decades past because of Supreme Court decisions. 
I've heard people talk about Tamir Rice. Cleveland police killed that kid. It was poor tactics. They pulled right up to him. He displayed a gun, whatever, fake, airsoft, and they shot him. It was terrible. So the Grand Rapids police are trained. National best practices. Stay 50 yards away. Order the people down to the street. They get down. They comply. At that point, you move in with cover officers, and you safely take people into custody, and then you apologize and talk nice to them like they did to those kids. But that's everybody went home that day and did what they were told. Caller, that's three minutes. Thank you. Caller, you're on the line with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Okay, my name is Wilhelm A. Posluzny. I'm calling from Missouri. And we need to get Donald Trump out of the White House. He's very dangerous. If we open up the schools in August, that's asking for more problems. That's asking for the virus. And Sir, the, this way that, uh, the way that the virus going up, it's going to go up and up and up in case it's rising every day. So we need to get President Trump out of the White House. He's dangerous. Sir, He's very is... unfit to be a president. And he does not need to be the president in that White House. He's a businessman. He does not need to be Sir, in this that is White a House. Topic. And he has to go. And, and, and he has to, he's very unfit thank, to be the president thank, in that White House. Thank, I'd like to see Mike Pence face thank you. Biden. And, oh. he's, he's not part of this one. Hello, caller. You're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. My name is Bonnie Metzger. I've lived on the west side of Grand Rapids for 77 years. Please do not defund the police. That's all. Good night. Thank you, Bonnie. Caller, you're on with the city commission. Please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. My name is Gary Bergman, and I live on the west side of Grand Rapids. And my comments are that I think that anybody that wants to defund the police department is crazy. You don't, this is not the way to solve the problems that we are going through at this particular time. What we do need to do is better training with the officers we have, have more officers so that they can attend to all of the citizens' concerns I have had numerous conversations with patrol officers complaining about the way people speed up and down the streets of the west side of Grand Rapids. And to a man, they tell me that this is the same complaint they get in every neighborhood in the city. And if that's the case, it's obvious that we need more officers, not less. And taking money away from the police department is not going to solve the problems that are going on in the society. We need to have some common sense. We need people to go ahead and start obeying the law, quit trying to take the law into their own hands, and start coming together and figuring out real solutions instead of doing radical things like let's defund the But I, I say again, you've got to start using some common sense. We need to keep the police department fully funded and get more officers so if they can uh, enforce the existing laws. So these are my comments and my opinions, and I welcome a chance to make further comments in the future. Thank you and good night. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. 
Hello, my name is Mary Zarzecki. I live in Grand Rapids, Michigan, Ward, Ward 2. And I am specifically calling to support our police department and our police chief. I am not in favor of defunding our department. I feel our chief has to get his reforms in place and working. And secondly, I feel that this call by Melinda Yasasi to defund without any information or program to tell the taxpayer what they're going to fund and will it work or is it just going to be a try and see? My tax dollars, which I have just received my property tax bill, need to go to protect our city and our people. And when you say you're going to defund, you're not telling us what you're going to do. Why would I say spend tax dollars on some program that I know nothing about? Makes no sense. So at this point, when you say defund, you're not telling us what you're going to do. Until you tell us what you're going to do that will actually work, please, please support our chief. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. Can you please lower the volume on your device? Is it my turn? It is your turn. You have three minutes. Please okay. state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. My name is John, and I live in the city of Grand Rapids. Um, I have never not lived in the city of Grand Rapids since 1968, and I've lived in all areas of the city. I love the city. I raised my children here. I am opposed to defunding the police and also take exception to those people who are chastising people from outside GR who are calling in. I welcome them. They make the city work along with the residents. They come here for the arenas and all of our entertainment venues, and a lot of them work here, so I think they have a right to voice their opinion. Uh, a lot of good stuff said on here. I don't know why this has to be an either-or situation. Why can't it be a both-end if community programs are needed? If uh, people's need help, then let's look at that, but not by defunding the police. That would be stupid. Um, if people don't feel safe here, uh, right or wrong, they're going to avoid the city, and that's not good for any of us. Uh, property values will fall, and uh, people will flee the city, right or wrong, if they have the perception that it's not no longer going to be safe here. Um, I think there are also unintended consequences. I've never felt the need to own a firearm. I've always felt safe in the city. Uh, I'm rethinking that situation, and I know my grown children are, are doing the same. Uh, we're going to do what any reasonable person would do. If we can't rely on the police, we're going to protect ourselves and our family. So I think that could be an unintended consequence of, of this uh, move to defund the police. I think it's really silly. And if you look around what's going on, some of the cities that have done that, the crime has skyrocketed. Uh, so I think we should take a look at that. This is a very, very serious decision. If anything, we should probably put it to a vote of all the people and not just a couple of uh, city commissioners. Thanks for the time. I appreciate it. Thank you, caller. Have a great night. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is Dan Hesse, and I live in Grand Rapids Township. I won't try to prolong this meeting too much longer than it has already been, uh, but I think this is a big moment, and for all of you to step up and be bold to solve some of the big problems that we as a city have. Uh, as someone who has worked and spent a great deal of time in each ward in many of the city neighborhoods, I know that the majority of the people 
and uh, who are mainly underprivileged, uh, are in favor of new methods of de-escalating situations in which do not involve police. This is also true from what I see going on in many places around the country. I tuned in for a bit this morning to watch the Committee of the Whole, and while Chief Payne showed some data on a number of comparable cities, uh, I didn't feel he mentioned how the culture in Grand Rapids uh, is different in several ways. I'm sorry, I just got a second call and that just distracted me. Um, According to some studies, Grand Rapids is the third most racist of major cities. In addition, a study that some of the commissioners have referenced in the past have shown that African Americans are three times more likely to get pulled over. A city with these problems should not try to cure itself with more funding for the police. I also think that many of the people who are opposed are being a bit closed-minded, uh, do not understand that the budget is currently in the state of being finalized, and uh, unfortunately some may be used to their white and class privileges. I would like to thank Commissioner Jones and Isopsi for putting this proposal. Commissioner O'Connor, I feel that you should refrain from voting because of the money you've taken from the police. And Commissioner Rippart, yes, let's reimagine public safety. As one caller mentioned, things have gotten worse not only recently, but also in the last five years since 2015, when funding started going back up to the GRPD. Please vote to reduce the funding to 32% around what it was for many years. Thank you. Thank you, caller. All right, um, commissioners, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump in here. Uh, our city clerk told me that we still have about 20 people in the queue. What I would like to do is give them an opportunity to speak um, if they're already in the queue, but then end this public comment section because we still have a full agenda uh, and we have a lot of important issues that we need to still vote on tonight. And then we'll still have public comment at the end of the meeting. So if people still wanna speak, they're welcome to do that, but I'm gonna ask them to call in during the second uh, public comment period, but we'll allow those who are currently in the queue to speak, and then we'll move forward uh, with the agenda. Are you all supportive of that? Am I see it just, you can shake your head if, if okay. Okay, um, so so city clerk, uh, please, we'll go ahead and, and give those in the queue an opportunity to speak, um, but then let's go ahead and, and uh, encourage anyone who calls in. So if you wanna call in and speak during the second opportunity for public comment, you can still call 456-3000 or 311, hit number one and then number four, and you'll be put in the second queue. Um, that way we'll be able to get to our action items tonight. All right, go ahead, Daniel. Okay. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, my name is Jacob and I'm from Kentwood. Um, so I strongly oppose the defunding of the police department. Um, I went to Grand Rapids Community College and GBSU Pew campus for a total of seven years for schooling. Um, my grandparents lived on the west side for as long as I've been around. So I've been in Grand Rapids quite a bit. Um, just kind of starting out, I'd like to ask people, um, just like when you get a paycheck cut, how do you feel? It limits your ability to do things. And that's essentially what we're, debating on the table for the police department. So again, I would like to say I oppose that defunding, but I think when it, what it really comes right down to it is that when I was in school, we were taught to analyze the root cause of a problem. And what I feel it, the defunding of the police department is, is it's just an answer uh, to a question that we haven't analyzed the root cause. So one of the root causes that I think is a problem with that is just how kids are raised these days. I know that might be stepping on a lot of people's toes, but when my parents raised me, we were taught to respect other people, respect adults, people in charge. And um, that's just something that I've carried with me for my whole life. And what I see in people who are rioting in Grand Rapids, um, in like Chaz in Seattle and so on and so forth, is those people don't show that they respect people in authority, i.e. the law enforcement community. 
Um, I know many officers from around various departments, um, and in essentially a, a caller, a, a previous caller said that we need to increase funding, and I would agree to that because their their job is so stressful, and essentially I think they need more uh, money to have more resources, more interviews to um, to check how they're doing out on the streets periodically. Um, it's we don't need a Chaz in Grand Rapids. I'm not saying that that's going to happen, but every time that you defund a law enforcement community, we're getting closer to no police, and that's what Chaz was. It was zero police accountability, and where there's no law, there's anarchy. So that's that's my reasoning for voting no for um, the defunding of the police department. So um, thank you for taking my call, and I yield the rest of my time. Thank you, caller. Caller, can you please lower the volume on your device? Yes. Yes. Hello. Hi, caller. You're on with the city commission. Please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Thank you. My name is Jolanda Howe. I live in the city of Grand Rapids. I'm calling to speak in favor of reducing the police budget as proposed in today's amendment. I support robust funding for the police the office of police oversight and accountability but I also want to call on the city to reduce the police budget to 32% of the city's budget. Please, city leaders, do not be swayed by panicked callers fearing that the whole police department will instantly disappear with nothing to replace it. That is not even possible right now as our charter requires the police budget to be at 32% of the city's budget. This reduction can hardly be considered a defunding when it still represents nearly one third of our city budget dedicated to policing, and it was the level of our police department in 2015. What this reduction would represent is a change in direction, a new path forward in public safety that does not lead to the criminalization of black and brown members of our community, but ensures real public safety for all residents, not just white residents. As has become increasingly clear to the Black Lives Matter movement just how different police treat black and brown skinned people than they do white people, I wonder if many of the callers expressing fears or calling this move radical or scary are white like me and grew up or still live in majority white neighborhoods or suburbs. Growing up in Campsack Park, the police played no role in my life. I did not see them in the park, in my neighborhood, or in, at community events. They did not pull me over for no reason. They never mistook me for an adult, held me at gunpoint, or handcuffed me just for walking home. I was never frightened, harassed, or otherwise harmed by the police. In short, white residents living in the suburbs and mostly white neighborhoods cannot relate to what black and brown residents in Grand Rapids are experiencing in many neighborhoods in our city. Please listen closely, commissioners, to your constituents who are telling you the truth about their experiences in our city with the GRPD. It is simply wise to reduce funding in a system that is failing so many in favor of investing in equity and ensuring all residents have access to quality, affordable housing, good paying jobs, affordable daycare, food security, education, health, mental health care. I agree with Commissioner Jones. These are the investments that will lead to public safety. In summary, I applaud Commissioner Isafi, Commissioner Jones, and Commissioner Ruppert for listening to those who are calling, writing, and marching for real systemic change. City leaders, you don't have to have a whole plan worked out. Minneapolis voted to take decisive action without having a full plan in place. You simply need to commit to reducing the funding in an institution that is not even transparent with its funding, as well as a timeline and a plan to listen to the community and forge a new path forward that is equitable and safe for everyone. Please, Commissioner Isasi, make your motion again tonight. Please, Commissioners Mayor Bliss and Commissioner and other commissioners join Commissioner Yusasi, Jones, and Rappart in voting for a budget amendment that would return us to the 2015 level. Thank you, caller. That's three minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Caller, you're on the line with the city commission. Please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Good evening, Mayor Bliss and Commissioners. My name is Lorena Bayou Marquez, and I'm a resident of Grand Rapids, and I live in the third ward. I'm calling to ask you to support um, Commissioner Sassi's motion to reduce our GRPD's budget from 39 to 32 percent within the fiscal year 2021. Funding should be relocated to public services for communities of color, 
at the guidance of black community members and groups. And I also ask all the commissioners, um, especially the commissioners in the third ward, Commissioner Moody and Leonard, to follow in, um, Commissioner Isati and Commissioner Jones' bold leadership and commitment to investing in our communities, not just police. Um, so I'm asking all the commissioners to be courageous and do what is right. We have talked and had meetings and talked and had meetings, and now it's time for action. So thank you and have a great night. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. Please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is Lionel Broad. I work and do all things social in the city of Grand Rapids. I am calling because I am heavily in favor of defunding the police department and reallocating those funds. Um, there's other places where that money could go, like neighborhood associations and other services that actually bridge the gap between community and police. The police have, uh, have over and over again refused to um, engage in community policing. Um, I heard somebody mention that this would be a knee-jerk reaction. I beg to differ because there's been years of reports and studies. If you do what you've always done, you're going to get what you've always got. And right now it's time to make a fundamental change in how policing is done in Grand Rapids. We need to reimagine the whole ecosystem. And that's all I have for tonight. Thank you for taking my call. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hello, I'm Dana Knight of Black Lives Matter, Greater Grand Rapids. I'm also a member of Grand Rapids Homes for All and the ACLU. I am born and raised in Grand Rapids, spending uh, five years living in Los Angeles after the Rodney King Rebellion and the last five years a resident of Wyoming. My present residency is due to the city of Grand Rapids neglecting the needs of its residents by putting profits over people when it comes to approving housing proposals presented to them from housing developers, but that's another topic. I am calling because I support defunding the police budget to 32%. The funding means allocating financial resources to helping establish or support community-based organizations which would provide unarmed emergency responders for nonviolent cause for service. And these people would be trained. Brandon Davis needs uh, the support services to help him do his job, which is to oversight or oversee the activities of the Grand Rapids Police Department, which has been fighting tooth and nail for accountability. Despite all the evidence showing historic record of bad policing and racial bias. Chief Payne, the police union, has done everything it can to resist reform efforts. Chief Payne, may I remind you, is only the chief by default. He was the last man standing after the two candidates that were preferred by um, Mark were, had to bow out due to one uh, demanding uh, higher salary and the second one had civil rights lawsuits pending against him. So I repeat, Chief Payne was not the best of all the candidates, and he is not a, a progressive or wanting reform in the department. I will quote uh, Patrice Cullors, who is the co-founder of Black Lives Matter movement, said during the, the fun, that the funding policing means reallocating these, those funds to support people and services in marginalized communities. Defunding law enforcement means that we are reducing the ability for law enforcement to have resources that harm our communities. It's about reinvesting those dollars into black communities, communities have been, that have been deeply divested from. Those dollars can be put back into social services for mental health, domestic violence, and homelessness, among others. Police are often the first responders to all three. Those dollars can also be used to fund schools, hospitals, housing, and food in those communities, all of which would increase public safety. 
I, as a member of ACLU, currently I'm working on a document. That's a spreadsheet. three minutes, ma'am. That's three minutes, caller. Thank you. Thank you. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hello, caller. Caller, can you hear me? Good evening, caller. You're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. My name is Joey. I live on Grand Rapids, Northwest Side. I've been here for quite a bit, quite a few years. I have family. Um, I've had to deal with shootings. I've had to deal with people dying in my street. I've had to deal with drugs. Um, the only people I want to be funded is the undertakers, not the police. That's ridiculous. But you guys know the budget better. I would ask that you would use your conscience, your moral conscience, your uh, common sense, um, to follow the evidence, and if it leads to more shootings and more crime, then you should abandon that plan and go with the better plan. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. Please state your name and the city in which you live. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is Patty Prishela. I live in Grand Rapids, born and raised. And I'm here to support reducing the budget to 32% um, and to be more transparent about the funds reallocated or otherwise. Um, I'd like to know where my tax money is going. Um, I think we need to reallocate those funds and invest in our community, particularly those communities of color. I think we need to hold officers accountable, reform the police unions that are not doing that. Um, and I think we need to train our police for specific tasks, not a wide range of tasks. I think there are other institutions that could take the place of some nonviolent tasks um, addressing homelessness and mental illness. And um, I think just because we've always done things this way doesn't mean that it's the right way. And just because this system is working for particularly white people like myself doesn't mean it's working for everybody else. And I think we need to listen to leaders and members of marginalized communities and address the root of systemic racism starting at home. And um, I would like us to be on the right side of history and to consider creative and progressive solutions in Grand Rapids. And I yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Good evening. My name is Connor and I'm a resident of Grand Rapids Township. I'm currently a federal law enforcement officer and I do not support defunding the police. I believe the budget should be raised. Police need more support now more than ever. Officers should have access to more resources and training. I worked during the recent protests and riots and the police in Grand Rapids and across the nation were not prepared or equipped to handle the chaos that took place. GRPD should not have their police defunded and, the, and they should receive more support and funding. I fully support community outreach, but taking more officers off the streets and providing less gear and training will not make the current situation any better. GRPD should not lose any of their current funding. Thank you. And I hope that you choose to support the hardworking men and women of GRPD. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on the line with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Okay. Um, my name is Kelly Schwann and I live in Grand Rapids. I'd like to state my support for defunding the police and reallocating the resources. I believe that investing in our community is incredibly important. Investing in education, job training, and equal housing opportunities has proven to reduce crime. And many callers tonight say that what happened in Minneapolis does not affect us, but it does. For example, a group of 12-year-old black children were held at gunpoint just a few years ago. This is just one example of the many um, examples that demonstrate how people of color are disproportionately targeted by police in our community. And I ask white commenters to look outside their own personal experiences. 
I'm saddened to see the defunding of education Grand Rapids currently, especially as a past educator. I've seen the inequities in our education system, and it weighs heavy on my heart. One caller asked, well, where will this money go? And I suggest education. Investing in our at-risk communities is important, and we need to invest in our most vulnerable communities. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Uh, your time starts now. Hi, my name is Jake, and I live in Hudsonville, Michigan, and I am against the defunding of the police. My girlfriend's father is an officer for the Grand Rapids Police Department, and each year he is involved in the on-base program that the GRP provides for young people in the community. This program is to better police relations with kids in the community and teach kids baseball. Chief Payne stated that defunding the police would result in a reduction of the community engagement unit to redistribute social actions, meaning the on-base program and other efforts by the police department to engage positively with the community would most likely be cut. I think it would also be helpful for the commission to look at what is going on in other major cities across our country where police departments have already been defunded and look at the rising crime over the past few weeks and if that is what we want to happen here in Grand Rapids. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Caller, you're on the line with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is Ali. I am um, live on the west side of Grand Rapids. I am a community outreach worker for the city of Grand Rapids. I mainly work with the homeless population of Grand Rapids. Um, I'm calling in favor of um, defunding the police and reallocating the funds to community health organizations, um, specifically for mobile crisis units, which is essentially two social workers going out to de-escalate situations. I have been in the mental health field for four years now and have not once had to call the police for a situation in which I needed to personally de-escalate. Um, people are not really realizing that this isn't a good versus bad situation. This is a society situation, and this is a sense of belonging situation. People don't feel that they belong in their community, and that leads to addiction and mental health crisis, and that directly correlates with violence. So that is what I'd like to say. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on the line with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. How you doing? This is DeAndre Jones, Grand Rapids. Um, this call is to support most of the citizens that have been speaking out on uh, reducing the budget to 32%. I support the commissioners that um, wants to see the budget reduced and uh, reinvest that money into better infrastructure for the city of Grand Rapids. Um, I believe we should be taking money um, and putting that money back into um, making the city more livable, making the city more safe, making the city more affordable, making the homes more energy efficient, uh, creating eco-friendly and green jobs for not just people of color who have been stereotyped and uh, treated uh, differently from the Pope, from um, people of um, people that are not people of color. I also believe that um, seeing that um, people of color are also um, stopped in traffic uh, more than twice the amount of um, Caucasian people in the city of Grand Rapids that um, we should take that money and reinvest that money back into jobs, better infrastructure, uh, creating better ordinances and better policies that uh, make things more affordable and more efficient for people of color. Uh, I believe we should also have that. Um, even though I brought had those armed gunmen that walked in the city of Grand Rapids and people were stereotyping me that I'm not 
a bad person and that I wasn't trying to um, cause any tension for the city of Grand Rapids to put the city in a bad light and that um, I'm just trying to break racial barriers and I want to have those tough conversations that where we can bridge the gap to folks in community relations and I had nothing to do with the riot and the people that were with me had nothing to do with the riot and that I'm going to continue to try to do my best to um, be the positive change and being the person and the humanitarian that I am is that I'll continue to show up to those meetings and I'll continue to voice my opinion and I'll continue to stand up for people until we see change. And I just want people to people of color to stop being stereotyped and looking at like we're bad people and that we don't go through things and that we don't have mental health issues and that we don't have and that we don't have solutions um to bridge those gaps between police and community relations and creating better jobs and helping people of color and um, helping people to have mental issues. Um, and that's all I'd like to say. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on the line with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is Sam Lemmer. I reside in the Heartside neighborhood of Grand Rapids. I also work as a psychotherapist and a mental health counselor on the southeast side of Grand Rapids. I'm calling in support of the proposed reduction in the GRPD police uh, budget. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the relationship between mental health and law enforcement. Uh, it, it's pretty compelling when you get into it. Uh, we all know that there's an innate distrust of law enforcement in the black and brown community. We've seen the footage, we've heard the experiences, we know why. When we have the escalation that police presence can cause in someone who's already fearful of law enforcement, it takes a situation that, that could have been de-escalated and increases the potential for harm, for violence. And this is a norm. This isn't the exception. The police mentality, the police training, the police culture as a career is not adequate to appropriately address and reduce the harm in these situations. It's, it's just not what they're trained to do. Uh, alternatively, I can say that I have the pleasure of working on a, a staff that we have a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week staff crisis line in which people are calling just like they would call 911 when they're having a crisis. That involves harm to themselves, harm to others. Um, this isn't this isn't like minor things. There's weapons. There's it's dangerous. And so, to have an opportunity to work with people who are in that situation, who are calling the line and not calling law enforcement, because they they are afraid. They're afraid of what happens when I call law enforcement. What happens when someone shows up and they're scared of this person who I love who's having a crisis. What am I going to do then? And so to, to be able to work with that and to see how successful that can be and how much it can reduce police custody and hospitalization uh, has been eye-opening for me. Uh, I, I want to address those who are scared of losing police presence. And especially I want to address the people who, who have brown and black kids who are white. And I, and I hear what you're saying, that you've had positive experiences with your kids. And I want to, I want to clarify something. I, I am also a biracial individual. My experience with law enforcement, my experience with society looks a lot different when I'm with my white father or my white sister than when I'm alone. And so I, I understand that, that your perspective is, is as a white parent, but eventually your eight-year-old son is going to be 18 and you're not going to be around him. And that looks different. And so I want to say, if you're scared of losing police protection or, that's or presence, three minutes, Paula. imagine what it is that's to feel like that all the time. That's three minutes. Thank, Thank you, Paula. You. Caller, you're on the line with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is Brooke, and I'm a resident in the second ward of Grand Rapids. Um, regarding the $400,000 budget decrease that's been talked about, I'm concerned that that's not nearly enough of a budget decrease to the GRPD. 
I want to urge those of you on this commission to think bigger than 400,000 and to listen to folks who live in over-policed communities who have been calling for the defunding of the police department for years. If the idea of defunding the police department sounds undercooked or brand new or like people haven't thought through all of the potential consequences, I think it's important to consider that the idea of defunding is not new overall and might be something that's just new to you individually. I also think that it's important that we remember that one individual's positive encounter with a police department does not equal positive and fair encounters between the police department and every community that make up the city of Grand Rapids. Um, I support the people of Grand Rapids who are requesting that the GRPD's budget is decreased to 32% outlined in the city charter um, and that that money from the city budget be reallocated back into the community, whether that be into housing, education, social work, or other areas in which black community leaders feel city funds would better enrich the lives of all people who live in Grand Rapids. Um, I want to say thank you to Commissioner Isaki for proposing the decrease in the GRPD budget um, and to Commissioner Jones for supporting the proposal. And I ask that the rest of you making up this voting body support the proposal to decrease the GRPD budget to 32%. Um, and that is all I think. Thank you so much. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on the line with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is Taylin and I live in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I fully support the defunding of the Grand Rapids Police Department um, because I believe defunding the police means refunding of social services. I'm just going to read a post um, from Afterwards Ness on Instagram. Um, it says, through the last several decades, social service funding has been gutted and those jobs and dollars have been outsourced to an unqualified police force. Instead of having a variety of well-funded tools to handle all the social problems we face, we now have one overfunded tool, the police. In some cities, funding for programs and nonprofits working in crisis intervention and prevention are being cut. In other cities, it's mental health funding, addiction services, hospital budgets, and in many others, school lunch programs, after school programs, and schools themselves are taking the hit. Meanwhile, police force budgets keep increasing. The problem is, when the only tool you have is a jail cell, every problem becomes an inmate. When the only tool you have is a gun, every problem becomes a target. With no better way to handle these issues, poverty, addiction, and mental health become the criminal criminalized, as do many of the other manifestations of our broken system. Using the cover of these social issues, the state furthers their violence against Black people in the name of law and order. Defunding the police will not end racist policing, but it's the first step towards removing some of the power and presence they wield against Black members of our community. What we get in return by investing in social services is proper care for folks most in need, those who are unhoused or in poverty, those who are struggling with addiction or mental health trauma, better schools and safer streets, issues that are faced overwhelmingly by our communities of color due to in no small part to racist policing. By moving resources away from police, whose budgets often account for one third or more of cities' entire budgets and towards social services, we all benefit. The police no longer have to manage myriad social problems and those in need receive care that actually benefits them, and them instead of criminalizing them. So when you read calls to defund the police, know that it is not a radical idea. It is simply moving resources to where the needs of our community actually exist. Thank you for your time. Thank you, caller. Caller, can you please lower the volume on your device? Yes. All right. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Okay. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Patrick Chagru. I am a resident of Grand Rapids Third Ward. I also work in the Third Ward and have done so for some, lived and worked here for some 25 plus years. Um, I would like to, um, first of all, say how proud and impressed I am of having listened for the last, I think, two to two and a half hours to the citizens of this city in this metropolitan area. Uh, I think very admirably and articulately expressed their divergent opinions 
all of which need to be heard, all of which are important, and all of which I've listened to. And what is it, what it, it, it appears to me is that there are good points to be made on all sides of this issue. There are concerns that we want to maintain the, the safety and the policing of this community so that we have a safe environment for our families, our businesses, and for our visitors. We also have concerns that our police department um, is not perfect. There are incidents of disparate treatment, of bullying, of perhaps racism, uh, and other issues that need to be worked out. But it seems to me that the issue in front of this commission is one of defunding. Defunding means that we've all that this commission has already t- taken the deliberative process of approving a budget for 38 percent of its budget towards policing. So if it is going to defund, it seems to me that there, this commission needs to make a direct finding that it can explain to its constituents of Grand Rapids why it is doing so, and that in doing so, it will not decrease the public safety to the citizens of Grand Rapids and its visitors. And it will also demonstratively add to those concerns which the citizens have so rightly voiced. It will reduce racism. It will stop bullying. It will have policing be more accountable. And if this commission cannot directly, specifically articulate to the population how both of those things can happen in this defunding movement, then I think they have to vote no. And this thing needs to be considered as part of a regular budgeting process. That's my view. And once again, I'm proud of the city of Grand Rapids. Thank you to the commission, to Chief Payne, and uh, the citizens. Thank you, Colin. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Can you please lower Daniel. the volume? Daniel. Yes, sir. What you called me, sir, for? <laughs> Hi, Jimmy. How are you? I'm doing great. All How right. you doing, man? Good. You have three minutes with the commission. Your time starts now. Am I now. the last one? Am I the last one? Second to last. Oh, I wanted to be last. <laughs> Go oh, ahead, Jimmy. Good. Hey, guys. I'm second to last. Over two and a half years to get accommodations so that I'd be first. Intentionally, I tried to be the last. But sometimes being first just isn't good enough. But how do we resolve the issue and the problem? I remember when I could think better, I was being taught at the community college, uh, the Grand Rapids Community College. So I'm a lifelong resident. I lived in all three wards. I attended the community college. I'm not a graduate of schools, though. But it was a process of elimination. It was a mathematical problem. I think it had to do with bars, brackets, and braces. So if we look at the recession, which we're living in now, <clears throat> we had a problem with law enforcement before that. During the recession, we also live in a state of pandemic. We've had a problem with law enforcement before that. <clears throat> the truth is, when Obama was around, I think we went through a, a, a recession also. And we had problems with Grand Rapids police not nationally. Ever since I could remember, police have been beating us. My family's told me that, my uncles. I know that I've mentioned law enforcement in other cities. Those Rockford troopers that I speak of, those are my cousins. And that other officer that works in Ottawa County, that's my cousin. Yolanda Madry's my wife, childhood best friend. This is the daughter of Joe Madry. He was the head of probation here in Grand Rapids. I believe he's in the Basketball Hall of Fame. Very honorable person. Carmen Morales was one of my childhood friends, police officer of the year in the city of Wyoming. <clears throat> Yolanda Madry and her were in the academy together and knew even before they got done they weren't going to be hired to Grand Rapids police. The problem isn't that John O'Connor received money if he could legally by the police. The problem is, is when we go through the process of elimination to find the unknown, the answer lies in the Grand Rapids Police. We need to defund them. We need to, fu- we need to fire, and it might be the worst thing I'd say. Chief Payne is slimy. He's been around for decades. 
He's never spoke on those black children, the color that he says he is. And I'm talking about young honesty and these other girls who were cuffed and bound. I'm offended to see that. <clears throat> you, Mary Bliss, you were the first one to jump when Hartwell said, let's give them the money for these high-powered weapons. That's a part of the problem. They use those. We are taught to use them in wartime. I'm outside, and here comes some Jim, police. Jimmy, your, your right time up. is up. What? Your, t your three minutes is up. Thank you for calling. Well, that's fine. Okay. Have a good night. Caller, you're on the line with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Thank you so much. My name is Jonathan DeCool. I happen to currently live in Hudsonville, Michigan. Again, thank you for taking my call. Longtime resident of the Southwest Michigan and much of that time in the greater Grand Rapids area. I regularly do business and have a wide range of relationships and engagement in Grand Rapids. Uh, it is and has been my privilege to know a significant number of Grand Rapids police officers down throughout the years. And in addition to that, I've known other law enforcement personnel throughout the Southwest Michigan region and even around the country. Uh, to the person, each of these are honorable individuals who selflessly serve our community here in Grand Rapids with diligence, faithfulness, and great care for all of the people who live in it our community, as all of you know, of course, often at great risk to themselves. As in all occupations, there are those who uh, do not live up to the obligations, the duties and honor worthy of a Grand Rapids police officer. Each of these individuals need to be weeded out, dealt with to the fullest extent of the law when necessary. No doubt about that. That being said, the vast majority of our law enforcement personnel serve honorably and responsibly. The whole should not be judged on the failures of the few. Uh, those who are incompetent have bad character should be weeded out. I want you to know that I stand in solidarity with our men and women who serve as Grand Rapids police officers. I'd like to further add that if we reduce or Defund the police force. I'm concerned that many good citizens will leave our city, as will valuable businesses. And at that point, not only will police funding decrease, but all aspects of city services and personnel will also be reduced. So for these reasons and others that I could mention, I respectfully implore the commission to certainly seek necessary reforms and policy changes as needed throughout all levels of our city government, not only the police force, but please do not def defund or reduce the Grand Rapids police force for the safety and well-being of our wonderful community. I want to thank you again for your time. Thank you, caller. Daniel? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you, Daniel. And I want to thank everyone who called in tonight. Um, this is a really critically important issue in our community, as it is in communities all over this country. And we appreciate you taking the time to reach out to us and to share your thoughts and opinions and feedback. Uh, so we're going to move on to the agenda. And so commissioners, I'm going to start with approval of our minutes. And this is from our regular session on June 16th uh, at our 7 p.m. meeting. Can I get a motion? So moved. Okay, moved and supported. Any questions or comments? All right, city clerk, will you call for the vote? Yes, Commissioner Isasi. Yes. Commissioner Ruppart. Yes. Commissioner Lanier. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner O'Connor. Yes. Commissioner Moody. Yes. Mayor Bliss. Yes. All right, commissioners, next that will take us to petitions and communications. We have quite a few before us tonight, so we'll start with the first one. Communications, communication received from Cassie Kobler regarding the Grand Rapids Police Department budget. 
That's received and filed. Communication received from Sam Kajowski regarding declaring systematic racism as a public health crisis. That's received and filed. Communication received from Leadership Grand Rapids with recommendations to improve community and police relations. That's received and filed. Communication received from Megan Henning with examples of training for the Grand Rapids Police Department. That's received and filed. Communication received from Ashley Benedict regarding the Grand Rapids Police Department budget. That is received and filed. Communication received from Aaron Albano expressing support for the hashtag eat can, can't wait campaign. That's received and filed. Communication received from Stephen Wells regarding the Grand Rapids Police Department budget. That's received and filed. Communication received from Jimmy Arizola. That's received and filed. Communication received from Karen Myers regarding the Grand Rapids Police Department and the oversight of over, the Office of Oversight and Public Accountability Budgets. That's received and filed. Communication received from Aaron Schneiser regarding the Grand Rapids Police Department and the Office of Oversight and Public Accountability Budgets. That's received and filed. Communication received from Maria Kutches regarding the Grand Rapids Police Department and the Office of Oversight and Public Accountability Budgets. That's received and filed. Communication received from Kaylee Davis regarding the Grand Rapids Police Department budget. That's received. Communication received from Sally Alberts regarding future development near her home. Communication received. We're having difficulty Kale. hearing um, you if you're not speaking to them. I still put the mic on mute. Okay. Communication received from Sarah Keel regarding the Grand Rapids Police Department budget. That's received and filed. Communication received from Emily Hawley regarding Grand Rapids Police Department budget. That's received and filed. Communication received from the public regarding police. That's received and filed. Communication received from Colin Dick regarding the Grand Rapids Police Department budget. That's received and filed. Communication received from Scott Atchison regarding an information center. That is received and filed. Communication received from Simon Tiddock regarding the Grand Rapids Police Department budget. That's received and filed. Communication received from, I'm going to put these together because they're the same items, Drew Windsor, Stephen Marvin, Jill DeYoung, and Chris Ferguson regarding the Grand Rapids Police Department budget. Those are received and filed. Um, communication received from Chris Ferguson, um, oops, sorry, regard, and from Chris Ferguson and um, several other communications received regarding the Grand Rapids Police Department. That's received and filed. And then communication received from Farmhouse Wellness expressed support for the legalization of recreational marijuana provisioning centers. And that is received and filed. Thank you, City Clerk. And then that will take us to reports of city officers. And we have four items before us tonight. The first one is the Comptroller's report for the period of June 4, 2020 through June 24, 2020, in the amount of $33,443,000. $472.63. That's received and filed. Comptroller's funds monthly reporting as of May 31, 2020. That's received and filed. Treasury report for the period of May 30, 2020 through June 19, 2020. That's received and filed. And the city clerk submitted copies of the Police and Fire Retirement System Actuarial Valuation for the year ending December 31, 2019. That is also received and filed. All right, next that will take us to our consent agenda. So our consent agenda are items that we talked about earlier today in one of our standing committee meetings where there was unanimous support. So tonight with one voice vote, we'll adopt those items. Can I get a motion for the consent agenda? So moved. Support. All right, moved and supported. Commissioners, any questions or comments? All right, City Clerk, will you call the vote on that? Commissioner Rempart. Commissioner Lanier? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner O'Connor? Yes. Commissioner Moody? Yes. Commissioner Asasi? Yes. Mayor Bliss? Yes. Those carry. That will take us to ordinances to be adopted. And commissioners, we have five ordinances before us tonight. So we'll start with the first one. First one is an ordinance amending section one of the budget ordinance 2024. Dash 15 for fiscal year 21, amendment number one. So Support. All right, moved and supported. Commissioner O'Connor from our fiscal committee. You want to talk about this? Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, so there's two items on uh, this uh, budget ordinance for this evening. One is uh, the Community Development Department, uh, the fiscal year 2020 emergency solutions grant for some coronavirus funds, uh, the supplemental funding 
It was allocated uh, by formula, and uh, this is to help respond to the coronavirus pandemic to support low-income families and vulnerable populations. Uh, the second is uh, an executive office department recommendation for fiscal year 2021 staffing and appropriation adjustments uh, that the city manager has recommended, which we have talked about at uh, great length today, uh, including three positions, uh, the additional one assistant director to the uh, police department, uh, one labor relations specialist to the Office of uh, Public Accountability and the uh, addition of one communications manager to the city's uh, executive office department. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner. So uh, I'll open this up for, uh, for those two items to be discussed. And then I, I do think it's important that we uh, that we share just a, a few comments. Um, I know that earlier today there was a, a motion to make an amendment to the budget ordinance, and there was some discussion this morning for people who didn't see that related to process. It was encouraged that we, actually our city attorney raised some, some concerns about process, um, and we had that conversation. And then this morning about moving it to this evening, and then the city attorney shared some of her concerns about appropriate budget amendment authority and process. So I just want to make sure all of my colleagues had a chance to read that material from our city attorney, um, because I want to make sure that people are aware of that. Mayor, um, I, I don't think people understand what you're talking about because there's a lot of confusion. So I think for clarity and transparency, I would appreciate the city attorney um, letting us know what this commission can do regarding the budget uh, amendment that has been proposed by the staff and what's unable to be done because there's a lot of expectations around the public, what should be done. And I would hate for us to leave this night with even more confusion and the public being more confused about what, what's actually able to be voted on. I know it's late, but I would appreciate the clarity from the city attorney if she's amenable to doing so. Thank you, city manager. And I, I apologize if I was a little vague. I. Um, was trying to figure out if this is privileged communication or not. So I want to be mindful of that. Uh, but I, I, I agree with you. I don't want to add to the confusion, but I also want us to be very clear about process. Uh, and so that there's not greater uh, confusion. So, and, and I know um, for many of us, we just received this less than 30 minutes before the seven o'clock meeting. So I think it would be helpful for our city attorney or our deputy city attorney to weigh in and provide some clarity. Certainly. So uh, what I'm going to say um, probably won't be liked. I'll just go ahead and put that out there. But just as we want to hold our police department accountable, we also want to hold our legislative body and our city manager accountable. And there's laws in place for that so that we follow process proper process for meetings, we follow proper process in um, our budget process. And this is important because if we don't follow proper procedure, then everything that you're trying to accomplish gets overturned. And so that's why that's important. So let's talk about three areas um, that we have concern in. So one is um, the item, and we mentioned it earlier, but to say it again, the item of um, reducing the um, budget down to 32% is not on the agenda. For that to get on the agenda, it has to be by the majority of the commission. But because it's not an agenda item, um, it's not up for discussion unless we have that approval by the majority of the body. But even if we do get um, um, the majority of the commission to discuss the item, and the next concern is that, that you'd be taking um, an action that's inconsistent with our city charter and state law. So there's a um, state law in place on how we're to do our budget that requires us to be fiscally sound in our expenditures and what we do with public monies. So part of what that um, budget act does is require us to adopt a balanced budget, establish um, responsibilities, and define the procedure for preparation, adoption, and maintenance of our budget. 
and we've done that. And so it's in our charter. It's in our um, and our charter is in line with state law. And part of that, the part that's important here is the chief administrative officer, which is our city manager, shall have final responsibility for budget preparation, presentation of the budget to the legislative body, and the control of expenditures under the budget and the general appropriations. Um, keep in mind for, for the budget, the city manager, along with his staff, spends a lot of time um, information gathering looking at what the operation needs are, looking at the desires of the commission and the needs of our community. So they're making an informed decision of what's for the best interest um, of the organization and the community. So um, we're in compliance with that, we've done that, but where it comes into, um, I don't wanna say, where it comes into um, play is where state law requires collaboration and accountability between the legislative body and the chief administrative officers. Courts have held that the legislative body's ability to accept or reject the budget recommendations does not give them the ability to unilaterally amend the budget. As part of the city charter and state law, the chief administrative officer is responsible for ensuring that the budget submitted would prevent expenditures from exceeding available revenues for the current fiscal year. And he's done that, and he and the staff have done that, um, given ample time to the commission to review that, and that ordinance, um, the budget ordinance has already been approved. So now we're talking about amendments, and those amendments um, are handled the same. And with the amendments, you have to also do like you do with the budget ordinance, and that's put it in writing, you need to state what's the um, um, intended alteration that you want to take place. And you have to, I think one of the um, citizens mentioned it and she was absolutely correct. You have to specify where that money's coming from and where it's going. You can't just say, we wanna reduce the budget and take money and you have not explained um, precisely where that's coming from or should say specifically where that's coming from and where it's going. And that's, um, that's law, it's not something that we're um, saying we want to do or don't want to do to not, um, to not um, take into consideration um, the, the requests of the community. And so this isn't to say that at some point, um, perhaps there might be further discussion on this, but this is not the point in which that happens at this meeting. And so, um, our recommendations, meaning the law department, and we've spent ample time on this today and apologize because it did take time of giving, getting that to the commission um, in short time just before the meeting. So based on our analysis and the legal authority, the city commission has the following options related to the budget amendments uh, proposed by the city manager. You can discuss and deliberate the budget amendments proposed by the city manager and the staff. You can accept the budget amendments proposed by the city manager and the staff. You can deny the budget amendments proposed by the city manager and the staff. And certainly you can have um, discussions and express your concerns related to the rejected amendment. What you, the commission does not have the authority to do is unilaterally amend the city manager's proposed amendments for the 2021 approved budget. The commission does not have the authority to unilaterally reduce total departmental appropriations contained in the 2021 approved budget. If the city commissions acts inconsistently with the city charter or state law, the city may face legal consequences or other civil legal actions. But even more importantly than that, you may wind up, um, the decision that you make, if we're challenged, may get overturned and defeat the, um, what you're trying to do. And so it's our recommendation that um, you cannot unilaterally um, amend the city, manage, city manager's proposed amendment. Are there any questions or concerns? Commissioner Lanier. 
Thank you, um, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Madam City Attorney. I have a quick question. So at our meeting this morning, um, when Commissioner Isasi um, made her motion this morning, it was recommended, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Commissioner Isasi, but it was recommended that she um, uh, not have the motion during the Committee of the Whole meeting because the item was not on the agenda. Um, it happened to be an item that was on the agenda for the fiscal committee. Um, so that made sense that she couldn't make the motion because there wasn't an, an existing agenda item that she was tying the motion to. Um, and it was also recommended by the law department to Commissioner Isasi for her to wait until this evening's meeting. Um, to make her motion because again, the item now would be on the agenda. So um, I don't know that I've heard in the description that's been outlined this evening, um, what changed um, and perhaps it was just um, more having more clarity on what was shared earlier. But I do think because we had a public discussion where um, one of our colleagues had been given a directive that she potentially was prepared to follow this evening. And now that's changing for her. I think it warrants some, some discussion about what happened this morning and why that information was shared at a public meeting. Absolutely. So what helps, and we try to be um, armed as much as possible before a meeting so that we can provide answers um, that may be helpful before the meeting, and helping you all get those things done in the meeting that you need to get done. So this morning, um, one thing we knew for sure is that that wasn't an agenda item and should not have been discussed. What changed is after the meeting, um, myself and, and another a number of other attorneys in this office have done a lot of research, a lot of work, and looking at our Open Meetings Act, our standing rules, our state statutes, our budget and accounting the Budget and Accounting um, Act that um, surrounds um, our, whether I want to say, sets out the procedures for how we um, do the budget. And so after um, reviewing all of that, we came back with what's the correct um, process based on law, state, local, and um, state and local law. So one last question, just as a follow-up, just to make sure I'm understanding, because I think this discussion doesn't just um, help us with determining what's happening this evening, but it also have what I would consider ramifications for um, um, future meetings. So are you saying that this body during a meeting does not have the authority to make, to, to put a motion on the floor if that item is not on the agenda? So there's certain... <laughs> There's certain, if you, our standing rules, if you look through the standing rules at rule four, it spells out those motions in which can be done um, without going through, submitting and writing and going through the whole minute um, track process. And so those things are, so every motion or resolution except to adjourn, postpone, table, remove from table, commit or take from committee shall be in writing or um, submitted electronically and entered into minute track. And so part of the, the reason for that is so that certain items need to be vetted, right? So they the there's a certain order. So there's certain departments, whoever has the expertise in whatever that area is. And then ultimately it comes to the law department and we view everything that goes on the agenda to form. And so um, with the exception of those things that I just named based on the standing rules, then the answer to your question would be yes. We have to follow the process. I know there's been historically some times when we, well, we probably should have done a different process. Um, so this is this is a, a major, a major item. You're talking about, you know, perhaps what nine nine million dollars or so in a budget cutting or amending a budget that's already been approved. And so those expenditures are accounted for and balanced with um, what our revenues are, which is what the uh, city manager 
um, is going to utilize in the operation of successful fiscal action of this organization. So now to afterwards, because we thought the process, state we thought, he put together a budget with his staff, considering all factors, presented it to you all and gave you time to um, review that budget. And then you all approve that budget. And so now to have that kind of impact in our 2021 budget, which actually has already started, um, I think is we have to make sure that we're following all of those rules. Like I said, because what you don't want is to make that decision, go forth, make that decision, we get challenged and it gets overturned and it defeats the whole purpose. You know, I think I think one thing that uh, just might be worth mentioning is by by charter and by the form of government that we have, the city manager does have uh, quite a bit of autonomy in preparing the agenda. And so, uh, while the city commission, by a majority of of the commission, can add items to the agenda, uh, we we provide uh, by our rules and by our form of government that discretion to the city manager and for our internal departments, it's usually about a two week process to, to have an agenda item, go through that um, pro submission process, review process, cabinet and um, so you're, you're, you're on mute now. Uh, both, both uh, okay, the attorney and there we go. yeah. So that that was just the, the additional thought that I I had as this was unfolding this morning and as we were um, evaluating it this afternoon and how maybe <coughs> it could have gone gone smoother as um, if it would have been something that was vetted through the normal process through the city manager's presentation of the agenda and the cabinet review um, that. That was the one last thing I thought I would mention. Well, I think thank you, your city attorney, and thank you um, as well, Mr. Strong, for your um, input. I think what actually me just a tad is that this isn't a, a discussion that surfaced today. Um, we had this discussion three weeks ago. We had um, 2,500 emails at that point um, from people asking the commission to defund um, and reduce the police budget to 32 million. Um, those discussions were even prior to the last meeting. And so I guess um, if there was, if, if you all were, as you've done your homework today, and if you're coming to, you know, it's a quarter to midnight and we're having a discussion about the fact that the commission doesn't have the authority to make this recommendation or to make a motion, um, I'm, I'm challenged with with the fact that I'm hearing this this late in the game and obviously you didn't just start talking about it this late but just before this 7 p.m meeting that should have been something in my opinion that should have been communicated to the public this commission um you know repeatedly so that we would be aware of what was it what was within our authority and what is not um and I don't know how we figure out a methodology that will help us to take comments that people are making seriously enough when they're being made that we do our homework early enough in order to be able to have the right information before this community as early as practicable. And to, to me today, this late, I think if we had had some serious conversations, even this morning about this, in light of us having now probably 4,000 messages from the community about defunding the police or in some saying not to, um, maybe we wouldn't be here at almost midnight having a discussion because the community would have been aware of what could and could not be done. Mayor, may I, may I? Um, I was just gonna say, I, I, that works well um, when we, and this is respectfully said, that works well when we, know um, um, what the plan is. So if we knew about the motion, we could have helped guide you along the way of how to properly um, do the motion. So 
just as a wrap up, so as we're looking at multiple case law, not just the law, but case law, the one thing that goes across uh, most of the cases is the um, requirement of collaboration between and accountability between the legislative body and the city manager. And the cases refer to city managers, chief administrative officers. And the courts have held that a legislative body's ability to accept and reject the budget recommendations does not give the ability to unilaterally amend the budget. And as part of that charter, our charter, our own charter and state law, the chief administrative officer is responsible for ensuring that that budget is submitted and would prevent expenditures from exceeding the available revenues for that year. And so there has to be a collaborative effort, just like you all can't do it, neither can the city manager. He can't run wrong with the budget and he can't make amendments that are vague. They have to be very specific. He has to be able to tell you um, where money's coming from, where it's going, where he's, he's um, shifting money, because that's what part of what the Budget Act requires is that we have detailed processes. So it's, what do I want to say? So it's the same for um, you all. You can't unilaterally do it. There's an expectation that you're going to work together with the city manager. And then as part of that, um, well, let me just leave it there. Yeah. So, I, I, Commissioner Lanier, I, I share your frustration. And I think having a, a clear understanding of process and uh, what that process the appropriate process would be based on law and our charter is important. And I agree when these conversations from the, when we started getting this feedback from the community weeks ago, it would have been nice to have that information then. Um, my understanding from the city attorney's office is because it was a, a motion that was added this morning um, or a, a motion that was made this morning, um, they were they didn't have the time to, to, they had not done that research as of yet. So I hear your frustration. I think uh, all of us probably share that frustration because we don't like to be informed of something at the last minute or, and I feel like this has happened now actually a couple times over the last several months where in the evening we're trying to uh, talk about process and, and trying to clear up confusion from our earlier meeting Maybe that's the nature of virtually uh, that we don't have the opportunity to be together and talk about this. Uh, but I, I'm very concerned that this is now uh, an issue that we've had a couple times where something is done in the morning and then there's significant confusion at night. Uh, and that in between we're, we're uh, learning about legal opinions. Um, so city manager, you wanted to weigh in then and commissioner Yassi. I want to defer to the commissioner first. Thank you. Thank you, city manager and mayor and city attorney. Um, I, I'm echoing the same thing, Commissioner Lanier, that you have said. I think there have been so many communications that we've received um, trying to respond to many of them. And quite honestly, looking at this and looking at all the variables and what are the realities would have been so much more helpful on June 2nd than today at, at 6.55. And I realize I put that agenda out this morning. I think it's a volley and serve. I'm also responding to the presentation that I received last night and in my inbox as the commission meeting started. So, you know, I want to be, uh, and that is not to point fingers, but I think that's the reality of the speed that we're working with. And so I want that to be noted for the record as well, is that this is often a volley and serve of what are we receiving, how are we responding, and, and how do we go back and forth on that? Um, so I, I think quite honestly, if we would have known that on, on our June 2nd meeting, we would create different expectations for our community about what is realistic, what are the opportunities in front of us? And so I, I can't echo that enough, Commissioner Lanier. Um, I, I also think that, um, you know, I feel like I acted in good faith of, you know, getting that, getting that recommendation um, from you, city attorney, and saying, you know, let's follow the process, let's work through this. Oftentimes, and we've talked about this with even just the, the timing of our meetings, 
of having something in the morning so we could have the time to do this work. So then we come to the night meeting and we can be prepared because things are coming up and they are shifting. Um, I am a little concerned and I would want to go back to our minutes because just in our last meeting, we had significant changes and uh, motions that were made about uh, specifically our 61st district court. And so, uh, and, and I, and I was one of those that echoed the concern uh, greatly. Um, and I think many of us around the table probably had comments and that was something that was, um, you know, I think we got Mr. Secor on the phone in the middle of our commission meeting. So that's what I'm trying to understand as well of, you know, when, when is that determination about, um, you know, us moving something forward? Is it, um, what is that difference there? So, so for me, uh, you know, quite honestly, I've, we've sat through 114 uh, items of public comment. Thank you to the public for calling for people who, who uh, may have agreed with some of us and who didn't. I think um, as, as draining as that is, that is our democracy in action. And when we were preparing for the budget, we probably had five calls in preparation for, um, for those meetings. And that was over four or five meetings. Um, I thought long and hard about um, what I wanted to do. And uh, I respect um, all of our individual roles and positions. We must work in concert to try to lead the city. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm of the opinion that just because something is legal doesn't make it just. And I think many of us have said that on this dais over time, whether it's talking about a variety of issues. And so as I look at the clock and it's 1155, and I think this is such a significant motion that I was hoping for more discussion this evening that I, I am not going to make this motion tonight, not because I don't believe in this agenda item, but because, and not because I'm fearful of, um, you know, is this something that is legal or not, but I don't think it is responsible for me to now put this forward in this, dis in this discussion. Um, and mostly because of it's the time. And I think I'm looking at all of you, we are all, you know, exhausted and, you know, this is our job and that's fine. But I don't think that any of us could make a good decisions or even have good discussion at 12 o'clock at night into a next day. Um, I respect all of you too much, quite honestly, even though those of you who I don't always agree with or always vote with, um, to do that to any of you as my colleagues. Um, I think furthermore, what I will ask for respectfully is, is a second opinion on, on this because of uh, really what Commissioner Lissette, Commissioner Lanier, sorry, everybody's messing up my name, Commissioner Lanier, but I will not, I will not mess up your name, but um, I, you know, all joking aside, I am going to ask for a second opinion because I feel like I was presented with something in the morning we went through this throughout the day and I just feel like that's what I need to do in good faith. And that's, you know, with, with all due respect to you city attorney, but I think I owe that to the motion that I put on the table. I owe that to this larger discussion that I think is happening. Um, and so I, I do ask for that to occur. Um, and I, I hope that is something that, that can be done, but I do not feel, even though I feel strongly about the motion that I made um, after hearing the presentation this morning, I do not feel responsible to move forward with what I put on the floor this morning. I put uh, Commissioner. City Manager, did you want to weigh in and, and yeah, just, yeah, just real just real briefly, Mayor? Um, our our job as staff is to prepare or my job as managers to bring forth the agenda and budget items and do all of the fiscal, legal, and operational analysis and doing so whenever we bring forth an item. And that, that takes um, weeks uh, in many instances to evaluate and do the thorough vetting of those items. And is one of the reasons why the even the reaction last meeting about the significant amendment that was proposed from the dais was raised with concern from staff regarding district because we had not looked at the fiscal impact the operational impact and legal impact, what the bond rating agency. So it was just not the conversation with NCC. And we, as we would do any time, uh, there are those um, 
items that have not been properly vetted would raise those concerns. And only if um, there was a concurrence with staff that we agreed um, would there be support. And as it was last time, there was not full support for the motion that was made by the commission. We, we modify that. And um, we no one knew on June the 2nd that there would be uh, this conversation of the defunding. I don't think we were there on June 2nd. There was, we're still trying to find out how we respond to what happened on May the 30th and talk about some policy reform, but that was not the, the majority of the conversation. So things had evolved since then. And just quite frankly, I, <clears throat> what, we, what we brought forward today was what we thought was the responsible first step. And not that there would not be future uh, um, changes uh, that could result in the budget implications, but that was something that the staff was not prepared to bring forth today. And so uh, I think we all were uh, a little surprised by the amendment that was put on the floor uh, for the moment uh, because we thought that that would require further discussion before the action would be taken. So um, I, I, uh, I, I support getting that uh, confirmation of legal opinion. I've been in council manager, former government, all of uh, my career, and this is the third city that I've worked in. And even though they're different states, this tends to be how this form of government works. It is not unilateral. It is not strong mayor. It's not strong county. It is, it is an executive uh, administrator, professional administrator working with the legislative body, and they were supposed to work hand in glove on, on these kind of matters. Okay, thank you, uh, City Manager. And will Commissioner Sassi, if you want to follow up with the City Attorney's Office about a second opinion, uh, maybe in the most the attorney or the City Attorney can follow up on that. Uh, so, Commissioners, the the motion at, at hand, the ordinance at hand, is is related to two amendments, budget amendments, and one of them being uh, simply about making a budget amendment and an allocation to support shifting from the police to three positions to the tune of roughly $400,000. Um, so that, that's the, the motion with support on the table. And I'll open up for comments and questions. Yeah, Commissioner Lanier, go ahead. I didn't see that, so I couldn't hear you. Sorry, Mayor. Um, so I think and we're still getting feedback uh, from Commissioner Lanier. If you're not speaking, could you please put your mics on? Okay, yeah, that's much better on my end too. Um, so I am, I, and I, I think um, Commissioner Isasi, I am um, regretting not being in City Hall right now because I certainly would like to look at our standing rules and I was trying to search to see if I could find them. Um, to your point about us being fatigued as we're trying to now complete this agenda that we have in front of us. Um, um, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, to the point where if it were possible, I would want to postpone all of the items so that we can have this discussion later because I'm just, I don't have a clear mind right now um, because I'm quite fatigued, but um, I think the community has made very significant requests um, about reducing a budget. Um, and for about a month now, I think we've been hearing um, to what amount they're seeking the police department's budget to be reduced. And um, and I don't want to get into all of what transpired earlier um, today, which I think if it were not midnight, I probably would, because I think it's important for those who may not have been present to hear the robust and full discussion that we had. Um, but if we if we brought forth um, a fraction of 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 a modification that the community is asking for. Um, and city manager, you indicated that you weren't aware of the um, motion that was going to be put forth. Um, so 
you know, it sounds like that because you weren't aware of that, there weren't any um, um, any desires to put forth amendments that would be as significant as what's been asked of us from the, from the community. Um, I still feel like we need a robust plan to try to understand all of what it is that we're trying to make happen um, in order to uh, make the necessary changes to the police department. Um, and, and we don't, as we were talking about this this morning, we are not in a position to have a plan. Um, and, you know, we are hoping that the um, police department presents its strategic plan soon. Um, OPA, I think, is doing um, finalizing their strategic plan. Um, and all of those things matter. I am wondering why are we seeing a budget amendment um, as opposed to waiting until we have a clear picture about um, what changes are we seeking? Um, because the conversations that, and I expressed this three weeks ago, and prior to that, it came from the community as well as um, in the email that I sent last week, where there had been a need to have um, um, added to um, an analyst, a data analyst, and I was, you know, asking for a shifting of a position from the PD to do that work. And then we have a labor relations um, position that has come before, that's on our agenda right now, and I just feel like you know, to Mr. Davis's point this morning, that this is feeling haphazard for me. Um, and I'd like for us to listen to what the community has asked for, and they've been very specific. And some of those items that they've been specifically asking for are, were not on page 19 of the presentation from this morning, as we were listing out all of the different um, options that we've heard about. I think those things are important. And um, I feel like I'm rambling now, but I'll just stop there and just say I'm not supportive of this because I think it needs to be a part of a comprehensive plan. Mayor, Mayor, may I respond, please? And I think, Commission, whatever your prerogative is, all we're asking, if, you're, if the majority of the commission does not want to approve the $400,000 budget amendment, uh, we will accept that as the commission's decision. We brought forth responsible initial steps. These are not new conversations. The chief has talked about the need to improve communication as a department. The oversight office has talked about the need for additional resourcing. These are long discussions. So what is confusing, if you are prepared, prepared to have a vote on a $9 million amendment, why not have the vote on the initial step, the $400,000 amendment? Because it, 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 it's a little, it's a little confusing. So we are fine either way if the staff, if the commission supports it or not. But I think to continue to uh, on the initial step, if you are ready, if you are prepared tonight to support a vote for a nine million dollar budget amendment, why wouldn't you have at least the ability to make a decision on an amendment that was certainly that has less ramifications? And we're talking three positions that have been discussed not for the first time tonight or since June. These have been discussed for a long time. I'm glad you asked. I think the reason that I'm not interested in supporting this is because it sounds as though we're not hearing what the community is saying. If the community has been asking for a $32 million reduction for a month, and we were surprised by a motion being put on the table today, for a $32 million reduction, it's clear that we're just not listening. The community is fed up. They're frustrated with how we are doing business in this massive structure that is called the city of Grand Rapids. The community has spent years um, volunteering for many of um, boards and task forces and committees, giving their feedback and providing recommendations about what could be done for police and community relations. We have several reports. We have a ton of recommendations. We have not implemented all of those recommendations. And we're not even talking about all of the recommendations that we haven't admit that we have not um, 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 implemented and pretending like people aren't going to remember that we didn't implement them. 
implement those. People are frustrated and I'm one of them. And, and perhaps it's because I am the most senior outside of the mayor on this body. I'm frustrated and fatigued and pissed off about them as well. I'm tired of having to remind staff repeatedly about things that I've said and statements that I've made week after week after week. So I make a statement three months ago. I make the statement three weeks ago. I send an email about the statement that I made three months ago and three weeks ago last week. And I still get to a meeting today and I don't see any of the things that I've talked about. People are tired of feeling dismissed. People are tired of feeling like they're not being heard or respected. So, yeah, that's why. Commissioner, with all due respect, your email this past week did not ask for a nine million dollar budget amendment. OK, we're going to I didn't say my email did. But what I did say is there were things missing from the presentation tonight. And this morning that had been talked about repeatedly by me specifically and As others in this community that were not addressed by the administration today. Out of all due respect. Thank you, Commissioner. And, and Commissioner, I uh, I said it this morning, but I'll, I'll say it again. I, I strongly support your recommendation to get in front of us the strategic plans, and we need to have those both from OPA and the police department. Uh, I, I know Commissioner Moody has his hand up and Commissioner Jones. Um, I, I will say I'm supportive of these three positions and this shift in the $400,000. I really believe that OPA needs support and they need it quickly. We've asked a lot of them as we've also asked a lot from the chief. And I think if we're gonna see movement on some of the things that we're asking for, we need to make sure that they have some capacity to do it. Uh, and so, we need to do a whole lot more. I could not agree more, um, but I do think that this is a step in the right direction that supports a, the num a number of the things that we expect both from the department and from OPA. Um, Commissioner Moody and then Commissioner Jones. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I um, I, I share the sentiments of Commissioner Yasasi. I understand how she feels at this point in reference to that information being sent to us. We're not having uh, clarity on it as well. Uh, but I also believe that the city manager, uh, we've hired him to do a job. Uh, he has put his job in, in, in front of the city. He has brought to us a update on the policies for the reform for the Grand Police Department with $400,000. The police chief, uh, Chief Payne, has brought to us a, uh, uh, um, a projection based on the budget. Uh, for the police department, I'm in favor of the four hundred thousand uh, dollars being moved to support those individuals who are going to be uh, receiving those positions. And I think at this point in time, uh, we can set up another day to talk about uh, the defunding of the police department at another time. Thank you. And follow its procedure in its entirety, as the city attorney has put some things in place for us to understand. Okay. Any any other comments, and then I'll ask the city clerk to call the vote. Uh, Commissioner Jones, did you want to weigh in? Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, I uh, a couple of things. I want to, um, I guess, reiterate what uh, Commissioner Kasasi has spoken to uh, regarding the uh, activity this morning with the motion that was made and was. Um, requested then to hold off until the evening and uh, the uh, the identification of, of new information with regards to what our roles are or what authority we have to make a motion and the frustration that goes along with it. Um, there's no doubt that there's a significant complexity here. And uh, I think we've added uh, a couple of more layers uh, over the last hour. And so, um, I, again, I join Commissioner Ayasasi and uh, her frustration uh, and think that uh, it would be wise to seek a second opinion just to get a better idea of exactly what our, uh, what authority we do have. Um, and I think that uh, it's something that we uh, need to get at uh, relatively soon. So I think I heard you mention, Mayor, that perhaps as early as tomorrow morning, uh, Commissioner Yasasi can reach out to uh, City Attorney 
um, Hitchcock to get that in motion. And I would, I would, uh, I'm very much in support of that. Thank you. All right, so, uh, City Clerk, can you please call the vote on this? Commissioner Lanier. No. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner O'Connor. Yes. Commissioner Moody. Yes. Commissioner Sassi. No. Commissioner Ruppart. Yes. Mayor Bliss. Yes. And can I get a motion to give this an immediate effect? So moved. Support. All right, moved and supported. City Clerk, can you call the vote on that? Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner O'Connor. Yes. Commissioner Moody. Yes. Commissioner Isasi. No. Commissioner Ruppart. Yes. Commissioner Lanier. No. Mayor Bliss. Yes. Carries. All right, next that will take us to our second ordinance amendment tonight. Uh, I Read that. Yes, an ordinance amending chapter 105 marijuana related municipal licensing for the purposes of advancing social equity and updating environmental sustainability reporting requirements. All right, can I get a motion? Support. Support. All right, moved and supported. I see Mr. Canfield has joined us. Uh, Mr. Canfield, you want to? Add anything to this? I feel like we talked about it uh, at length at our last meeting, but why don't you uh, weigh in here? Sure. I Can you hear me all right? We can. Okay. I'll give you a, a quick introduction. So good morning. Um, at your June 16th meeting, you adopted a resolution to pum publish a summary of this proposed ordinance uh, amending marijuana-related municipal uh, licensing. Um, the primary purposes of the amendment are to advance social equity and update environmental sustainability reporting requirements for the cannabis industry. Um, I do wanna highlight a, uh, some, there are some minor changes to the language that was presented to you uh, on June 16th. Um, those changes are outlined on the second page of the cover memo, and they're fully detailed in the markup copy attached to the item. And I just wanna highlight two of those. Um, the first is to clarify that a cannabis-related event coordinator may be located within the city, but will not be allowed to hold uh, those types of events within the city. And then the last uh, minor change is to replace the transitional provision uh, that's in the last section. It would, as previously worded, have left medical cannabis businesses operating without a local license between July 20 and when they obtain their local license. Um, that's replaced by a new provision that includes a grace period, so long as the business applies for their local li license by August 20. And finally, I'd like to note a separate motion giving the ordinance immediate effect will be needed uh, for the city to begin accepting applications on July 20. my back. Um, my understanding is that first change is that someone could have a business here, but they could do and not do events here because that's currently not allowed, but they could do events in another community that would allow that. Right. They could be sitting at a desk planning an event in Grand Rapids, but they wouldn't be able to have the event in Grand Rapids. Yeah. Thank you. All right, commissioners, any uh, questions or comments about this? All right, I'll ask the city clerk to um, call for the vote. And then, I'm sorry, Mr. Canfield, did you say you'd also like me to ask for a motion to give this immediate effect? Y yes, because that is the only way we would be able to start um, processing license applications on July 20th. Okay, thank you. Uh, city clerk? Mr. O'Connor. Yes. Mr. Moody. Yes. Mr. Isasi. Yes. Commissioner Ruppart. Yes. Commissioner Lanier. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Mayor Bliss. Yes. And can I get a motion to give this immediate effect? So moved. Support. 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 All right. Moved and supported. City Clerk, can you call for the immediate effect motion? Commissioner Moody. Yes. Commissioner Sassi. Yes. Commissioner Ruppart. Yes. Commissioner Lanier. Yes. Commissioner Jones. 
Yes. Commissioner O'Connor. Yes. Mayor Bliss. Yes. Uh, and and commissioners, I want to I want to take this moment to say thank you to all the staff who worked on this. Um, I feel like we have been talking for well over a year about how do we embed social equity into this into the cannabis industry. Uh, and I feel like some really good work was done to get us to where we are today. So I just want to make sure that I thank all of those who've worked at length on this uh, as we move forward. So thank you, including uh, Mr. Canfield who jumped in. Thanks. All right, next that will take us to our third item. Uh, City Clerk. To consideration of zoning ordinance text amendments relative to marijuana, adding certain recreational marijuana land uses and modifying some requirements for medical marijuana land uses. Modifying the administration, timing, establishing a process for the review of allowed marijuana facilities seeking to convert to or introduce a recreational component and other amendments meant to clarify and correct previously adopted language. So moved. I have a motion to support. Support. And supported. Uh, Commissioner Lanier, you want to tell us about this? This is another one we've had quite a bit of conversation about. Yeah, so um, we had um, ample conversation last time we met three weeks ago about this particular um, change. And this amendment um, allows um, for recreational facilities to um, be fast-tracked um, if they are in existing um, medical marijuana facilities. And I'm, I'm forgetting, because I don't have the full ordinance in front of me, but I'm forgetting... Um, the seemed like we were saying that they had to have an existing myvita or something along those lines um, if they were going to um, be fast tracked. Um, and I think I'll just quickly express the concern that I had the last time that um, we had um, communicated to the public that we would come back to them with. Um, and, and that we would not automatically approve recreational facilities without them having um, the opportunity to have a voice. And so I just want to um, reiterate that concern because I think it's important um, because we've had so many um, people come in opposition and then some in support that, um, that we be consistent in what we're communicating um, to the community. Um, I am you know, glad to see that the component about the MyVita um, and those who had already um, applied with their medical licenses with the MyVita, I'm happy to hear that that element will be added, but I still think that we, we the community deserve to have given input on these um, uh, amendments. Thank you, Commissioner. And I think I'll, I'll also have um, Ms. Turkelson just hit on some high level points of what's before us tonight. Uh, Uh, good morning. I apologize for my poor lighting choices here. Uh, midnight meetings apparently uh, need different lighting. So um, anyways, I'll let the staff report and the previous discussion on the non-retail uh, cannabis facilities for recreation uh, um, remain the same unless there's any questions. So I think that the, the changes uh, for this evening that um, from what was presented at the last meeting really uh, revolve around the retail license or the adult use license. And so what we have uh, before you today would require all uh, recreational retailers, all new recreational retailers to obtain a special land use permit. Uh, so they would require a review and approval by the planning commission. They would not be able to add a recreation license without public input. So I think, I hope that addresses Commissioner Lanier's concerns that she just mentioned. Um, the minor exception to that would be uh, in the industrial zone districts, co-located recreational retailers under a gross floor area of 5,000 square feet could be processed administratively. In addition to the special land use uh, regarding the sensitive use waivers that were granted, uh, for existing medical provisioning centers, those would not quote unquote transfer to retail uses. So effectively those medical provisioning centers that required waivers would not be able to add a recreational retail license in the current fast track process. That's an issue that we could then address during the deliberative discussion. In addition, sensitive use waivers are not available to any new recreational retailer facility. 
And so if we had um, an existing license holder, for example, in the city of Detroit that wanted to open up a retail shop in the city of Grand Rapids, under state law, they could do that for the first uh, two years until December 4 of 2021. However, they would not be eligible to obtain, they would be required to go through a special land use process, they would not be eligible to obtain any waivers uh, from sensitive uses. So that feels permissive. However, when you go through and look at current zoning and current sensitive use locations, when we look at the separation distances, there's really only four locations in the city of Grand Rapids that could support new standalone retailers, two of which are owned uh, and in productive use for major institutions. One is, a, I believe, a PRD, well, not I believe, it is a PRD along uh, the East Belt Line where the Gravity North Point Bank and um, uh, and a hotel are situated. And then there's a number of parcels that would need to be consolidated on Elizabeth. And so, although it would allow for new standalone retailers to exist or to operate in the city if a special land use permit were granted, the number of opportunities are really limited based on current zoning, current sensitive use locations. Um, so I, I think that that, um, Definitely, I believe that it, that meets the, the intent of what the commission spoke about at the last meeting. Um, and uh, similar to what Mr. Canfield mentioned for the ordinance, we are also requesting immediate effect so that we can begin uh, processing applications for non-retailers later this month, uh, or accepting applications later this month and processing immediately after, um, and then also beginning accepting applications for uh, retail locations uh, in, I believe it was late August. And that is all I have unless there's questions. Thank you, Ms. Turkelson. I, I do appreciate your work on this and I appreciate you taking into consideration the concerns that were raised by this body uh, and, and making those changes. Commissioners, any questions or comments, Commissioner Jones? Yeah, quick question, Mayor, uh, for Ms. Turkelson. Is today the day, or I'm guessing perhaps the 21st would be the time to discuss the potential of adding another um, element to the uh, sensitive use category, and that is that of youth centers. Um, would that be something that we discuss on the 21st or something that we talk about now uh, for the potential of including it in this particular uh, ordinance? So that would really need to wait until a more deliberative process, which we do have planned for the 21st. Okay. The Planning Commission did not consider a youth facility as a sensitive use. So there are some challenges there in needing a Planning Commission uh, consideration on that matter. But yes, sensitive uses generally, uh, along with the waiver process, was a deliberative process that we were um, going to focus on after the fast track process. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Good question, Commissioner. All right. Any other questions or comments? All right. City Clerk. Oh, go ahead, Commissioner Lanier. I didn't quite hear all, um, Ms. Turkison, what you said um, at the very beginning of what you were, the comments that you were making, but you said that hopefully that component would address some of the concerns that I had specifically about um, what we had communicated originally. I didn't catch all of what you stated before you made that comment, if you don't mind. Oh, sure. Uh, you had made a mention about the fact that what had been considered by the Planning Commission thus far and what was communicated to the community was that these approvals would be uh, were only for medical facilities. So by requiring the special land use permit process and not allowing waivers to transfer, if you will, um, I think that that respects that process because it does require all of these applications to go back through the Planning Commission process, which is a public hearing and allows for input by the community to determine whether the addition of a retail license is an appropriate land use at that location. Thank you for that um, clarification. Um, that's very helpful. The other um, question that I had to um, Mayor by May is how are we going to assure that um, that the MyVitas that are in place have been instituted for their medical licenses to know that they are they are doing exactly what they said that they would do because I do think that it's important to um, support good um, actors as opposed to blanketly supporting um, bad actors in this industry if we have those yet 
but I just, I'm just curious to know that we have something in place to hold people accountable for what they're outlining within their mighty desk. We do. There will be compliance monitoring that is part of the marijuana management or cannabis management program uh, that will be effectively operated out of the planning department. Um, because we have not had any facilities that have been in operation for long enough for, for us to do a compliance check, um, that process has not started, but it is absolutely a requirement for them to follow their might be commitments. Yeah. And, and just to clarify, um, it's kind of twofold because if, if there's a facility in an, in an industrial zone that is a stacked um, license, they would be able to go through the fast track for recreational. Yes. Okay. Yes, they would be. Okay. I want to make sure that <laughs> there. So it's kind of twofold, um, which I think is a, which I think is a very fair compromise based on our conversation from our last meeting. And then as um, Ms. Turkelson said, we'll go through another deliberative process on the 21st to address the other issues that are outstanding. All right, any other questions or comments? All right, uh, City Clerk, will you call the vote on this, please? Commissioner Isasi. Yes. Commissioner Ruppart. Yes. Commissioner Lanier. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner O'Connor. Yes. Commissioner Moody. Yes. Mayor Bliss. Yes. It carries. And can I get a motion to give this immediate effect? Tomorrow's support. support. All right, moved and supported. City Clerk, can you call the vote on that, please? Yep, Commissioner Ruppart? Yes. Commissioner Lanier? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner O'Connor? Yes. Commissioner Moody? Yes. Commissioner Isasi? Yes. Mayor Bliss? Yes, it carries. Um, and again, thank you, uh, Ms. Turkelson, for all of your work on this and your entire team. Really appreciate it. Um, okay, that will take us to our fourth uh, ordinance to be adopted tonight, uh, City Clerk. Yes, uh, consideration of a major amendment to a planned redevelopment district at 2121 Celebration Drive Northeast. All right, can I get a motion? Support. All right, moved and supported. Uh, Mr. Colson, you want to tell us about this? Yes. Um, so this is a uh, major amendment that um, on the surface looks far more complicated for, for the next two items, actually. Uh, we really, because there's two adjacent PRDs, one we call the Peregrine PRD, the other we call the Celebration PRD, there's a proposed uh, hotel that is effectively spanning both development of uh, both PRDs. So we're kind of bringing um, some land into the Celebration PRD to um, uh, enable the uh, development of the hotel. And I'm not sure if there's any, I'm obviously a little tired, I'm sorry. I'm not sure if you have any specific questions about the development itself and I can answer those for you. Yeah, no, I, I think that's good. It's pretty clear cut and I know um, I'm sure the, the commissioners as well, I, we're pretty familiar with this, uh, this amendment. So any questions, commissioners? All right, I'll have our city clerk uh, call for the vote. Commissioner Lanier. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Commissioner O'Connor. Yes. Commissioner Moody. Yes. Commissioner Sassi. Yes. Commissioner Ruppart. Yes. Mayor Bliss. Yes. It carries. All right. It'll take us to our uh, last ordinance to be adopted tonight. And uh, this is an ordinance for a consideration of a major amendment to a planned redevelopment district at 3178 Peregrine Drive Northeast. Can I get Support. moved and support? Support. Support. All right. Moved and supported. Um, Mr. Colson, any you want to ask you? Um, this is in combination with the uh, previous ordinance amendment. They go together. Yep. All right, commissioners, any questions? All right, city clerk, you want to call the vote? Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner O'Connor? Yes. Commissioner Moody? Yes. Commissioner Sassi? Yes. Commissioner Ruppart? Yes. Commissioner Lanier? Mayor Bliss. 
Yes, it carries. Thank you, City Clerk. Uh, so the next that we don't have any resolutions tonight or public hearing scheduled. So that will take us to our second opportunity for public comment. Uh, so if you uh, wanna weigh in, you can call 456-3000 or 311, hit the number one and then number four. Uh, so is um, Daniel or Doug on there? Can you let us know if we have anyone in the queue? We are, uh, we have three callers in the queue currently. I will send the first one through. Caller, you're on the line with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Uh, good evening, and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my name is Alejandro Puble. I'm from Grand Rapids. I live here for 24 years. Uh, I More than that, I have been in trouble with the police uh, 10 years ago for DUI. But that, it is no excuse to defund the police. Defunding the police is not going to take away the crime. The crime all of us are beginning on TV. The crime always is going to be there. And if we defund the police, they are not going to be able to train in more police and have more education. We can feed what we have, but we cannot feed what we don't have. And we are going to lose our society, as we know, if we defund the police or we eliminate the police. It has to be allowed and ordered. And I think all the police Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. I can did, see you. Did something go wrong with everybody's technology? John, can you see? Can you hear? So now I can see you, Commissioner Jones, and I only yeah. can see you and Commissioner O'Connor. I can't see or hear anybody else. John, can you see us? Can you hear us? Something must have happened on the city end, you know, like Joel, whoever is like the host of it. I'm trying to see if he can. Oh, O'Connor, can you hear us? 
You still can't hear me. John? Jonathan? JOC? Kurt, we can see you now. Can you hear us? You can hear us. I can. John, John can, can you hear, hear us, bro? bro? Now I can. Mr. Insassi, I can see you. Can you hear us? Now I can. Or, okay. I don't know what happened. Maybe, maybe WebEx needed a break. <laughs> right. John, can you hear better now? John. So you can't hear anyone clearly. John can't. Can you hear me, Rep? Yep. I uh, apologize to the caller for that. Um, why don't we, uh, Daniel or Doug, do we have anyone else on the call, on the line? Can everybody hear each other? I don't think John can hear us. But he said he couldn't. Yeah, I'm going in and out as well. I, I don't think we have any more callers. I apologize if we lost anyone. It looks like we're having some pretty significant difficulties. Was that the whiz? I <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Can you right. hear me, Mayor? Yes, I can. Can you yep. hear me? Okay, yes. Caller, go ahead. You've got three minutes. I'll restart okay. your time. Go ahead. This is Barbara Ely from Sparta, Michigan. I come to the city weekly for treatment from St. Mary's Hospital. And I would be very disappointed if the police funds were cut in any way, shape, or form. One, for the protection of all the people in Grand Rapids for their protection and any people that come to the city. So I sincerely hope that there will be no defunding of any city police funds for the protection of all that live and come to the city. Thank, thank you, caller. Thank you. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hello, my name is Christopher Allison, and I live in Grand Rapids. This evening, we, the people, had the opportunity to witness the inconsistency and flagrant dismissal of public opinion and just decision-making in the appointed and elected positions of our city government. Instead of confronting a legal issue head-on with time and understanding, the vote on a poorly researched budget proposal was pushed through in haste. Any appeal to the police department in regards to a significant budget reduction proposal to the police department represents a conflict of interest. The city manager should have been more active in acknowledging public opinion and should have made necessary adjustments to the meeting notes and agenda. Dismissing a, commission, a commissioner's concerns because of wording is negligent. If you have a job to do, you did not do it. It is not true that public opinion changed in just the last several weeks. GOPD should have been significantly defunded yesterday after they waved guns at children and beat up and maced a father and his child. GOPD should have been significantly defunded after the Department of Civil Rights investigation into the department began. Reports of traffic stops while black have been mainstream for several years at the least. The GRPD budget has been an inappropriate use of taxpayer dollars, and the fact of the matter is that a 1% budget reduction at a sale of $38.7 million is not a budget reduction, and you will not be able to convince the public otherwise. It is most obvious that this is a fight against the worst manifestations of human behavior. White supremacy, classist patriarchy, the whole lot. The citizens of Grand Rapids have spoken time and time again, and we will continue to do so 
And so the substantial changes needed are made. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hi, I'm Mark from Grand Rapids. Yes, uh, defunding the police is a bad move, extremely bad move, you know, because this is what's going to happen. You defund the non-essential stuff that's going to go. Boys and Girls Club, gone. Can't, can't have that. Can't have that. You know, the thing y'all like to see is a weed and seed process. We weed out the bad cops, feed in the good cops, feed in the candidates who, who, want, who want to work for GRPD. But the, the stipulation for that is they have to have clean hands, no misdemeanors or felonies whatsoever. And, and the new candidates, as well as the existing, the existing members of the force, they have to go through extensive marksmanship training and testing, as well as physical fitness and testing. You know, you, you can't you can't have nobody that's out of shape, you know, while on patrol. That that, that can't happen. And, and, you know, and, and another part another part of this is you have to have the precincts. You got to have the precincts. You have the precincts. The community policing would be better. The response times would be a lot more quicker. And so on and so forth. You know, that has to happen. And and and, and finally, you know, you you, you, have, you know you have, you have to give these kids some hope because that's the bottom line here. You have, you have to have you, safer communities, meet better communities, better educated communities. You got to give give these, give these kids some hope. Not the adults. The adults can fend for themselves. You know. Please don't, don't defund the police. That's a horrible move. Thank you very much. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. This is Chit House, city of Grand Rapids. I'm calling in tonight uh, with two questions. One is... The, I understand that the motion was not made tonight, uh, and we're seeking a second opinion, but I'm wondering, the, can the city commission uh, task the city manager with reducing the police level's uh, budget down to the 32% in a certain timeline so that he has to start working on that in an aggressive manner and report back to the city with more adjustments? Um, it, it seems like tonight was giving $400,000 in cuts so that he could buy time uh, to do um, more uh, research into the cuts that need to be made. Uh, but I think we need to make sure we're applying that pressure um, as well as finding other ways in which that can be implemented. Um, and the other question I have is now that it's the end and it's public comment time, can we call that guy back from Missouri to hear what he has been saying? Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Oh, caller, you're on the line with the city commission. You have three minutes. I'm on the line. You are. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. My name is Mark Alonzo. Mark, can you turn the volume down on your device, please? Yeah. Thank you. I uh, just wanted to. Uh, my name is Mark Alonzo. I have been a resident of Grand Rapids for seven years. Um, I was born and raised in Chatwood. Um, I think we have a fantastic mayor and city commission um i am against the defunding of the police i think it is a wrong solution for our town uh i live in the central district in a very uh secure community with great security um but uh i'm worried about the central districts in public safety. Um, I would uh, consider that 
Uh, number one, the security of the people of Grand Rapids. I think it would be compromised totally uh, by defunding of the police. I also think uh, it's indicative of where we're at as a society. We're, we're trying to figure out what's been happening, and I think we're we're uh, picking the wrong tree. Um, the chief has done a great job. I believe in uh, giving uh, our police, our, our men and women uh, on the force, our complete support. And we do need to hire more women and more minorities. I know it's hard, but the work can be done starting in the high schools. Uh, again, uh, I know it's late. I'm not going to keep you. You're all doing a great job. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on the line with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Oh, all right. Yes, they didn't want to chat. Caller, you're on the line with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. This is Amy Carpenter again. I live in the third ward of Grand Rapids. Um, I want to say that the defund the GRPD coalition called for an emergency meeting um, much earlier than this, but certainly much earlier than this meeting, um, so that the budget and defunding the police could be worked out, knowing that um, you have amended the budget before and you could do it again. And so we called for a meeting to be happening before the fiscal year started um, and we were not listened to. Um, and now we're at this meeting where hundreds of people have emailed thousands of people. And that was true in mid June, thousands of people had emailed um, by that time saying to defund the GRPD. Um, and now we've had over a hundred people comment and the city hasn't been ready to um, actually make a decision and actually move this forward. And I want to support Commissioner Lanier and Commissioner Isasi um, and their very valid frustration. They're speaking for us. They're speaking for the people. When they share that frustration with you, um, that these things were not ironed out before about how to make a decision on something that the city commission should absolutely have the power to do. Um, so, yeah, I'm not okay with the way they were spoken to and the way that um, things have been, how they were kind of talked over um, and talked down to um, as far as trying to represent um, the people. Like, what we're asking for is to defund GRPD to reduce the amount of police violence in our city. And, um, yeah, I... This should have been handled earlier. We asked for it to be handled earlier. Um, and we wanna know when are the meetings that are going to resolve this? How are you going to show accountability for what you've done tonight? Thank you. Thank you, caller. <clears throat> caller, can you lower the volume on your device, please? Oh, hello. Hi, you're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Thank you so much. Um, I called earlier. My name is Ellie. And I just want to thank you guys so much for being up late and listening to us. Um, it really means a lot. And um, I get really emotional on all of these topics. And... Um, it's been hard for me to communicate, I guess, I get and get my point across. So I did want to call back and try again to say that defunding the police, I think, is a horrible idea. And there are a lot of programs that would be effect affected by doing that. Um, the Boys and Girls Club, homeless assistance team, our community police. I mean, it's huge. Taking that money from our department is huge. Taking about 66 officers is just, it's not okay. Um, I don't support it at all. Our 
in terms of 63%. I've had drive-by shootings and seen people get shot in my neighborhood in Oakdale. It's not okay. It's, it's, and we need help. My neighbors all want our police officers here. They do a great job. We've had safety meetings for Oakdale, and our police officers care about us. They, they come and play basketball with the kids, and we need that. We need that community engagement. So I just really want to enforce that again, that we should not defund the police. Thank you very much again for your time. Thank you for staying up so late. Um, have a good night. Thank you, caller. You too. <laughs> city, city uh, caller, you're, you're on, on with the city, city commission. commission. You have you three, three minutes. minutes. Your time, Your time starts, starts now. now. Caller. caller. Hello, caller. Hi, caller. You're on with the city commission. This is. Can you lower the volume on your device, please? Yep. Okay. You have three minutes. Please state your name in the city in which you live. Your time starts now. My name is Suzanne Vanderpai, and I live and work in Grand Rapids. I'm calling to show my support for defunding the GRPD from its current budgetary allotment of 38.6% down to the charter mandated minimum of 32%, and divesting the funds to social programs Su that will Suzanne? help the marginalized. Yeah. Did you just call? Yes. Okay. Callers are allowed three minutes to speak only, not multiple times. I was told mine wasn't played. Oh, ap apologies. Go ahead. Okay. We Can I start this. over? Uh, yes, of course. I'll reset your time. My name is Suzanne Vanderpai, and I live in Rocky Grand Rapids. I'm calling to show my support for defunding the GRPD from its current budgetary allotment of 38.6% down to the charter mandated minimum of 32% and divesting the funds to social programs that will help the most marginalized members of our community. We do not need to be afraid of this. In 2013, Camden, New Jersey, City's Council dissolved the police department and created a new countywide force in its place. The goal is to change the image of police officers from warriors to guardians. They were able to reduce their per officer expenditure from $180,000 a year to $93,000 a year. Not only did they defund, but they put more officers on the streets on a regular basis, getting to know the community, and they changed the way the officer's performance was measured, not by arrests or tickets. I've heard many people express concerns for their personal safety if we were to defund the police, yet all you have to do is look at the results in Camden. In the first years after defunding, violent crimes were reduced from 22% and shootings and murders were down 50%. In the first two years, the solve rate for homicides went from 16% to 61%. The former chief attributes that to increasing human contact within the community, which allowed them to be able to get more information to make commu the community safer for them and with them. In the first six years of defunding, homicides went down from 67 to 25, and excessive force complaints went from 65 to 3. I've heard people voice their opinions that problems in Minneapolis aren't problems here, and yet Grand Rapids currently has 28 complaints of discrimination against the police department. That is more than any other city in the state. I have also heard many people call for an increase in spending for the police department, which already receives more than one-third of our budget. Since the beginning of the war on crime, Money has been funneled into our police departments across the country, and the effect it has had on crime has not been much and certainly not anywhere proportionate. We've already tried adding money. Now is the time to try something new. I would also like to add at this time that the citizens of Camden actually sued the city and won because the city did not involve members of the community in the decisions on how to digest the money. So I would strongly encourage the mayor, city manager, and commissioners to make sure you involve the community in these decisions should you decide to make the cut. As someone who once knew nothing about defunding the police and definitely didn't support it in my ignorance, I strongly encourage anyone who is against defunding to do some research into what actually what it actually means and how it could potentially benefit our city. I yield the rest of my time. Thank you, Suzanne. I apologize for the technical difficulties. Thank you. No problem. 
Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city you live in. Your time starts now. It's Jimmy again. Who's this, Daniel? Daniel, yes, it is, Jimmy. Go ahead with your time. Hey, I got cut off. Police are out here looking for somebody, Caucasian. But anyways, I was trying to explain to you guys about police officers that came from Grand Rapids and uh, went other places. They became top cops. So that's gone on for, for many years. And all these officers in Wyoming, Indiana, Rockford, Ottawa County, they're all people of color. So discrimination against people of color trying to do something good and become a police officer in the city in which they live, it didn't work. They're not wearing cameras here for nothing, and we don't have an honesty policy. I was speaking about mathematical problems and brackets, braces, and parentheses. Before the, 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 this session, we had problems with the police. During the pandemic, before the riot, before the gentleman was killed in the other state, we've had problems with the police. There's no other alternative except to cut their budget and then to start other ways of reforming. And even people that are calling in tonight and they're saying don't defund them, they'll then say something like in this last few callers, he says, you have to weed out the bad ones. Part of the process of weeding them out is defunding them also. It's not just one thing. And once again, I'm born and raised here. I've heard this from my uncle, my great aunts and uncles. The police have been terrible here towards the Hispanic community. See how many lieutenants and captains are Hispanic. Even Lovejoy comes, and whenever she comes, the white sheriff, she only brings white officers with her. I've not even seen black captains or lieutenants with her. I don't know what is wrong with you guys, but this didn't happen yesterday or last year. It's, uh, it's something that has been, uh, what do you say, accepted? My son's saying systemic. It, it, it's a culture, and it's time to break that. And part of breaking that is defunding them. And fire and chief pain. You know, this black thing is a big deal. And because he's black, you should fire him. A lot of the children that are harassed and assaulted and terrified, they're black children. He've only mentioned the color of his skin with uh, Mr. Washington because of the Black Lives Matter movement. He's an accepted token, and we should not accept that as people of color. And if Mark Washington, I text in, if it was your daughter that was worried by Grand Rapids police in Wyoming, you might feel different, but she was a white woman. But a lot of these children, like honesty, they're black children. You need to step up to the plate. That's, a lot of these contractors, Jimmy, too, that are being minutes. hired, they don't hire black, Mark Washington. That's your so three your minutes, Jimmy. Thank plan you. Isn't working. Thank you, Jimmy. Hey, thank Have you. a good night. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Hello, my name is Rachel Potter, and I'm a resident of Grand Rapids. Um, I'm calling in to make sure that the Commission knows that I do not support the defunding of the Grand Rapids Police Department. Clearly, with Grand Rapids having just experienced the largest crime spree in decades, certainly it's not ever one that will cost $2.4 million to repair now is not the time to dial back on security for the city. I do support making the police department more accountable in whatever ways it's possible to do that. I'm sure I condemn police brutality and over something, but I do not want to eliminate the police department or hobble them as some protesters are calling for. Um, I think that we've seen in cities across the nation where they have deliberately hobbled the ability of the police to um, control the violence, escalating murders, and destruction of property and other things that are businesses around this country, that making sure that you cannot do the job that they're intended to do is really bad, and defunding them, I just support. So I wanted to make it clear. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for your time. Thank you.
Madam Mayor, point of order. Um, we our standing rules allows for us to have a minimum of public comment for 30 minutes in light of the time. Um, I don't know how long this public comment period has gone, but we've had 11, at least from my notes, 11 callers. And we also could reduce the amount of time that people have that are in the existing queue. But I think it would be feasible for us to, um, to um, consider our standing rules and- You know what? Wait, 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 wait. wait. Oh. It's, is somebody wanting to wait? Do I hear somebody? I'm curious to find out Daniel, how many more calls are in the queue. Yeah, there's four in the queue as of right now. So, uh, Joel, can we do what we did uh, earlier and go ahead and allow those four speakers and then uh, end public comment after that? Yep. Uh, I will let Becky Joe know. Thank you. That's not. Uh, uh, City Attorney, I think your microphone is on. Thank you. Shall I continue? Yeah, Daniel, let's uh, give the four folks who are in the queue an opportunity and then we'll end this public comment period. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Lanier. Caller, you're on the line with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Please uh, state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Okay, just, can you hear me? I can, yes. Okay, thank you. So, hello, my name is Stephanie Kelsey, and I reside in the second ward of the City of Grand Rapids. I would like the Grand Rapids Police Department's budget to be made easily available and transparent to the public. I would like to know what are the specifics of the budget such as what is the portion of their budget for patrol units spent on exactly, how much is spent on community engagement. Making the Grand Rapids Police Department's budget transparent to the citizens of Grand Rapids will be helpful for us to understand our police department's interests. Thank you, and I forfeit the rest of my time. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. Good evening, good morning. I'm um, City Manager, Mayor Bliss, and Commissioners. My name is Lorena Guayo Marquez, and I'm calling uh, regarding defunding the police. I'm calling, um, I would like the commission um, to call a meeting uh, so we could um, discuss how to defund um, the police and reduce it to 32%. And also, um, I'm also asking that we uh, publish the um, Grand Rapids Police Department budget so we know how to re like take the money. That's a very <coughs> comment that like, we don't know where that's going to be. And we need to start making all of our police officers accountable for their actions. Uh, we're in a very critical moment here in Grand Rapids. And we need to make sure that we do the right thing. We need to take riches, actions, and do them now. So my call is to set a meeting, um, publish the police department budget, and continue holding our police officers accountable. Thank you. Thank you, caller. You. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which you live. Your time starts now. comments tonight regarding Boys and Girls Club, and I just wanted to point out to those who are, are worried about Boys and Girls Club and what their standing would be in regards to defunding the police. Um, I think if you're truly concerned about the community and the kids that Boys and Girls Club serve, it's important to think about the kids um, and act genuinely think about the kids. You know, majority of the kids that Boys and Girls Club of Grand Rapids serve are um, kids of color. And so if you want to make sure that Boys and Girls Clubs and the community in general are serving the youth in Grand Rapids in a positive way, um, then you do consider defunding the police so that resources can go to um, after school programs and that they can go to resources that 
to genuinely help the kids. So I would just ask that people who are making comments about Boys and Girls Club are thinking of the kids and not using it as a way to uh, make others feel bad and, and go straight to um, supporting the, fund, the current funding of police. So I would just ask that people um, really try to think about the community that Boys and Girls Club serves and how defunding the police um, could benefit them. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Good evening, caller. Can you lower the volume on your device, please? Can I just say? Yep, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Please state your name and the city in which Hello, you live. Your time Hello. starts. Hello. 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 Uh, good evening, Commissioners. My name is Seth Kiel. I live in Catwood. Um, I'm calling because I'm, I'm really disappointed with um, the advice that the Commission is getting, or the influence, I should say, that the Commission is getting from the uh, City Attorney. I think at some point um, we've all been led to believe that the City Attorney is uh, acting in the best interest of community when she's representing the City. And I think... Uh, Commissioners um, should, I think, uh, seek uh, a second opinion, legal advice, um, personal advice from an attorney, maybe uh, find funds to get a, a, that, that separate advice so that we uh, are not getting advice that, first of all, when Commissioner Suss made uh, a motion this morning and was seconded by Commissioner Jones, that um, she did not discourage. And then, 30 minutes before a meeting, who has not, uh, that is not enough time for commissioners to prepare and, and to create a strategy to defund. So this, I agree with, with Commissioner Lanier that this conversation has been going on forever. And so I believe that uh, the, the city attorney has been holding on to information that she could have brought forth before, but waited till before the meeting to essentially neutralize any uh, threat um, by com commissioners that are representing community and instead protecting the city from liability, protecting the city from having to make difficult decisions and protecting the city from cutting police from the budget. Like, it's clear, you've heard it time and time again, that people want, people want to cut the police budget and we, we have uh, white men from the suburbs coming. The city is, is doubling on its effort, effort to continue to bring white, white men from, from the suburbs to police communities, communities of color. color. And, and, and here we have, we have a clear, clear um, showing, showing of their family, family with their friends, friends from, from, from the, from the suburbs, suburbs saying that they don't want, they don't want their budget, budget uh, after after job, job to be cut. Be cut. Um, but I think that, commissioners, um, I encourage you to decide on the side of community. Essentially, this this vote is what we're going to remember you. From. I, I, I can't think of any vote that's been before you that's more important than this. Mayor Bliss, you talk about equity and, and all these meetings that I, I run into you in, multiple commissioners. So I think I, I really encourage you to have the courage to make the right decision. Uh, there's never been a time when, when you have uh, the, the, the option, option to say everyone, everyone wanted, wanted this, the community wanted this, you have no... Like, like, um, it is perfect, perfect to cover, and I encourage you to, to, to make, make the right decision, decision and to find, find a way to get legal advice um, to challenge the, the city attorney and the city manager uh, oh, to make okay. them. Thank, Thank you. That's three minutes. minutes. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Marilis, that was the final caller. Okay. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, and I will now turn to my colleagues on the commission and I'll, uh, I'll start with Commissioner Moody. Are you still there, Commissioner Moody? Oh, I don't see him now. Oh, there he is. Commissioner Moody, I'll start with you tonight. Uh, Madam Mayor, I think enough has been said tonight. The city has uh, voiced their opinion. We've heard them. Uh, we uh, uh, made a decision tonight on some agendas and there's still some more things that we have to take care of in the future in terms of getting clarity. Uh, but at this point in time, uh, I thank everybody for calling. I've heard and listened. Uh, I think that um, an evening well spent with the community. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Jones. 
Thank you, Mayor, and uh, a big thank you to everyone who called in. Uh, although this was a, a marathon um, endeavor, it was well worth it, and um, it is something that I think is required. Um, we are going through a um, transformation throughout our country, and um, you know, just because we're in Grand Rapids does not mean that we are not going to have that type of experience here. It's happening all throughout the country, all throughout the world. And um, this is part of, of what comes with it. So I, uh, I'm looking forward to the days ahead of uh, engaging in more dialogue. And again, really focusing on keeping the main thing, the main thing, which is to uh, have a city that is uh, full of opportunities for more people. And uh, where, again, the, the day comes in which uh, there will be perhaps a minimal need for policing because people have more opportunities and communities are more safer because of more opportunities. So again, thanks to all who called in and thanks to my colleagues as well and to city staff, uh, uh, city manager Washington as well as uh, Chief Payne and, uh, and uh, Mr. Davis and again, all of city staff. Thank you for your, your time and your attention this evening. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Lanier? Thanks, Mayor. Um, I, I too would like to thank those who have called this evening um, um, to share their um, thoughts and ideas and concerns. And um, thanking my colleagues for their patience as we've been here for quite a few hours um, listening. And I think um, you're right, Commissioner Jones, this is a pivotal moment in our nation's history. Um, and I think it's clear that um, it's a pivotal moment locally as well. And I hope that, and, it, and it's also clear that we have a lot of work to do. And um, I'm very interested in what those next steps will be so that we can move forward um, in hearing from our community with, with the changes that they're um, looking to have. And I think there have been a number of great recommendations that have been suggested. And um, I think we should take those things seriously um, and vet those things so that we can see um, what of those recommendations could be implemented. Um, and I am still eager to see the plans, um, as I've mentioned a few times today, um, so that we can have something that directs exactly where we're headed so that there could be the proper accountability to whatever it is that we're saying we're planning to do. Thank you and have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Rappert. Yeah, thanks, Mary. I just first I want to apologize for not weighing in earlier because I too am, am frustrated uh, this evening and uh, want to make sure to express that. I, I feel like in moments like this, when we have these glitches and these communication difficulties, we really lose a lot of trust with the community. And, and that's really dissatisfying this evening. Um, you know, this morning we had a motion on the floor and uh, I commend my colleague, Commissioner Isasi for stepping out and making the motion. And we were told that we were gonna vote on it tonight. And so I spent the entire afternoon on the phone. I'm sure that all of you all spent the entire afternoon on the phone. And then we had a historic turnout from the community. And thank you for, you know, 120, 130 people that called in. Um, this moment, it feels frustrating. It feels discouraging. Um, and you know, I was, I was not prepared to make a vote. And so I just want to make it clear that I stand with commissioner Jones and commissioner Isasi, uh, uh, wanting to initiate a process, a transparent process that'll subs that'll substantially reduce the funding for the police department and, and work with the community to reallocate it in ways that achieve some different outcomes. And so I just want to state that clearly. And the chief presented um, some of the potential implications for that decision today, but I look at that list and I, again, I, I've been through three budgets now and I believe that we can be more creative than that. And so, uh, in a, so that we can ensure that it doesn't impact the safety of the community um, uh, while we make these. So, I, I, I am the night in gratitude for 
my colleagues, my colleagues in endurance, endurance as well as all the people who stayed up late to call in as well but feeling very dissatisfied very frustrated as well and uh, and determined i'm feeling determined now to make sure that we figure out how to get uh, to the place that we need to get so thank you everyone thank you commissioner commissioner Sassi? Um, thank you, Mayor. I I just want to say I appreciate the staff who stayed extremely late to um, to um, staff this commission meeting. <laughs> Daniel, especially for you for monitoring all those calls. Thank you. I want to say thank you to all of you as my colleagues, to the city manager, to the police chief, to all the staff that presented. Um, a couple of times it was mentioned, you know, somebody might not like this or you might not be happy about it. To me, this work is never personal. This work is is truly the work of um, trying to create a more perfect union where the quality of life in our community exists for everybody, no matter if they live in the third ward, the first ward, the second ward. And so, you know, I, I, I want to make sure that sentiment is there because I think for too long, you know, we, I, I, I was born in Grand Rapids, third generation Grand Rapidian, and, you know, we have this image of, you know, West Michigan nice. And I think in this moment, as was mentioned by my colleagues, Jones and Lanier, um, we are in a pivotal moment. And I hope that pivotal moment includes the active engagement and discourse, the talking about issues and what, what are the values that we hold and how we're going to exhibit that. I think back to the words that I said when I was um, sworn in and I talked about making sure that our values um, what what we're saying aligns with what um, what we're making investments in, and I still believe that to be true. So I look forward to to having those further discussions. Um, I think um, I, I look forward to having individual discussions, and I'll be following up directly with different staff, including the city attorney. Um, I want to be clear. I, I was prepared to put that motion on the floor today, but I do did think it would be a disservice to all of you as our colleagues and to the community. Um, based upon the information that we received prior to the meeting. Um, I want to step away from uh, everything that we've talked about today and remind people that we do have an election coming up in August um, and remind them of all the work that the city clerk's office has been doing um, to, um, to make sure that people have access um, to, to vote during this time, especially with COVID. So um, I'm sure... Uh, City Clerk, you'll probably mention something at the end of this meeting, but we're about a month out. And so I think it's important to know that. Um, in addition to the calls that we've been receiving about, um, about policing, and for me, again, I don't, I don't feel like it's about policing. I feel like it's about the quality of life of our city. We've received a lot of calls about fireworks, um, you know, and I think it's important to bring that up in this moment. Um, just because, again, it's something else where we have received numerous um, complaints and concerns about and calls about. I think our staff is fatigued of taking in those complaints and concerns as well. Um, I appreciate the work, the proactive work um, on the communication sides. I know, I, I think uh, Grand, or Garfield Park Neighborhood Association did some work going door to door, um, reminding people of what the ordinance says. Um, and I'm just grateful for our state leadership as well to, to Senator Winnie Brings. I've had a, a number of conversations uh, with her, uh, some legislation that um, hopefully if it moves through um, those channels would give you know, our community more local control as a city with higher level density. Um, so I don't want to be seeming that we're passing the buck that that we are not doing anything about this and we're not concerned because this is also a quality of life issue. Um, but it's another example of, you know, really making sure we have local control here. And um, I just wanted to share that as an update. Um, thank you all and, you know, uh, be safe. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner O'Connor. All right. Uh, City Clerk. Uh, just briefly. Um, so, just so you know where we are with the FC Belts community knows, obviously we are, we mailed out a whole bunch of them this week. We've, we've mailed out 28,000 absentee ballots because we did a mailing to all, um, all voters. So in August of 2016, we had a total turnout of 15,000 and we've done 28,000 um, ballots are out there now. So, um, so 
we are working on having the, the precincts open. Um, our workers will be given the proper PPE and we just ask um, voters to come in, um, just be patient and be gracious, just like when we're going to stores or whatever else. So um, I'll work together to be safe and uh, have a safe and accurate election. Thanks city clerk. Uh, city attorney. No comment, thank you, Mayor. All right, city manager. Good night and good morning. Good night and good morning. Uh, thank you, city manager. And I'm, I'm gonna add just a, a couple of comments, uh, even though I know it's late. Um, I too wanna thank everyone who called in tonight. Uh, it, this is such an important issue uh, and the, the conversations we're having and the input that we're hearing uh, affirms that. And we know that it's a critical issue and it has been for a long time. And Adi has worked on this issue. Um, for years, even before our current city manager uh, joined the city. Uh, and I too see this as an incredible opportunity. And I also think that there's a lot, even though we don't, we may not as a body agree on everything, I think there's a lot of consensus around the table. And I've heard it consistently that we need reform, that it's urgent. There is frustration. I, I hear it, Commissioner Lanier. I know, uh, you know, you expressed it tonight as well, as did many others, um, but there's frustration that we haven't moved quicker, that we haven't been able to uh, implement a number of the recommendations that have come from community over the last few years. And I see this as an important opportunity. With that being said, we have made progress. And I think we should also make sure that we are um, talking about the changes, the changes that, that we have made and, and the fact that, that we do have, have an oversight office and, and that, that we are moving forward on recommendations that we have put forward, forward. Um, some reform efforts and changes. And as I've said, that is not, that is the start. It is not the end. This is hard work uh, as we reimagine and redefine and deconstruct and think about the future of police community. It's going to take all of us to be a part of that. Uh, and the community needs to be deeply involved in what that looks like. Uh, the last thing I know any of us want to do is, is make a decision that has unintended or negative consequences on our community. Uh, and so th this is important work. It's not easy work. I'm grateful to be doing it with all of you, including our city manager and our police chief and our director of Office of Oversight and Accountability. Um, so with that, I'll say thank you again to everyone who joined us tonight. Thank you to all of you for your hard work and your service. Um, and I'm sure I'll be talking to all of you very soon. So with that, I'll adjourn the meeting tonight.